What's going on, Conscious Crew? Let's hope that the jury gives the shooter what he deserves. I was going to come to y'all loud, live, and in color and give y'all some glam and beauty, but I had somebody throwing my body all around, okay? All on the floor, okay? All to the left, all to the right, baby. I had somebody mopping the mattress with me last night, okay? So I ain't had the time and the energy to come up here, girl. <laughs> <sighs> and to undo the conflict that my weave is in right now, okay? <laughs> but what's going on, y'all? Trial day nine, honey. Of course, we got our ground troop goddess, Dawn Speaks, in the sanctuary, girl, coming to give us um some coverage, girl. Make sure that you guys subscribe to Goddess Dawn Speaks over on YouTube. You know she is linked on the community wall as well as in the description box. Make sure you also show her some cash app love because she's been giving us that 411 for nine days straight, honey. 
dollar sign. God, oh, I see, I got, is it God Speaks? What am I, what am I following at? God Speaks 23? Let me see. Hold on. Because I had just cash app God is done for just supporting the platform and doing what she ain't got to do, honey. She out here doing the Lord's work, honey. And I believe in paying people for their time, even when they give freely, okay? How doing? How doing? Thumbs up, thumbs up this video. Thank you, baby mother FB, for the oh, nearest piece of cash app. God is done. 23 on Cash App, okay? So I need you guys to thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up the video. Make sure that you are subscribed here. Uh, we are only 20 subscribers away from 39.8, okay? We less than almost, you know, shy 200 from our 40. K Gold Garage, getting into the teens, okay? Um, thumbing up is so important because it helps with the algorithm. It protects the stream and it triggers up the notification bell. It's almost 419 of y'all in the building. It should be easily 350 likes on this video. If you are in the live chat, if you're a Bush baby, uh, iCloud baby, hit thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbing up is more important than even subscribing, okay? Um, please thumbs up the video. We are working, 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 working over here to give y'all a platform y'all can enjoy that y'all can be triggered by and stimulated by and entertained by and informed by occupying y'all time space and energy honey so the least you can do is hit an old nasty piece of thumbs up on the video okay thank you for hitting the thumbs up i love you all so much dearly okay also make sure that you guys have your notification bell set to all because you never know what day or hour the king shall be king and and please share 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 the stream out because sharing is caring we do not believe in monogamy we are a polygamy and polyamory community over here there is enough pussy for ctv to pop lock and drop all across the globe girl so sharing is caring share me out to wherever you be in these digital streets and with no further ado let's go ahead and push the hell on through okay oh, You know a place where you can recharge your soul. Baby, that's conscious TV. And in the midst of brokenness, he gon' see your asshole. Baby, that's conscious TV. You gon' heal, you gon' laugh, and catch a little shade. Y'all know he be slaking, y'all better stop playing. Come hear what he's saying. Ladies and gentlemen. God is on. What's going on? Conscious and conscious crew. Oh, we period. got some <laughs> happenings. We got some happenings. Oh, look, girl, I am scared. I don't know why I am scared. I hardly got no sleep last night. I am shocked. But how are you feeling today before we even get started? Well, I definitely ain't feeling like you feeling because uh, I ain't had a night like that in a long time, child. But good for you. Child, okay? God is saying, honey, she ain't letting these folks stress her. She the one going to damn jail. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. before, before we even get started, can of course tell the folks where they can find you at out here on these social medias and make sure that you give them your cash app so they can show you some coinage, show you some coin love. Hell yeah. Find me on Goddess Dawn Speaks on YouTube. I'm also on Twitter and um, what is it? IG. Just Goddess Dawn. You can find me there. And yeah, just Goddess Dawn 23 is the cash app. I do appreciate it. Let me say thank you to you. And your people that came into my chat last night. Like, I think you might have been listening. I don't know. I think you said you was going to in your email. Yes, and I was in a bubble bath. Uh, and I had y'all <laughs> on a loud. I had y'all on a loud speaker. <laughs> okay. Well, I listened. Y'all just us up last night. So thank you so much for the participation and the engagement. Because you know YouTube doesn't have me shadow banned for a long time dealing with R. Kelly. I'm so glad oh. I'm out of that damn. Period. Yeah, child. I'm on out of that tar pit, child. Thank, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> thank God. Well, okay. thank you too, because you know I appreciate you. You did not have to do this, so I'm just so blessed that you decided to link up with the platform and to give us these exclusives on Lunch Break. It's everything. So thank you as well. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> this girl, this girl is a fan. Okay. Yeah. So this it's is a dream. Same here. <laughs> okay. Listen, and I'm gonna tell you. I told your people last night. Please tell Conscious to stop saying she lost her job. She lost her husband. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna tell you something. Last night, I mean yesterday, for some mm -hmm. reason, maybe it was the retrograde, but I'm telling you, everything was just going. Toe up. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the time I got out of court, I was having all these work email. I had to rush home. Then my laptop was tripping. I was like, that damn conscious and his, he don't know how powerful. <laughs> yeah. You don't know them words are powerful, child. 
just look. look. Send me blessings mm-hmm. only. Blessings. Okay, Send so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna light a whole white candle for you today. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank yes. you. Because you owe me now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you wanna you wanna get into it? Yes, Ready? let's get straight into it. Yes. Yeah. Cause um, yeah. So we are obviously, you know, we had a little bit of an earlier start, 9 55 a.m. versus eleven or ten thirty. But yeah, Judge Hereford provi- presiding. Tori who comes in with his uh pale pink suit and his white turtleneck and his Gucci loafers Ooh. actually smelled really good because I was bending over. I actually had a, a, a seat on the aisle and um, his family's on the other side. And I was bending over getting something out of my bag and he passed by. And it, I mean, it was a nice fragrance. I was like, okay. I mean, you okay, know, he had, guys. It's listen. honest. You could be honest and tell us that you was b- bending over trying to give him a view of them cakes. You <laughs> trying, to, you're trying to get I you was, a high value man. I ain't mad, honey. You gotta listen. strategically bend over when when multi millionaire <laughs> is pushing through the aisle, honey. Listen, listen. I was sitting down first of all, but this thing you can see it coming and going. So he he was gonna see it wherever I'm at. Oh. Like, I ain't gotta oh, bend period. over, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so yeah, him and his Gucci loafers and the smell good and all that. All right, cool. So. There was a slight delay because a juror was running late. See, that's um, actually great. Uh-huh. Tori's, um, you know, it's interesting. Tori's son was brought in as well as a few other children were with the family oh, today. Wow. That was interesting. From, it was from his side? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She, yeah. So it was a family affair today. He bought the nieces uh-huh. and the nephews. He really <laughs> wanted to impress upon the jury with baby. Let me Hello. go home with my people. Set, set my people free. Uh-huh. Hello. Yeah, that was the plot. I mean, it was an obvious plot, but I mean, yeah. hey, you got to do what you got to do. Um, let's see. So we're on the record. Uh, the defense comes up to finish his closing from yesterday. So I'm just going to give you kind of the I kind of want to stop writing because it was all such. Well, I won't say that. I'll just say uh-huh. there were a lot of things said. But, you know, when you say when he when he when you match up what he says to the actual things that were actually said and the, the actual testimony. It just doesn't line up, and I just feel like it deserves. And who this service. is? His uh, the defense attorney. The defense, okay. So the defense attorney, he wasn't making no damn sense to you. I mean, he just he just says things that aren't true. Like he just straight lies and says. Things oh wow! And I think that's just because they can. I mean, it's really their opportunity to. It's not considered evidence. Um, his argument, so he can really say whatever can he you wants. Give us an example of some of the things that, that you feel he was improper yeah, well, I'm a, or lying about. Well, I'll read what what I have. If okay. I don't know if I I don't know if I wrote the lies down, I might have mm-hmm. been like, mm, but I, I'll I will tell you. Let's see, let's see. So <clears throat> he starts off by saying that half of the prosecution's one hour and fifteen minute um, argument he uh, was a uh, quotes by Megan. He said, "Did he really talk about the case? Did he really talk about what happened? Who was there? What about Sean Kelly's testimony? And mind you, Sean Kelly said his client shot the gun with his arms outstretched, yeah. even though he didn't see a gun." Right. He saw the flashes. He heard the gunshot. So he keeps mentioning Sean Kelly. In my opinion, it's like it's it's a L. Why are you doing that? You should be staying away from Sean right. Kelly. Exactly. Right? Move the hell all the way up. Yeah, but he's he's he was putting Sean Kelly out front. So he said, you know, what about Sean Kelly's testimony? Are you gonna believe him saying two females were fighting, or are you gonna believe Megan? You left in a position. Um, you're left in a position to speculate. He says he, uh, Sean doesn't, let's see. He said the prosecutor didn't address Sean Kelly's version of what happened. What did Megan say? Has she been truthful about all the facts? He said, why would Megan lie? That's what the prosecutor had asked yesterday. And he's quoting him. Why would Megan lie? He's like, I don't want to focus on that. I want to talk about Sean Kelly. She spoke, talking about Megan. She spoke with Detective Stogner, who doesn't record because he doesn't have to. Sean said the muzzle flash came from Kelsey. Now, Sean never said Kelsey. He's using Kelsey's name now. He's not saying right. female. He's really throwing Kelsey under that big blue or yellow bus, whatever bus y'all are on. But uh, he said he admitted um, that Sean Kelly admitted the two women were fighting and there was a struggle for the gun. I don't remember him ever saying there was a struggle for the gun because he never right. said he saw a gun. Exactly. He said there was fighting. He said uh-huh. that they were they were all fighting, and he explicitly stated the opposite that he did. And I think that he, yeah, he never said he saw nobody struggle for the gun. Right. Ever. And when it was uh-huh. asked of him, he said, "Well, I didn't never saw a gun." Um, 
the big guy, he's saying, separated the fight, and we know that's Quan. Oh. The little guy, he's saying, gets out of the car and shot the gun. He has with a question mark. When did he? When did um, he ever say that before? When did Sean Kelly ever say that in any of his other statements? He said never. He said it was this man. He points at the prosecutor who said it. He said Kelly just adopted it. He said Megan was walking to the back of the car. That's what she said. Now it's the front of the car. He said Kelsey asked for immunity. I explained immunity to you. Why didn't they just give her transactional immunity and let her tell the truth? They said Kelsey was emotional, crying, and cared about her friend. Sure, because she shot her. Why are they no longer friends? You think it's because of diss tracks and IG posts? No. She said Kelsey. Hold on. Hurry up, motorcycle. I know. He said, um, he said, no. He said, did you see Megan's team sitting in the back of the court? And it's funny because everybody turned around to the back of the court. Oh, um, and now and now it makes sense because yesterday I was like, who are all these people? Because it was like a whole mm -hmm. line of people that came and sat in the back of the court. And now I know it was making it was probably Rock Nation people or whatever. Um, he said, I want to touch on this bribe stuff. Did anybody besides Megan take the stand to say he bribed them? Let's talk about investigation. Let's talk about the investigation. This is how he was going. He was just going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, he said the first day. They do GSR on three people. They don't have um, DNA results. Why did they only take it from my client? Because he offered it? Because he's a celebrity? Why didn't they GSR Quan? Where is Quan? I have no burden in this case. He said the two independent witnesses in this case are Quan and Mr. Kelly. I called Mr. Kelly. Why didn't they call Mr. Kelly? Why didn't they call Quan? Let's talk about GSR. Yes, both Ms. both Kelsey and my client had GSR. It's because my client was fighting with Kelsey for the gun. If their theory is that my client shot over the door of the car and Sean Kelly said she was outside the car, then how did she get GSR? If my DNA expert was so unreliable, why did the court allow them? Where is my client's DNA? There is no evidence that the gun was white. If the gun was white, why is there DNA? Okay, now that part I had an issue with, and I also had an issue with the fact that the prosecution, I do too. That the prosecution should have already discredited this statement because they said uh -huh. it before, and it's known that if DNA can't be cleaned by a white, you got to really clean exactly. the gun mm -hmm. with like gun cleaner. You got to have a kit to uh -huh. clean off DNA. But the prints, what about the print? The prints weren't there. And, that's and what about the fact that 90% of the DNA on the gun comes from a male? One male. Correct. Correct. Exactly. But it's still inconclusive because there wasn't enough. But let right. me go on. My client didn't even know the gun was there, he said. My client jumped in the front seat after the fight. The gun was thrown there. <laughs> the gun was thrown there. Wow. He, <laughs> he said the gun. He said, he said, who said the gun was in the center console? Because the uh, prosecution, I believe, said, said that yesterday. He said, Kelsey said, my client said she was going to shoot her and reach for the center console, but he didn't pull out a gun. He didn't do anything. If it's his gun and he's loading the gun and hardly handling the gun, then why is his DNA not there? Why is his DNA not on the magazine? Isn't that reasonable doubt? Um, how about he wore gloves? I'm, I'm just saying. But yeah, right. they uh, they did not do Or how about... Or how about? Oh, we don't know who the hell actually loaded the actual gun. Exactly. I mean, it's really exactly. Not, like, uh -huh. I think whoever loaded it probably had on guns. Because what dummy is going? Exactly. It's going to touch a, a unregistered gun and load it yeah. with bullets and all of that. It, exactly. Exactly. But that's just what logic. But okay. Um, let's see. And we cannot make the comparison. He says because they said my client was in the pool. Um. Well, they because in the pool. Well, actually, he said they didn't make the comparison because they didn't um, get everyone else's DNA. Uh -huh. But then he said, then they say my client was in the pool. Do they know how long he was in the pool? If he shot the gun five times, like they say, his DNA would have been there. If the gun didn't belong to my client, he said the gun, I'm sorry, did not belong to my client. He said, so whose gun is it? Quan's? He said, there's no proof of that. He said, EJ was the most credible witness. He packed Megan's bag, but not Kelsey's. He said he was there. Um, he said to protect themselves, they have a taser, 
mace, but he doesn't know what was in Kelsey's bag. Mr. Kelly said during the fighting, the female went back to the car. Why? To get the gun. Is there any evidence in this case that my client shot the gun? Everything they try to do is to dirty my client. To, they try to play on your emotions with Megan and make my client look like the bad guy. Do you remember a long break before you heard from EJ? I talked to EJ and then there was an objection. But then he said, um, I think it was overruled, I'm not sure. But he said, EJ is covering for Megan. Why didn't they call EJ? My client doesn't handle his, I, and then he moves on to I, Instagram. My client doesn't handle his Instagram. This is to muddy the waters to make my client look bad and Megan look good. My client didn't fight with Megan. Hold on, wait. Oh, hold uh -huh. on. Uh -uh. Defense said that EJ is covering for Megan. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he was talking about he doesn't cover, he doesn't, um, Tori doesn't control his IG. He was talking about the statement that uh, Kelsey didn't shoot Meg. I think he was talking about when there was um, Tori from Tori's page made a comment mm -hmm. under a sh under a shade room post about the case, and he said whatever said yeah. the shade room post said he said that's not true in the comment. So they brought okay, that okay, yeah, because it was a they they have to be talking about that statement that he made when somebody said that uh people saying that Kelsey shot Meg and he commented right under it saying uh Kelsey that's didn't shoot Meg. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's the, the one. my problem with that is if that's the case, why didn't your client? refute that statement after it was made like he never refuted it mm -hmm. he never came back and corrected that statement ever in mm -hmm. the past two years right exactly so yeah he said my client didn't fight with megan or kelsey he was trying to break them up he tried to stop kelsey he tried to take the gun he did not act willfully he did not act willfully and so right there when he said he did not act willfully so what are you saying he shot the gun on accident so now you're saying he did shoot the gun why did you say that but okay he said um yeah then he said then he followed that by he didn't fire the gun because i guess he realized he was getting into something you know what i'm saying he, that wow. lawyer puts his foot in his mouth a lot wow. i noticed that so then he brings up count three and he starts talking uh, he says shooting a five um arm shooting a five what is this? And a gross, oh, talking about gross negligence. Shooting, oh, okay, shooting a firearm in, a, in gross, with gross negligence. He said, um, there's no evidence that my client shot the gun. He said that flailing his arm, shooting the gun four to five times, there's no evidence of that, that that happened. Carrying a concealed weapon in a vehicle, within a vehicle, there is zero evidence of this. He did not have a gun. He said Quan was outside of the car. So how did he have the gun? EJ said, yeah, I've seen that what looked like a gun before. He didn't really say it like that. I mean, he was just kind of like, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe because, you know, the way the question was, it wasn't that he was just like, yeah, maybe I did see a gun. See, anyway, but that's, that's mm -hmm. my whole, see, oh my God, it's so manipulative. When that question was asked, uh, they were asking EJ that question generally, like, have you ever seen Kelts mm -hmm. or Meg with anything that resembles a gun? He said, exactly. well, maybe, but it's none of my business. And then when they finished, they asked him that day, do you recall seeing a gun? And he said, no. Person? He said, I don't yeah. recall that. So for right. him to like bring that back up and manipulate that question, that question had nothing to do with that day. That question was asked to EJ in a general sense. And right. since most tasers, like EJ said, they carry tasers when they don't have security. Most tasers these days look like guns. Look like, they look like guns, exactly. I was and the say question that. was, have you ever seen anything that resembles a gun? Not a gun, but resembles a gun. Most tasers look like guns, and he clarified he didn't see anything that looked like a gun or that was a gun that day at Kylie's party. Boom. So, um, he said, keep in mind the burden of proof. Keep in mind my challenges. He said the DA said dance bitch, which my client never said. Follow the law. The law is very clear. Follow the law. Follow your heart. Find my client not guilty on all counts. So that was his presentation. So I know see, it was a lot more obviously, but yeah, a lot of the lies I just didn't even write because I was like, that's a lie. <laughs>
like, I ain't right now lying. Well, these was lying. They fucking ass off, putting words to witnesses' mouth, putting their own interpretations to witnesses' statements, to to control the narrative, just all out making up shit. And then, how he gonna say that his client, there's no evidence of his client shooting a gun, when you have Kelsey's interview from September that was admissible into court, when you have her text message that was sent to me, that was sent to Justin that same night, when you have GSR all over Tory, you have the gun found by him, and you also have Sean Kelly and Megan who identifies Tory as as the shooter. But there's yeah. no evidence. Make it make no. sense. And then there's male DNA on the firearm itself, even though there's no DNA on the magazine. But there's male DNA on the firearm. He's a fool. A whole fool and doing the most. Okay, so he must be getting paid. Like, you ain't getting paid unless he win. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, so the prosecution comes up for their rebuttal. All right, they said, uh, we agree that Megan's testimony is direct evidence. The defense talked about Megan's sex life. He name dropped the likes of Ben Simmons. Why? He said to play on his prejudices and biases. If a male was the victim, they would they have talked about his sex life? No. He said, you can't, um, she said, you can't assume, you can't rely on prejudices. For the system to work in this case, you have to be uh, led by uh, the evidence. The witness's testimony and everything the judge says is evidence. Kylie's pool party. They had fun. They were flirting. She said the shooting didn't happen at Kylie Jenner's house. He said when the DNA was... Um, taken there was already a clear sub suspect they tried to object that he tried to object a couple times see the thing is they didn't try to object with him even though they knew he was lying but he tried to object all through their thing and it kept getting overruled but um he's doing that for his distraction Uh Uh okay so ej didn't say they're saying ej didn't say he saw megan or kelsey at kylie's house with a gun um they went on to she went on to explain reasonable doubt they talked about the whole boys club that Megan talked about, and they quoted her testimony about the men in this industry not supporting her. Um, it would have been, she said, it would have been easier for Megan to say her best friend did it, but this is hard. Um, if your gut is telling you that it doesn't make sense, then throw it out. She said, who is Quan? Kelsey said he's the driver, the security, and all roles. Um, she mentioned him telling her money talks when they both were released from jail. Tori attempted to bribe them um, with a million dollars when they were in the vehicle about to be uh, being approached by the police. Whether or not he was actually on probation, it's fact, it's fact that he said it to her. It doesn't matter if he was on it or not. He said that to get her sympathy. Uh-huh. The defense asked, who's the shooter? Why didn't he ask her, did you shoot Megan? Because he knows the truth. Why is he protecting Tori? Why is she, Kelsey, protecting Tori up there? His first jail call he made was to Kelsey. If she was the shooter, why didn't he ask her, what happened? Why did you do that? Kelsey is a terrible mm. liar. Yeah, she was, that made a good, that was a good point. Yeah, that was because, a good like, point. Hey, if he called her, why would he be apologizing if Kelsey right. was the one that shot the gun? Doesn't make any sense. Kelsey, she said, Kelsey's a terrible liar. We saw that. But they're trying to paint her as some criminal mastermind. If she's covering for herself, not Tori, why didn't she call the police instead of texting Justin? Uh, she said, Mr. Kelly was woken up and witnessed a chaotic scene. It's not exactly inconsistent with Megan and Kelsey's testimony. What Kelly says about Kelsey is different than what he says about Tori. Um, she goes through some of Kelly's testimony. Um, he says, I never saw a gun. I just saw flashes. Explains why GSR is on both um, Kelsey and Tori, obviously because they were in close proximity. She was getting out of the car. He was still in the passenger seat over shooting over the door. That's very close. Yes. Um, let's see. Kelsey was not alone when the shooting happened. He did not see Kelsey shoot inside of the car. Because that was another thing they were trying to say. Uh-huh. No, they, she shot inside the car. They said that she shot inside the car. She said it was impossible. There were no, there was no casings, no GSR, no bullets in the car. I mean, no, um, not, exactly. no casings. Exactly. No All bullets. the casings were found outside of the vehicle. Yeah, no, no bullet holes. 
um, what did he say about Tori? He never said Kelsey was holding an object. He said Tori has something in his hand um, twice. You heard him say Tori, Tori's arms were outstretched twice. Never said it about Kelsey. When asked about how many shots, he said four to five shots. Sean Kelly puts the gun in the defendant's hand, followed by the muzzle shots. Never said there was a struggle over the gun. She said, you have two different witnesses in this case. Three, I'm sorry, three different witnesses in this case. Kelsey and Megan hate each other, she said. Megan and Mr. Kelly doesn't know either of them. They all say Tory shot the gun. Every time you have, every time you fire a gun, it's gross negligence. Every time, each shot. He directed his torrent abuse at Kelsey. My uh, Megan is not a suspect. So it's either Quan, Kelsey, or Tory. They say this is a straightforward guilty. They say this is a straightforward guilty verdict. <clears throat> or yeah, she said, she must be saying it's a straightforward guilty. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have a smoking gun. It's just common sense. Kelsey was never in the front seat. Tori was the last person on that front seat, in that front seat. The jail call. Tori, um, the one apologizing, not Kelsey. This is not, um, what did she say? This is not about Megan or Kelsey. It's about Tori. The defendant had his ego bruised because Megan's career was bigger than his, and his his side of the thing, court laughed. And the, the deputy had told us before, too, don't make no faces or laughs or snickers because I guess the... Um, I think it was the prosecution probably complained about that because people were kind of laughing when the <laughs> defense was up yesterday. There was some some audible reactions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the defense, let's see, the defendant said his ego was she was more successful. He had a massive ego and didn't like being dismissed. Um, she said he's guilty. Tory shot Megan, and your decision should reflect that. And that was the end of the. The wow presentation wow 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 tori is guilty here so i mean so comparatively speaking who would you say made the more convincing closing arguments the defense or prosecution i would say if you've been in court and you know what was being presented the whole time you would know that the, the defense was lying i think the prosecution um you know they hit every point and they had the facts to back up everything they said. If you compare what they said to what was presented, it's gonna line up versus mm. the defense. The defense, they don't line up with what was presented. Mm. So, wow. So I mean, you're feeling like it's very possible that Tory might get charged on all three counts. It's, three very possible. Counts. it's very possible, but I still have that little problem with these couple of jurors. like. Yeah, I, I really do. Like when they came and told us, you know, don't be reactive and this and that. I was like, well, you guys need to talk to the jury, even though they might have, because I noticed they weren't doing all that head shaking and stuff today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm nervous about the jury, too, because it's been I, I, I don't like some of the things I've been hearing. And if it's only one of them who is on some bald headed whole shit, that's enough to throw the whole verdict. Exactly. And so, um, mm -hmm. when you got people in the ele when you got a jurors, a jurors in the elevator with 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 um, Tory, when you got folk who might be hotties or folk who might be, um, you know, team ball spot. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it's it's just a lot. It when is got, a lot when you got folk coming up in there in spaghetti straps trying to trying to trying to appeal to the to the rich niggas like it's just a lie mm -hmm. they should have had all middle-aged black folk on this uh, <laughs> well there's only i think what three black people, people who only listen to kim burrell <laughs> on the radio <laughs> people who would have been shocking off throughout this whole thing like uh clutching their pearls again about tory now I also heard uh goddess that uh Tory Lanez was falling asleep yesterday at certain points. I heard Did you that notice too. him I, I not really, off at all. I didn't really notice him nodding off. I, I was watching him. He was reacting to stuff. I mean, sometimes he has his head down, like on his hand, like he's scribbling or doodling. 
Uh, but I didn't notice any sleeping. Now I didn't. I don't. I didn't notice no sleep. I don't think he did sleep because I would look over him for different reactions when the prosecution was giving their their um, just, you know their press argument, mm-hmm. and he was looking. He was giving face. He was making faces and rolling his. You know, he was. I don't remember him being asleep. Some people are lying. I'm just saying. I don't know why, but some people are really coming out the court and saying things that didn't happen. I've heard this even from the mainstream media. And so how dare them come for us new media, okay? Because right. they spend shit too. Who's paying right. you? Who are you right. in bed with? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, mm-hmm. but I want to say this before uh, yes. we go, because uh, there was a little more after the jury okay. left. Well, before the jury left, um, the judge asked them to pick a foreman. And um, he, he told them, don't change your mind if others agree disagree with you. And he said, like, if you really feel like it based on the evidence, like, you're obviously not coming in, like, ready to make your your uh, yeah. vote already but after you've gone over everything like stick, stick to your guns he said um have an open discussion keep an open mind do not talk about the case with others only um discuss with any anyone any don't discuss with anyone but the other jurors in the j- deliberation and they're on lunch right now so okay um, do you know if the judge prohibited them from looking at social media did he ever clear that up when this first did. started yeah, he did. He repeated it throughout okay. the whole thing. Yep. Okay. So, again, he said, do not go on social media or news sites or any, really, don't go online, really. Um, he said, if you have questions, I might have to talk to an attorney, so just give me time. Make your verdict without, um, I missed that because he, he was talking fast, but make your verdict mm-hmm. without something, without, like, prejudice, I think. Because, um, uh, you know, I think they mentioned, you know, he's not testifying. Um, address he just addressed the alternates they're not gonna so the alternates um, you know they sit through the whole trial but they can't even deliberate they gotta sit in the hallway or like stay away they can't even hear what's being said about the decision or nothing that's mm-hmm. crazy okay so let's see the deputy was sworn in just to make sure he takes care of the jurors he's gonna have to walk them here and there make sure you know they're where they're supposed to be mm-hmm. he said that uh, we'll be giving um, they will be giving all the exhibits and uh, all the evidence and for their deliberation they are also going to be given a uh, um, laptop so they can look at social media stuff and you know the stuff that's in the um in the evidence he said okay. keep deliberating he said keep deliberating until your heart until you yes, hear it. from us until yeah. you hear from us just keep deliberating you're on your own schedule when you take breaks but don't deliberate unless you're all present um they said to uh be back tomorrow by 9 to 9 30 a.m if you don't reach a verdict today let me know and you if you want to go home tomorrow so basically he's like if you don't come to your decision today let me know if you want to come tomorrow or take tomorrow off because they're closed on monday he said we could just come back tuesday oh shit! i know so if they don't come to a decision today it's very possible because i'm pretty sure they're going to want friday off if he's allowing that yeah um so he said that yeah we could just come back on tuesday there was a short sidebar the jurors were released and he told us to stay close if we want to be here for the verdict because when they do reach the verdict they're going to give i think a 30 minute to an hour so people could come in like the attorneys and Mm -hmm. whoever and then um, they're gonna um, give the verdict and he said during deliberation the court will be clear which is now but i'm going back i'm gonna hang out today i think just to see and then uh probably so if, and then i'm thinking they're going to be closed tomorrow so if we don't get it today we probably won't come back till tuesday okay wow oh my god how would you feel if they if they if they waited the next five days to get back to, to get into a conclusion i really hope they come back today because honestly you know it's a good sign for megan and her you know her case because typically when they come back quick like that it's a it's a guilty um so typically not always so yeah i definitely don't want to come back but i'd want to be here because i've been here through this whole yeah. thing i don't want to i don't want to just hear the verdict at home and then you know what i'm saying yeah. i want to hear everything right. that's said about the verdict because they go break yeah. down the different charges and which verdicts were voted what you know or which charges they voted you know so i want to hear yeah. it all yeah so, yeah, yeah. i'm wow. gonna just stay okay. positive um, and, you know meditate what is, on what, it and what is uh-huh. uh Tori's energy in court today well you know he was smiling at the kids because they were they were making the little couple of outbursts the kids i mean you know 
that, that's natural for children. They're not going to be able to just sit quiet in a courtroom. So he would turn around and smile. And, you know, he's playing to the press, I think. Um, he's, I didn't only saw him when he walked into the court. I didn't, I hadn't seen him in the hallway. Like sometimes we see him beforehand. I didn't see him. So I don't know. But typically, you know, he shows face. He's not going to show us anything but, you know, Tori's, Tori's a charmer. You know, that's just his nature. So, you know. Okay. I, I is just, there anybody, is there any other celebrities who appear today? Um, in court? Or, I didn't see any. Okay. Yeah, it, I didn't see any celebrities. Is the group that was initially outside the courthouse for Megan, um, are they, have they still been there, like, throughout this trial, or did they only come and make noise the first day, or the day that she came to testify? Who who made noise? Remember that little group that was outside of the courthouse when Megan oh, came to testify, who was a protect yeah. Meg and all that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Are they still there outside the courthouse? Have they been a rallying? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm at the back um, court, um, where he usually comes out. It's like a little okay. courtyard. I don't see nobody. It's nobody okay. here. Uh-uh. No fanfare. I don't see any fanfare. Uh, we, there was a lot. There was some YouTube drama, honey. Ooh, child. This YouTube streets carry over everywhere. In the court hallways, there's been fights. I mean, you know, arguments. It was a big argument this morning, but they've made up. So what? It, was a, it was a big... Uh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. What? Y'all well, wanna what? know who it was? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Try to spill all the tea. What had happened? Child. I'll just say this. I have the audio. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's be, that's okay. Good. So, so, so it's a lot of deliberating going on in the court. <laughs> a lot of deliberating. I have, I'm a. What? I'm a. That's gonna be a member channel. That's a member yeah. channel uh, situation. But so what uh, basically. Happened? So basically, okay, so, you know, I don't, I guess you, you I don't know if you know, Neek at Night is here. Okay. She showed up, I think, a couple days ago. Yeah, shout out to Neek. Um, and there was, oh, okay, so she had previously gotten into it with, so her first day, her first day, there was a guy, I don't know who he is, and I don't know if he has a YouTube channel or blog, but basically someone overheard him as, and she perceived whatever he said about her as a threat. So they was arguing about it. I wasn't, you know, I was on the other side of the hallway. I was observing. I was like, okay, what's that? What's all this about? Well, that happened. Okay, well, this morning there was, okay, so us who have been here, we have bonded. There's some of us who, you know, we've been, it's like we're a little family, right? So we, we kept saying we're going to make, take a group picture. That was our plan. Like, we need to take a group picture. So when one of somebody said, we need to take a group picture, Armand Wiggins said, with who? Well, I ain't taking it with everybody. And Period. so he, and and that was just real and it didn't happen but she took it personally neat she was sitting not far she was like i don't want to be in your picture i mean it period. just i period on both of them period fuck you fuck you too period <laughs> but that's what set off the argument because we weren't really it wasn't about her because there's some other people who are like mm -hmm. So annoying. I mean, these I don't even know who these people are. Like one of them is a paparazzi lady. She's off her fucking walker. And we think, well, not we. It is it is thought that she is the person who's been leaking stuff to Megan's people who about like Milagro and stuff. Mm. But anyway, anyway. Well, our okay, so was, Nick, Nick was arguing. That, that don't seem like Nick. I know. I think she was. Child, she must have she must have really been pressed to get it popping. I, I know because she seems like a, she's so sweet to me. I mean, I have nothing you know she's i don't know i mean we just met so but but see like, that's why i but see i was just talking to patreon the other day i, I said look folks gotta keep that same energy like if y'all if, if if you don't fuck with certain people online don't fuck with them when you see them either like keep that same energy like yeah but um, ignore me i ignore you Stay to your side after the uh, and that's it and that's if I would have gone up the only motherfucker i would have been in a photo op with you I wouldn't, and they, I wouldn't even yeah. have to at the mother folk. I, and that's how it was. I mean, everybody was just like, if you don't fuck with people, we nobody was speaking to people mm -hmm. who they didn't fuck. Yeah, it was just like that. But that, I think she got, she felt away because she knew she wasn't going to be in the picture. I mean, it wasn't, in, I don't think she wanted to be in the picture. It was just the fact that it was said like that. Right. And it was mm -hmm. kind of like, you kind of feel away. I got, I you get just making that. it clear that ain't nobody thinking about you being in, in, in a motherfucking picture to begin with. Exactly. If you thought I was concerned, I don't give a damn. Ex exactly. So mm -hmm. then, of course, Armand wasn't going to just 
let that stay there. So that just escalated. I mean, I'm talking standing up. What? People had, people had to get in the middle of it, like to break up. Get in know, the middle of a boy and girl fight? Well, it wasn't like he was going to fight like that. Mm -hmm. She 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 actually got up like, I ain't no punk. You know, it was kind of like, you know, I ain't, I ain't no punk. Oh, she but tapped into patriarchy, honey. She was ready to take patriarch patriarchy head on. I mean, you know, it oh just, but, but, but I will say this, I will, but it did, you know, I think Armand took a little breather. He came back and he actually, he actually asked someone to move so he could sit with next to her and, and talk it out. So they believe they hashed it out. It looked to me like it got straightened out. I saw her actually right before I came out here. She said she was good. She, she misunderstood. And I think we, not me, uh, somebody else that was, I was with, they, other people were explaining that's not what we, what that was like. She misunderstood. She associated Armand with the person she perceived was threatening her for whatever reason. I don't know why she was mixing them two up because he had nothing to do with that guy's blog or whatever he said. Mm -hmm. So it was just a big misunderstanding, but it's been tense. And I think people are just yeah. tired. Now, how the YouTube is going to come there to try to get to the bottom of it, but then they come and get the goddamn SUV4 popping off all over again. <laughs> Look, it's they YouTube. come up in that bitch busting shots. The hell, you know how the YouTube. Oh my god, coming. the YouTubers are ghetto, ghetto. You know, I was you called the only person, You the only person who been acting. Like, you been the only person with class and poise, honey. I'm glad you represent the conscious crew. Our <laughs> <laughs> ground troop, honey. All, <laughs> she been in her pen skirt with her pen and notepad, honey. Carrying, <laughs> honey. Why y'all favorite YouTubers went and got ghetto up in the LA courthouse, honey? Okay, because okay. it was Period. really given. It was very much given ghetto, but it was Jesus. it was entertaining. I'll say that. And it was so funny because uh, I was sitting next to Armand in the in the court after he was like, "You got all that, huh? You got the you got the court, you got the Show YouTube." Me. They gonna give it right to CTV. Show D. <laughs> I got a good picture. I could, I'm gonna email you a picture just so you could see. Period. What, what, you know, so you could get an idea. This guy you sitting on TV. I'm gonna send wow. you a picture. <laughs> I gotta, I, I gotta start pushing through to some of these um events, honey. Uh, you might just y'all get honey. it popping. Just stay where you at and keep getting tossed around. I told and them, I told them a few days ago. L.A. is ghetto. L.A. ain't nothing but a a bunch of country bumpkins. Hold on, do you oh, live in wait. Hold up now. Hold, Hold up. up now. Yeah, cause I, with the exclusion of my goddess, honey, she's an okay. outsider in. Okay, thank you but so much. Because I'm born and raised. I'm born and raised, but it, uh, you know we got a special. We do have a special <laughs> element here. We do have a special element, but we do not. Somebody yeah. said when you. I heard somebody say when you touch down in L.A., they just give you a gun. That's how that works. I'm like, no, Ooh, babe. Shit. That is not how that works. And all that checking <laughs> in, and then let me not start calling out people because I don't want your channel because that whack 100 bullshit checking in with him. He ain't even in LA, but let me not go there. My let God. me not go there. I got on my rec my label sweatshirt because I have a, uh, my son raps and we have a label and I have on my label sweatshirt today. Okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm in thug. You better today. be like, heading out CDs to Megan and Tori. <laughs> you better be hunting. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I, got fl I got flash drives for everybody. Okay. Come through Rock Nation, period. <laughs> Rock Nation, the whole road gonna get a flash drive. I don't I know who y'all are. <laughs> I am not mad. My God, today. Wow. Yes. wow. But listen, I gotta go because I think they said okay. there's gonna be a list. I need to make sure. Yes. They said I was on the list, but I gotta make sure. And yes. I'm gonna come back because if I'm okay. just sitting around, if I'm just sitting around, if you're still live, I might just pop in because yes, I this mean, hit me up. This hit me I'm, up. Let yeah. me know. Definitely hit me as soon as y'all get that verdict. You know, just I keep sure. me informed. I sure will. Keep, I'm gonna keep you posted. Tori is in the building, so keep your bulletproof vest on. <laughs> so I'm, take I'm, it out. I'm staying far away. Home. Okay. I sure will. All, All right, right dude, I got love you. you and thank you. All right, thanks you and crew. Bye. Bye. That was Goddess John speaks on you. Bye. Great, great. It's going down, honey. I did not know that the YouTubers was up in there getting ghetto, girl, over there fighting over who. Who gonna buy the stamps, girl? Fighting over wick vouchers and shit, girl. Y'all heard Goddess, girl. She captured it all on, 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 on camera, on tape, baby. She got more damn evidence than the goddamn defense does for their client Tory. Girl, do you two up there getting ghetto, honey? Y'all better not pay none of these motherfuckers to um to come and perform for y'all damn children's bar mitzvah and shit, girl. Bitches end up busting shots and shit, try, trying to fight the Germans and stuff, girl.
Okay, y'all better hide them goddamn YouTubers, girl, to get to none of y'all goddamn events shit, girl. The, the, girl, you you can't trust no motherfucker who wouldn't get it popping in court, bitch. Okay, black folk usually stay away, honey, from getting ghetto in the courts, baby. Okay, then that's some real ghetto, bitch. Come hell or high water, baby. <laughs> baby, Nick, they show her ass at the court. <laughs> My God, reckless. You heard that? Yes, ma'am. Girl, you think that we would have got down there and had acted like some straight heathens? Um, for me, I know. I, don't get me wrong. I know what I give on the panel, but however, when it comes down to in person, as in when it comes down to the police, <laughs> I know how to conduct myself. <laughs> Girl, ain't nobody down there acting classy, but our motherfucking uh, goddess down speaks, baby. Getting straight to the T, honey. Keeping it professional. That's yeah, how we represent them. Yeah. I did not know they had one. <laughs> I, I fucking gag it. I did not know they had one. I'm not going to lie. I figured because I came across like um a few YouTubers, um I'm not going to name them, but a few YouTubers' videos and stuff. And I felt like they was hinting towards But keep in mind, when I was looking through the videos, I kind of skimmed it. And I felt like I was skimming through. And I was like, okay, this sounds like something else was going on. I feel like they was hinting towards it, but I, I didn't watch the video all the way through to actually see the context, etc. So, look at me. Mm-hmm. Girl, oh, oh, okay, girl. Okay, all right. So, y'all heard about this girl. So, they're dropping closing arguments, girl. It seemed like the prosecution is getting the upper hand in terms of their closing arguments. How do you feel about the closing argument from the prosecutor versus the closing arguments from the line ass defense? Okay, so explain that to me because because I came in around that part. So basically, she the, okay, so 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 what was the defense lying about? The defense was putting words in Sean Kelly mouth, rearranging shit that uh Kelsey said, just basically stating flat out lies, even misrepresenting okay. some of the things that EJ had also testified to, such as when EJ was asked the general question about whether he's ever seen anything that looks and resembles a gun mm-hmm. in Kelsey or Megan's uh, possession. And EJ mm-hmm. said, maybe, but I just mind my business. Well, the defense misrepresented that as if that question was uh, asked about that day. And that was not true. That question was posed as a general question, mm-hmm. period. But the defense tried to make it look like EJ said that he saw something that looked like a gun on their person's at the mm. day of Kylie's party. So he was doing that type of ball headed whole shit. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. yeah. The, the, the prosecution that. more so stuck to the facts. They made mm-hmm. also a really good point about why, if Tori, if Kelsey shot the gun as the defense will have the jurors believe, why would Tori call the shooter and be crying and apologizing? And why would he call the shooter and not scrutinize the shooter? Like, bitch, why you did all that with your extra ass? And and and, and, and and then on top of that, be like, like, and then on top of that, be like, oh, bitch, I'm in jail because of your ass. <laughs> right. So, and then, you know, the other question is, why would Tory apologize but keep the context of why he yeah. apologizing out of mm-hmm. the apology? He intentionally left the contest yeah. mm-hmm. because if you ain't shoot a bitch and you only been fucking two friends, that's you can state that. That's not incriminating. You're not gonna get charged for having sex with two friends. You're not gonna get charged from um having community dick. You're not gonna be charged for your dick entering into the algorithm of Megan and Kelsey's uh coochie. Like you're not gonna get charged for that. So why would you apologize for one to the shooter? And then why the hell would you keep the context of why you apologize and not only out of your apology to Kelsey from the jailhouse, but your apology to Megan through text? You just gave a general apology, but didn't clarify exactly what the fuck you so sorry for. So prosecution was tearing it up, girl, and they was correcting um, the defense on you know, how they misrepresented some of the quotes from the witnesses and all of that. Now, you know, it's been also some other bald-headed whole shit that's been going on, too, because Justin Edison, okay, one of the prosecution's uh, key witnesses who had went ironically missing, mm-hmm. but was later found, um, Ooh, found, but had his goddamn dick pics leaked. Oh, uh, yeah. 
I know that. And he all over Twitter, um, you know, showing the girls all six and a half strong inches. And not <laughs> only that, most shockingly, girl, the second slide of the exposure is Justin allegedly bumped over with Megan the Stallion knees. Big head bouncing with his booty all over the screen, spreading his cheeks, girl, throwing his asshole in a circle, honey, like giving up cellulite for days, honey. I do. I refuse to believe that that's just it in that second slide, girl. Do you believe that Megan had, you know, taught him everything that he know in that second slide? You know, honest, um, when it comes down to the second slide, I don't have them kind of him. secret powers because he, you know, he was <laughs> around Megan Thee Stallion for a long time. I don't know what they was doing when the camera was off, girl. Because when I thought about who he was bodyguarding for, I was like, well, this this is Queen Turk, Turk girl. So he probably attended some of the master classes, but I just cannot, Justin just don't give me twerk. And then when the first slide of him in profile, he don't even have no ass. But the second slide is clearly a nigga who kind of on the thickum side around the hip area. Mm -hmm. Justin ain't got all that going on from the bike like yeah, that. Yeah, he don't. No shade. He don't. <laughs> so I feel like somebody was trying to little fizz his ass. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that first and third slide definitely is him because the tattoos add up and everything. The titty or the male boobs add up. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely him in the first and second. But that third slide. I mean, that second slide is T. It's questionable T. That second slide is like T mixed with a little bit of Hennessy. Like, it ain't complete T. It's it's questionable T, girl. Please, girl. Now, mm -hmm. what I think is ironic about Justin not showing up on the witness stand mm -hmm. is the fact that Kelsey and her dish track busting back Mm -hmm. He knew that Dez, them from over there, had threatened her ass with a goddamn sex tape. With leaking mm -hmm. the sex tape, you know, if she, if she, if she jumped her ass out of the window. Mm -hmm. And then here it is. We have, ironically, someone who used to work a big, who mm -hmm. didn't do their motherfucking job, and then all of a sudden, before trial even wraps up, girl, he done got exposed. But then I'm also questioning, girl, you know. Is this really that big of a deal? Because niggas typically don't give a damn about they news being leaked to begin with. Like, that just raised their social equity. <laughs> but I feel like when they slid that second slide in there, girl, that was the big... <laughs> <laughs> they was like, bitch, you got gotcha. you. That, that was the shade of it all. It's when they, third that, <laughs> when they slid that second slide in there. But what you think about the pictures being leaked and the timing and all of that? And do you think that that's Justin bent over like Lady Gaga performing... Um. Just dance. Performing just dance. Lord have mercy. Um, I'm gonna think I'm gonna be honest. Now, I would say this does feed into the narrative that Rock Nation uh leaked it. I'm talking about Kelsey, but the thing about it is the reason why I'm kind of like eh, a little bit because I'm kind of like on the fence about either it's Rock Nation or this is just a fan that's mad as hell at Justin. Reason being is because but how would a fan get a hold of his news? Was it a fan no. he fucking? No, no, but no, but the reason why I, I, I'm, I'm saying that is because Kelsey didn't do her job either. We still have a sex tape of her yet. She did well, not do her job. Well, she pussy popped on sand, so she kind of did. Mm -hmm. But Justin kind of did his too. He didn't even. Well, no, he was he was supposed he would he was supposed to show up. Kelsey sat, tried to sabotage the shit, so maybe she did her fucking job. But why would a fan though have the news? Shit, you'd be surprised. You bitch, you'd be surprised what motherfucking fans come up with. You know, people break it to people's phones and shits. Okay. Only God knows. But 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 the reason why I'm like, um, but however, I will say this. If it's Rock Nation, I I can believe that. No shade. I can believe that. But I will say that but they said those nudes are old. I don't know. But here's the thing: when it comes down to it, I think if Rock Nation were to do that, I think they'll do it. Um, I think they'll do it with more uh believable. As in, they'll make sure every slide is him. Um, that second slide looks shady as fuck, but it could be Rock Nation. That's no shade. That second slide is not. That is not my nigga Justin. Okay, I'm <laughs> not gonna play. 
and my nigga face light up. Yeah, like, I, I don't like think, Jay. I don't think, I don't think that's uh just I'll show you. So mm -hmm. okay, okay, hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, I had to get some shit together. Okay, so girl, so that's it, girl. Um, y'all just type in, tell them how to find the the situation on Twitter. What situation? Oh, um, the video, um, the pictures and stuff. Okay, so what you're gonna do? You're gonna go on. You're gonna go into Twitter. You're gonna put Megan the Stallion, but you're gonna press photos and videos, and then it should most definitely should pop up because that's how I found it. Okay, now let's push on over, girl. So that's Justin Child. You know, um, the driver. Well, they, apparently, people said, apparently, people in the, um verdict are saying that they got um they already got the verdict already. Let me see. How they got the verdict and they just returned for lunch? Like they just went to deliberation. I have no clue. Okay, but um, so Daquan, the driver, did show up, but he showed up ironically without his lawyer, so they forego his testimony. They found Justin, but Justin is not testifying as well. So now we in the deliberation phase. Also, they just uh produced the update over on neighborhood talk. So let's go over here. To uh, Neighborhood Boulevard, honey. Okay, courtesy of Neighborhood Talk says, Jeremy currently deliberating, posted an hour ago. Jeremy is now deliberating to Lane's fate at his felony assault trial centered on claims that he shot Miss Megan Thee Stallion in both feet on July 12th of 2020. The jury listened to end of closings and got the case around 11.15 a.m. Jury, as it stands, is five men and seven women. So, okay. So, girl, if they came back with a verdict this goddamn close, bitch, his ass guilty. Because, like Goddess Don Speak said, girl, usually when there's a hasty uh, deliberation, it's because the motherfucker is guilty as charged. So, um, Tori is fucked, girl. <laughs> if jury, uh, if the jury was already done release the cracking, honey. Now, let me go over to... uh. Let's go over to Twitter real quick. So I want to get into this Nancy Dillon, honey. Hold on, Nancy. And thumbs up, thumbs up this video. If you guys are in the building. Yeah, there's no way they decided already. I would, it, it, even if they was going to find Tory Lane's guilty girl, I wouldn't even want their ass to find his ass guilty this goddamn quick. Like, actually take time and comb through everything and make a decision that at least we can know y'all are confident in. And y'all took y'all time on and y'all really made from a real place of observation and conviction. Cause uh baby. Baby, 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 baby. Okay, so this is Miss Dylan. Hold on, let's go over to Miss Twitterations over again, courtesy of Miss Nancy, honey. Miss Nancy No Grace. Okay, over on Twitter. Okay, she said four hours ago. Good morning from day nine of Tory Lane's felony assault trial in L.A. We're learning more about Jaquan Smith's presence at the L.A. criminal courthouse yesterday. He was Tory's driver. Also, um, his bounty hunter, his coffee boy, um, his seamstress, okay? The night of Megan Thee Stallion shooting, okay? And this is a piece of old nasty piece of paperwork, honey. Hold on. Why is it so... Uh... On July, da 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 best friend Kelsey, the defendant, security guard, Jay Quant, and the Cadillac Escalade driven by. How am I supposed to see this? Huh? Where is the whole situation? Hold on. Let me see what the caption is here, okay? Smith hadn't provided prior witness. Smith hadn't provided prior witness statements, so prosecutors asked for continuance to next week to prepare. Otherwise, they're going in blind. Tory's lawyer, George, tells us, quote, he did not ask for immunity and did not say she was the shooter. She being Kelsey asked for why the defense didn't agree to continuance. We believe we have more than enough and we are afraid with the holidays we will lose jurors and it will result in a mistrial. Lawyer saying, confirming James Queeley report, but this case could easily go beyond the upcoming holiday weekend with deliberation. So it's interesting. Prosecutors were still searching for Megan's bodyguard. So any delay could have increased chance he came in too. Okay. Jury is now deliberating Tory Lane's fate, okay, at his felony assault trial centered on claims that he shot Megan Thee Stallion. 
prosecutors Kathy Ta had the last word Thursday and showed the jury. Now deliberating Tory Lane's fate, a chart that looked roughly like the one below. I'm a visual learner. Ta said, this is how straightforward the evidence in the case is. We really only have three suspects. So, guy, uh, Jaquan, uh, is a negative for DNA. Kelsey, uh, and Tory are marked for GSR. Um, Sean Kelly, defendant, okay, gun for Tory, Megan, Kelsey, help text, da da da, da. <laughs> they, oh, they got, they got Tory ass lined up, baby. <laughs> they got his ass X'd out on every, it got him marked for every box aside from DNA, which they, which they honestly could have kept because DNA was only not found on the magazine. The DNA was inconclusive on the firearm. Okay, but they scrapped them all for the DNA because I guess it was inconclusive. So they strapped Jaquan, Kelsey, and Tori. But they got Tori marked up, girl. Okay, they got Tori's apology text. They got Kelsey's help text. Tori shot the hoe. They got the jail call apology. They got Kelsey's September interview, girl. Okay, they got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, girl. He's identified by Sean as a shooter. He's identified by Megan as a shooter, girl. He's identified by Kelsey as a shooter, girl. Jesus, okay. Um, GSR, okay. Ta said Jaquan did not have GSR, but Tori and Kelsey did, so she gave them each an X. Sean Kelly, quote, Sean Kelly puts the gun in the defender's hand. Ta said after quoting from his testimony, DNA, the DNA is a wash, Ta said. Megan, quote, Megan says the defendant shot her, Ty said. Kelsey in September interview says the defendant shot Meg. Ty argued, help text. Ty said Kelsey text Megan's bodyguard five minutes after the shooting. Tori shot Meg. Tori's apology text. He says, I'm sorry. I would never have done that if I wasn't drunk. Jail call, quote, he's the only one apologizing. Not Kelsey, Ty argued, quote, let's say she's the shooter at one at no point does tori say what the hell happened what were you doing ta said ta said the absence of what's not on the call is just as compelling as what's on it i was saying that yesterday in yesterday's live stream that you got to listen to what's being said and what ain't being said what's being argued and also what ain't being argued okay you, you can't be a basic bitch on this case you like this case is really for critical thinkers all these motherfucking basic ass one dimensional thinking assholes who trying to piece shit together? Y'all can't piece it together because y'all brain is only in one piece, bitch. You got to have a complete brain and you have to have strong observation skills and you got to be really good at reading it between the motherfucking lines to get some goddamn well, okay? This case is not for the basic at all. Why didn't he ask for immunity like Kelsey did? Hmm, okay? So I want to go over to the list. And get into she tags somebody ass. Hold on. Let me see here. She tags somebody that I wanted to get into. Okay, 20 hours ago. It's another man. It's another man, another man, another man I want to check out before we get into a brief recap. Hold on. Because we got some other things to get into concerning this case as well, you guys. And I, we will be dropping the link, honey. We know y'all going to tear it up. Okay, so don't worry, honey. I got you. I got you. I got you. James Quigley on Twitter. Hold on. Let me see what if James Queely got some updates for us. He sure the fuck don't. Um... Uh, in court today, boom, pow, boom, pow. Uh, Tory Lane's trial picking up where James Queeley lot left off. Hold on, he don't got no. He's he ain't had no tweet since the thirteenth. My God, was he paid off too, bitch? Hold on, oh, 20 hours ago, and we're still going. Defense did not finish. It's closing. Okay, okay, we know that. Okay, so. You guys know, okay, so that's what's going on so far, girl. Deliberations are taking place, honey. Um, So, you know, there was all this st stuff spoken about lyrics. They brought in um, 
Kelsey's diss track. They brought in um, Tori's uh, lyrics, etc. And this this imaging here from his uh, cap record, which was a dish record to Megan Thee Stallion, you know, okay? People were saying that um, what he was chopping up here was a was horse leg. To me, it actually looks like a deer leg, okay, that he's actually um, butchering, okay? But what's interesting is that even though he's butchering a deer leg, when the camera pans out, what do you see here in the display case? A big ass horse leg that's severed. Okay, what do you see here in the in the display case? Butchered a stallion's leg, and guess what it's wrapped up in? Pink wrapping. Okay, as a hint to the gender of this horse. Okay, I believe that that pink wrapping is a hint to the gender of the horse, okay? They was on their subliminal Illuminati shit, okay? And you gotta be real quick with it, girl, because, you know, they were trying to put some hidden clues in this motherfucking video graph, okay? It wasn't what he was butchering. It's what he had already butchered, girl. Okay? That was T. What you think, Reckless? People are super minded. That's what I think. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because my mic was actually uh, backwards. Um, people are actually super minded. That's why. That's why. Um, that's it. Like, <laughs> I'm just ready for this verdict, just so we can hurry up and get either uh, yeah. me and you gonna have to windmill for dear life, or okay. we're, we're gonna be continue to continue to be right, even though we're right regardless. So, all right. So this is the dish track. That was literally directed at Meg, called Cap. You can go and see the video. He opens up with butchering animals, okay? He's butchering what looks to be a deer leg, and then boom, the camera pans out, and then you see a stallion's foot, a stallion's leg, butchered up, okay? And pink wrapping grub. No, oh, oh, no, bitch, I'm not reaching, honey. Okay, Miss Tori is reaching for the butcher's knife, okay? It's Miss Tori who's doing all the reaching, girl, okay? What I'm reaching for is the zoom in button, okay? What Tori is reaching for, girl, is the chef's knife, Miss Mamas, okay? He's the one reaching for the stove. He's doing all the cooking in the video, Miss Mamas, okay? Now, if a bitch going to put it out there for me, then, bitch, my, my, my seeing eyes is going to see. Jesus said, let those who have eyes see and let those who have ears hear, bitch. So when I see and I hear, girl, what you got to reach for is your damn common sense and stop being so damn gullible and stupid. Okay? It's a dish record. Literally toward Megan. Do you think they really just going to insert a random ass female leg of a goddamn horse? You think that that's just ironic? You think that's just coincidental? You think that that just happens to be a random prop that they gonna perch right there in front of your ass in the display window? You die blind, deaf, and damn stupid? Huh? 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 I guess that's also, I guess that's also not blood, girl. What is that? Kool-Aid stains? On Tory? I guess that's also not a toupee, honey. That's just natural hair. What else, honey? What else? What else, honey? What else? What else going on? Huh? And we ain't listening to nobody talking about the jury is out, uh, the verdict is out, bitch, until it's posted online. How the hell y'all know the goddamn jury out and nobody else know it? Shut the hell up. Don't make me have my moderators block y'all asses. Don't put another goddamn verdict is out shit in my goddamn chat, bitch, or your ass will be a permanent resident at the goddamn block nation, girl, with this. Free cots, paper bag lunches. Oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on, yes, I'm about to, I'm about to drop a link. Hold on. Hold on. Talking about CTV reaching, bitch, yeah. Reaching for the reaching for YouTube to watch the cat video. It's about to drop. Drop 
Link. Hold on, I gotta send um a, a link real quick. Hold on, hold on, cause we ain't finished, bitch. Hold on, I told y'all, bitch, this ain't the platform for for you basic ass double do do rag tying ass niggas, okay? Mm mm. And this ain't the platform for you, goddamn um, you motherfucking oh. Uh, Genetically altered apples eating ass motherfucking hoes who got all these goddamn um permanent injuries to your cerebral cortex, honey. Okay, this platform is for people who think, honey. Okay. This this platform is for debaters, okay? This this platform is for critical analyzers, girl. Okay, all you double do rag, not an ass niggas. This is this is not the platform for you, sugar. Hold on. Why I can't get why Chrome? Hold on, girl. What I hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold Come on, on Mercury girl. Retrograde. Hold these folk down until I get back in 60 seconds. Say no more. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Land of Records Logic. Please make sure you guys pop that like button, hit the subscribe button, and please, please, please smack that notification bell so do not miss any of my posts from us, either on your way coming in or your way going out. Make sure you hit that thumbs up because that really does help out with YouTube's algorithm. It, so, so basically, and essentially, y'all forgive me, y'all, because I'm over here um, multitasking. So essentially, if you do your job over there as in just hitting that a, a, just a simple button, a thumbs up button, then YouTube can do their job and actually send this video out to a whole bunch of people. And then you never know. Hey, if you team Tori, hey, you team Megan, hey, the more thumbs up that you actually do and the more uh, consistent that you guys are, the more team Tori and also the more the team Megan that actually comes into this live. And then we can really get it jumping. And that's on what? Mary Had Little Lamb and what? A pet Billy Goat. Bye -bye. All right, okay, so this is also where uh some of these whores is getting uh this information about this verdict from, okay? Shout out to the street committed, okay? This is from Gossip <laughs> of the City T, who says a court document supposedly got leaked on the jury verdict. We can't Ooh. verify it and don't want to mess anything up, so the post has been deleted, okay? So control out and delete that shit from your brain, okay? When we get the actual verdict, it will be something that goes out to every damn body, okay? Not only 1% of you. You motherfuckers are not um, the Rothschilds. Y'all are not the goddamn um, Illuminati, baby, okay? When the verdict goes out, baby, it'll go out to 99%, not to one damn percent, okay? So that's when we're going to clock the verdict, girl, okay? It's when we all see Jesus coming through the cloud girl okay when when every head shall bow when the verdict comes out girl every knee okay every neck okay every head shall kiss the rain when the verdict comes out girl okay it ain't gonna be no damn exclusive verdict bitch okay it's gonna be plastered everywhere for all to goddamn see okay now let me also do something else growl okay because my street committee sent me something else hold on Hold on, let me run this real quick. Okay. Why me watch you, watch you, watch you, watch it, baby. Oh. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me see here. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read this actually, okay? Because I don't want to show my inbox, honey. I got y'all men in my inbox. I don't want, I'm not ready to expose them to y'all yet. Um, so street committee has sent girl that the caption was these people brought up some very good points for the Tory apologist that went from, uh, he was never shooting to he was shooting in the air girl. Okay. So according to, uh, Qualess, okay? She said the witness never said in the air. He said everywhere, talking about Sean Kelly. And everywhere reliable, and every reliable journalist quoted him verbatim, stating everywhere. This in the air shit is the latest tactic from the biased people, and it's not true. And repeating it doesn't help because if someone did fire a gun in the air, that's still negligent and an offense, okay? They went on to say that these people are delusional. It went from the stepped on glass to Kelsey shot her to, well, he was shooting, but in the air. Meanwhile, bullets magically rained down from the air and skipped 
all of her 5'10 body to go straight into her damn feet. Make it make sense. They keep changing their goalposts. Like, so which was it? Y'all say she was never shot to y'all say Kelsey shot her. Now Miss Tory was a hero and tried to break up a fight, so he shot in the air. I cannot keep up, LOL. Whatever to make him seem completely innocent, they will say. Okay, they are mounting more of a defense than his own attorneys. His attorneys put up a witness that outed the gun in Tory's hands and said that he shot it. I mean, it's demented how people are defending this. He didn't claim self defense, didn't claim mistaken identity, didn't claim accident. He is just hoping people on the jury are as stupid as people who support him on social media. It could have been a salsa for the gun. That's why it was going everywhere because he probably was holding somebody hand down. Megan didn't get didn't get shot. This somebody responding to uh this person dragging the hell out of all the Tories apologists. Um, he could have been a salt. It could have been a salsa for the gun. That's why it was going everywhere because he probably was holding somebody's hand down. Megan didn't get shot. The bullet must have hit the floor, and that's how she got those in fragments in her feet. The guy said. She was also kicking and crawling. That's how she got those injuries in her goddamn feet. My God, too. They, oh, girl. When you don't graduate, girl, you just be out here a mess, honey. It just be a goddamn mess, okay? That person says, um, I've seen people have theories his own defense didn't have. Some trying to argue she wasn't shot when his own lawyers agree that she was. It's just ridiculous at this point. I can maybe understand if the defense presented evidence and had a viable alternative theory for these defenders to latch on to, but the defense just said she was drunk, and this guy says someone else shot at her in addition to my client. Make it make sense, okay? Team Tory had said a verdict isn't in. Team T Tory team has said a verdict isn't in yet, okay? At least from what they know. If the verdict turns out to be that, y'all never saw that post. <laughs> okay? Verdict is not out yet. Okay? So what's interesting as well, let me pull this imaging back up real quick as well. How doing? And thank you for that street committee. Uh, let me pull this motherfucking picture up, okay? Because a part of the lyrics that also came into question, at least on social media, Okay. Is that let me see, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are these lyrics here, girl? Okay, because even if Tory fucking walks, I don't really give a damn, okay? That just means that the courts couldn't find him legally guilty for what he may actually be factually guilty for, okay? You got to understand how cases go, girl. That's factual guilt and legal guilt, okay? Factual guilt is what the fuck you actually did. Legal guilt is what a prosecutor can prove about that factual guilt, okay? Can they prove that you did what you actually did? If they cannot, your ass go home, okay? Plenty of motherfuckers who are wrong as hell, violated as hell, did all the evil in the world, take their ass motherfucking home because they cannot be proven to be legally fucking guilty, okay? That's why you also have a bunch of innocent ass people who are actually serving time for things they did not factually do because it could be proven legally that they did it, okay? Okay, 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 okay. That's why you got um Caucasoid hoes like Kim Kardashian working with other melanated queens to get innocent black women and men out of prison who have been wrongfully convicted. Okay, and that's why you got a lot of motherfuckers who done did wrong who living right next door to you. Okay, in peace and solace. Okay, so I don't really give a damn about the burden. It ain't gonna change the fact that I believe that he is factually guilty. Okay, now. Another part of those interesting lyrics that came into question, okay, are from a little song called Queen and Slim, okay? Queen and Slim, baby. Okay? Let's 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 it's let's just read all the lyrics from this song, okay? By Tory Lanez, Mr. Pete Daystar, or Daystar Peterson, whatever the fuck his name is, okay? Those lyrics read, 
Actually, I ain't reading all this shit. I just want to get to the main part, okay? Let me get to the interesting shit, honey, in the song. Biz, control F. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so here it is. Okay. The chorus says, Slimmy Queen to my Slimmy. If it means I won't be here for dying for your love, but will you forgive me? I feel at home in the kitty. Lay my head on your stomach while you wear that Fenty. Another Megan Thee Stallion reference. You guys know she was a, a a brand ambassador for for Rihanna's line. Okay, my thuggy, love me, love me, give me cuddles, hold me snuggy. Don't you dub me? I just picked you up from Munchies, looking lovely, girl. I need you like a hustler. Gonna need this druggy. I fumble. Okay, I fumble. Try to rumble, taking shots to make her. Stumble. I fumble. Try to rumble. Taking shots to make her stumble. 1942, all on the deck. Soon as you come through, one, two, one, two. If it's ever going down, you know who you can run to. My thugger, cocoa butter. That's my crime. That's my mob. That's my nut or bucker. We get faded walking through the house or a stutter, stutter. Fall inside your sheets and fall inside your undercover. If it means I won't be here from dying for your love, will you forgive me? I feel at home in the kitty. Lay my head all on your stomach while you wear that Fenty. We ain't talking in a long minute. Shit, we used to, shit we used to do was authentic. Why he had to put our hearts in it. Love came, put some scars in it. Feelings changed, put some darts in it. Heart is changing, left me sharp-winded. Left the bike and left the bar spinning. Everybody played their parts in it. Justin dropped you straight into the crib. He been low-key hating on the kid. You and Munchie drunk inside a alley. Been anticipating from the telly. Walked in the penthouse ready. Walked in the penthouse wavy. Been to put his dick off in her belly. Ride me like a motherfucking lady. House called to Jordan Woods' house. Knocked out and woke up on the couch. Woke back and drove to your crib. This time, I just know what it is. Next time, the pool with you and Kylie. Hopped in it, cooling. Nigga wildin'. She was looking like a fucking angel. Looking like a baby in a manger. Hop step, went to the car. Me and Kylie off in the pool. We just chilling, kicking shit was cool. Both of us ain't know you was tripping. Even though I got a crush on Kylie, I would have left with you. I knew you was dipping for the simple reason. You invited me, but I can't act like Shardy didn't excite me. I had took a wrong turn that night. Well, not a turn that everybody think. I wasn't wrong. I wasn't the wrong one that night. You was just too drunk to even see it. Wasn't anticipating I'd never put you in no situation. I've never even had an argument with you. A conversation is all I'm bargaining with you. Because you was my nigga for real. And if you can't agree, then you owe me that. Our mothers would tell us to do the right thing. And it's friendship, my nigga. You told me that. Even when niggas is coming at me on their Twitter and Insta, I'm over that. Because that's what, because that's what's a couple of months of memes of me. Because what's a couple of months of memes of me if it means I'm going to get my homie back? Fuck it. Let's talk about it. Do you think anybody else inside of the business that know they ain't did it would sit here and listen to critics? While niggas is tripping and bashing me, out here attacking me, actually. Only reason why I let them do it is because I figured that you would have called a nigga. But look, it's been over two months and all you did was stall my nigga. The drama is bigger than ever. I thought that we both were bigger than that. Yeah, and that shit that I did, it was whack. But you don't get your nigga back like that. Just listen to Jigga on that one track. Song crying while it play in the back. I never cared to be that nigga in your fame, shawty. I was playing it back. We never had a thing. When we met each other, it was never a thing like that. Spending this time's what made us attach. Spending my time's what made you react. I'm only human. I got to be real and tell you that the pain done came with that. Even the feeling is strange at that. How you gone up and just change the facts. Hard to find your love when you walked away. When I sleep, the thoughts of you don't stay away. Lost to love. What's up, baby? I was finally free. The thoughts of you made it stay away.
What do you think about these lyrics where he's clearly referencing the shooting that night? He references the pool party. He referenced Meg's attitude. He referenced uh, uh, him fumbling, trying to rumble, taking shots to make her stumble. What do you make of all of that, Reckless? No comment. <laughs> okay. No comment. <laughs> uh huh. Now, last but not least, hold on. Let me do something real quick. Let me go check for an update real quick, honey. Let me do something real quick, honey. Because, you know, we all believe this nigga is, 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 I believe the nigga is going to go free. I just yeah. don't believe that prosecution proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna no, everybody going to have the link. Please don't address nobody yet. I want to get through my okay. commentary. All them folks can hit the link and can have all the time they need. Okay, all right, all right. Let me see here real quick. Okay, five minutes ago. So if anybody's reporting a verdict, uh, y'all might want to stay away from that, honey. Okay, uh, we just got an update from Neighborhood Talk five minutes ago. No verdict has been reached yet. Okay, Megan Cuffniff, who's been reporting this thing for the past nine days, says, speaking of the... Speaking of the jury, they just left the jury room for the standard 90-minute break. Judge Howard Ford told them they cannot deliberate from noon to 1.30. This means nothing can happen until after 1.30, okay? All right, so it's conflicting shit, girl, that people saying the verdict is free, da 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 There's been, like, fake documents and shit uploaded, girl. Look, the trolls been preparing to mess up this day, girl. So people had time to produce fake <laughs> paperwork and fake verdicts and all type of shit and submit it to the internet and all that kind of shit to to troll and all of that girl so once again when the verdict breaks girl it will go out to everybody it won't be in some damn corner somewhere in a cracked outside of goddamn social media um needing to be you know told to everybody else it's gonna go all out baby because at this point every major blogger and most serious youtubers have connections and have people on ground level right now. So that information will be consistent and it will go out, okay, to everybody and beyond. So just calm your goddamn horses, okay? Layla says the entire lyric stream, I'm a narcissist, <laughs> period, okay? Um, so let me, let me go over my shit real quick and then I'm gonna drop the link, girl, and then y'all can come up here and let have, honey. I come up here and let motherfucking have, honey, okay? So let me tell you, girl. Okay? This is what I think happened, okay? I want to go over this one more motherfucking time, girl. The motherfucking side effects. Okay? And I'm only dealing with what happened at the goddamn, um, at the point of the, sh the, the shooting, girl, okay? And I'm going to bring it all full circle, okay? This is what I think happened, okay? This is my fucking assessment, okay? And I think, bitch, I'm on it, bitch. Okay, I think I done cracked the case, girl. Okay, shout out to everybody who's in the live stream yesterday, mm -hmm. bitch. I was bringing the motherfucking revelations yesterday, bitch. I I had that shit tied up from east, west, to north, girl. I had brought that shit full circle, like only CTV can do, bitch. Okay, so this is what I believe happened. Kelsey and Meg started fighting. Meg was whooping the ball spots out of Kelsey's ass. Tori started shooting at Meg's feet to break up the situation, but accidentally injured Meg from shooting at the ground nearest to her. This would explain the fight that the witness claimed Sean Kelly saw between the two females before hearing gunshots because Sean never saw the gunman initially, okay? He only heard the shots, okay? And then shortly after, he saw Tori emerge from the vehicle, okay? Now, Meg is on the ground at this point, bleeding from the bullet wounds. That's when Tori panicked and Kelsey, not knowing the context of why Tori started shooting to begin with and seeing her friend bloody on the ground, Kelsey reasonably assumed the worst, which was that Tori was about to kill Meg's motherfucking ass. 
So she stood up to him when he got out of the vehicle. And when he got out of the vehicle the first time, he probably left the gun in the car and started rushing toward Kelsey and Meg to start doing some damage control. But Kelsey started swinging and banging on his ass instead because he's the threat at this point. That's how she would have gotten GSR on her the first time because GSR is transferred through contact like a handshake, hugging, and a physical touch with the person or the gun itself, and even from the environment, the gun was shot in like a car, the seats, the walls, the ceiling, etc. So now Kelsey and Tori are strapping. He fucking her up, and like Kelsey said in her September interview, the driver gets out and pulls her away from the scene, Daquan. And she's then placed in the front passenger seat of the SUV where Tori just shot the gun from. So this would have been the second time she would have came into contact with GSR by being in the same seat in space as this hot gun that was just discharged five times. Now, in her interview, she claims that she started hitting the gear shift to cause the truck to jerk to create a distraction because she's afraid of what Tori is going to do to Meg. But what I also think happened is that Kelsey either saw and touched the gun on the floor in front of her to move it or she had to move the gun because it was left in the front seat where she was thrown at, where Tori just was, okay? Where he also probably dropped the gun at before he ran over to them. And this would be the, the third time that Kelsey would have came into direct contact with GSR, and it's now on her hands. Also, the DNA on the gun would have started to become convoluted at this point now that another person, aka Kelsey, has physically touched it. At this point, Kelsey is in the SUV doing all of this diversion. Tori is talking to Meg, pleading the fifth, apologizing, telling her that he on probation, that he got a haircut appointment in the morning, that he got a son, he'll give her a million dollars, etc. And at this point, Kelsey's distraction is working because Tori comes back over to her, like she said in the interview, and starts beating her up, pulling her hair, dragging her out of the truck, and the driver gets out to break them up, leaving Tori on one side of Kelsey and the driver on the other in a tug of war for her body, which Kelsey says in the interview. At this point, Tori is gripping her hair really tight while Daquan is trying to pull her away. This also would have been the fourth time Kelsey came into contact with GSR by transference from Tori. And this would also explain eyewitness account of the two men fighting a woman when in fact, Sean Kelly was watching one man trying to pull a woman away from another man who was abusing her. The driver successfully pulls Kelsey away at this point. Neighbors have called 911. The group can hear the sirens in the distance. Tori knows they all got to get the fuck up out of Dodge right now. So he goes back to the front seat where he shot the gun from and from where Kelsey just was and scrambles to find the gun and successfully finds it while Kelsey is back at Megan's side, aiding and comforting her on the ground. Tori then approaches them with the empty gun that they don't know is or isn't loaded at this point while also not knowing while also not wanting to go to jail for none of this shit. So they let him co coerce them into getting back into the car, especially after a terrified, angry Tory just proved that his little leprechaun ass was about that life. So with the gun in his hand, they agreed to get back in the truck. Megan is in the back seat with her bleeding feet wrapped up in towels, prompted up on Kelsey in the back, and Tory and Quan is in the front. And Quan probably helps Tori to try to conceal the gun by tucking it under the bag in the front seat. This would have been the third person whose DNA came into contact with the gun. Hence why it's so inconclusive. Kelsey's in the back silently trying to alert somebody close to her through text about the situation just in case some more dramatic shit pops off. Hence, she calls her mom and sister. She gets no answer. She texts Justin. Now nude pictures leak Edison, the missing bodyguard, help. Tori just shot Meg and even called the nigga she's talking to, like she said in her interview, and has him on an open line so that he can at least hear anything going on in the SUV in case something happens. The rest is TMZ history with helicopters pulling up and cops locked and loaded. Now, you all know that Sean Kelly threw the whole goddamn case for the goddamn defense because they expected him to come up in that bitch and only speak to 
the Kelsey narrative, but what he in fact did was complete Kelsey's testimony and corroborate what Megan also said. See, the reason why I know now that Kelsey was in fact telling the whole goddamn truth and nothing but the goddamn truth in that interview was because it ironically is completely in sync with Sean Kelly's observation. And like prosecution said, Megan and Kelsey didn't know Sean Kelly from a can of paint on the motherfucking wall. He had never had contact with any of the people who were involved that night. His only contact was with police and investigators. So now let's talk about it, okay? So if you if you keep in sync what Kelsey said to Meg in text message that night that Tori pull her motherfucking baby hairs and the back of her neck apart and shit and she needed urgent care, girl. Okay? She acknowledged that there was an altercation between her and Tori. Sean Kelly acknowledges he saw an altercation between uh two men and a woman. That's what I believe the tug of war came from. Daquan on one side, Tori on one side. Okay? Daquan was the goddamn referee all night. Okay? Also, Kelsey text, text Justin that same night, five minutes after the 911 calls came in, help, Tori shot Meg. Not only do you have Meg identifying Tori as the shooter, you now got Kelsey identifying his ass as the shooter, and you also got Sean Kelly identifying his ass as the shooter. And if they would have allowed Justin Edison to, to uh, testify, if he would have been found earlier, Okay, he would have also took the stand and told y'all that when he went to pick up Megan Stings from Tory's home, that Tory also was very apologetic and also confessed to him that he had shot Meg, according to Justin Edison. Now, Sean Kelly broke the motherfucking case and brought the shit full circle, okay? Because there's been all of this Witcher Monroe around this gunshots, gunshots. There were five gunshots. You guys know that they played audio from surveillance where you hear pow, 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 then a pause. Pow, pow. Okay? Now, everybody was speculating that maybe this is when Kelsey and Tori were uh, fighting over the gun. Somebody was wrestling somebody for the gun. Maybe they were trying to shoot at the same time. But if you listen to what the fuck Kelsey said in the interview, and then you listen to what Sean Kelly testified to on the stand, you get the whole picture. Remember in the interview? Because see, what, like I said yesterday, what fuck Kelsey and, and, and Megan up? Because Tory ass would have been going to jail. He would have been going straight to fucking jail if Megan and Kelsey did not try to edit out the part where they both fought each other. If they wouldn't have edited that shit out, it would have been on and popping because what's important about that fight between them is that it puts Kelsey where Sean Kelly said she was. Now, remember, in the interview, Kelsey said her and Meg got out of the SUV on two different sides. Kelsey got out on the left back side of the SUV. She would have been facing the balcony of Sean Kelly. So Sean Kelly would have saw her you know, straight ahead. Megan got out on the right side, front of the vehicle, okay? Now, Kelsey said in the interview that as soon as she stepped down out of the vehicle, no more than her second feet had touched the cement. She hadn't even took two steps. She was literally had just placed her second foot on the pavement. That's when she heard the gunshots. She claimed in the interview she turned around and saw um, Tory Lanez hanging out of the front window, shooting at Megan. Okay? But this is what she fucked up at. Because the next thing she said in the interview was when Tory started shooting Meg from the front passenger window, Meg froze in place. And then she looked back and looked at the both of us like a deer in headlights. So wait a minute, Kelsey. Now you done edited out this fight, but because you're running your dick sucker and you not aware of what the fuck you just did, you just placed yourself somewhere you could not have actually been directionally based upon what you just said. You said that the gunshot started raining 
as soon as you put your second foot down on the pavement out of the uh, left side back of the vehicle. And then you look back and saw him shooting her through the front window. But then you say in the next line that when Megan looked back at the shots were fired, she looked back and saw the both of y'all behind her frozen still. That only you can only be on the same side of the vehicle now. And she don't realize she said this, that she put herself on the same side of the vehicle as Tory. Because Sean Kelly confirmed it when he said that Kelsey had moved closer to the vehicle. And that's why he initially thought that the fireworks that were going off from inside the vehicle came from her. He said that's why he believed and assumed that Kelsey shot off the first round of shots. But he then also said, soon as those initial shots proceeded, then Tory emerges from the front right passenger side of the vehicle with his arms extended. And then he saw more flashes come from Tory's direction. And then Megan drops. And because Kelsey don't want to fucking admit that she fought Megan and Megan don't want to fucking admit that there was a fight over community dick that didn't belong to either one of them. Kelsey done kind of fucked up because if she and Megan would have both been honest about the fight, then they both would have had, unbeknownst to them, a third witness outside of the situation that could have corroborated the, the events as Kelsey and Meg have testified to. Now, the rest of Sean Kelly's testimony comes full circle as well. Because remember, people were saying the pause, the pause, the pause, the pause. They were fighting over the gun. No, ma'am. Now we know what happened, according to Sean Kelly. When we hear pow, 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 then a pause, pow, pow, what you're hearing is Tory Lane shooting over the front passenger window allegedly, and then you, and then he gets out of the vehicle like Sean Kelly said after the first initial shots came from inside the vehicle. Shortly, Tory emerges from the vehicle with his arms extended and more flashes. The pause was Tory traveling from over the window, opening up the SUV door, and then finishing the empty clip out on Megan's ass. That's where the fucking pause came from. So Sean Kelly's testimony actually brings the whole shit together. Now it all makes motherfucking sense. Sean Kelly cleared that shit up. He was the missing link to the narrative. Okay? About the second pause, the third pause, whatever the fuck it was. When you heard the motherfucking pause, it was his ass stopping to get out of the goddamn SUV and to step out onto the curb and then finishing his rounds. Like motherfucking Sean Kelly said, like the motherfucking audio said. That's where the motherfucking pause came from. And because Kelsey had moved closer to the vehicle after Megan had whipped her ass, she retreats back to the vehicle, but as soon as she does, Tori allegedly starts shooting. So she would have been literally still outside of the vehicle. Probably just getting, trying to get back into the back seat when Tori was discharging that gun. That GSR would have blown also all over Kelsey, which is why she tested positive and had uh, a lot of it on her just like Tori Lanes did. Yeah, he's tall. Have you, is he tall enough to shoot over a window? Um, if Tory Lane sat in the front seat of an SUV and wrote down his window, sh Tory Lane's is not so goddamn short, girl, that his head, that the top of his head comes to, um, the handle on the inside of the door, bitch. Who, like, do y'all think he's the size of an, uh, of, of a goddamn newborn baby or some shit? Yeah. He, he didn't even have to stand up. He could have... All he had to do, he ain't even, he, all he got to do is roll his window down, extend his arm out, and shoot. 
But according to what Megan Kelsey said, he actually leaned over. He's his body extended out of was hanging out of the window and he extended his arm out and he shot at Meg. I mean, how fucking short y'all think the nigga is? How, 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 how little y'all think Tory Lanez is, bitch? He can see out of the front window, girl. His 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 height affords him to still be able to look out of the window, girl. Yeah. The fuck? What you mean? So so he can shoot. Are you okay? Are are you okay? Are you okay? No. You're 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 not okay, okay? But he was hanging out of the window, girl. So he stood up on the goddamn seat with his knees, or he stood up with both feet and linked out of the window, like Kelsey and, and Megan said. Pow, pow, pow. Then he gets out of the vehicle. Pow, pow, pow. That's where you hear the paws. Okay? Sean Kelly said he saw the initial shots coming from inside the vehicle and then says Tory Lanez emerged right after those initial shots. And that was the first time he had saw Tory this whole time. He, he also said that Tory was the angriest person in the whole fucking situation. He was the loudest. He was the maddest. He was talking the most shit. He was screaming. He was shouting. So he very well could have been saying, dance, bitch, dance. He was shouting so many obscenities. Sean Kelly said there were so many uh, niggas and bitches that were coming out of his mouth. It was so much goddamn niggament going on in the middle of the street, girl. Okay? That it was on period. Sean Kelly was the motherfucking missing link. He brought that shit full motherfucking circle. So now, all the jury got to do is decide why the fuck three people, because Kelsey's statements were admissible from her 2020, 2022 interview, were admissible into evidence, okay? Megan's testimony, Sean's testimony. So you got three witnesses now. Who done put the smoking gun in Tory's hands? And now the jury just has to decide, girl, if they're persuaded or not, beyond a reasonable doubt, that Tory did what the evidence can show that he did. What the eyewitnesses can say that they saw him do. Now the jury has to make that choice. Let me check. Something real quick, and then I'm about to drop the link for y'all to come up, girl. Okay. Hold on. Okay, no, ain't no update yet. Hold on, let me go to the shade or right Hold on, let me let me check some shit out real quick. Hold on. Let's see what the tea is. Okay, we got a post two minutes ago. Okay, two minutes ago from the Shade Room, uh, according to multiple reports, the jurors in the Tory Lane's assault trial are still deliberating. This means rumors circulating that Tory was found not guilty are false. Okay, Jonah Valdez, reporter for LA Times, has reported, okay, no jury is in. And yes, Drea, SUVs have high seats. Now I'm about to drop the link, okay? Um... I'm going to be rotating seats so that everybody has an opportunity to come up here and sound off. I'll, I want the Tory defenders and apologists to come up. I want the Megan supporters to come up, girl. Let it be a mixture so that it's not an echo chamber. Okay. I'm about to drop the link. Moderators, can you please continue to rotate the link on the count of three? It's first come, first serve. I'm going to drop the link. So, bitch, you better hit it, okay? I'm making the announcement. Okay. One. Two. Three, the link is in, bitch. The link is in. First come, first motherfucking served. Okay? Make sure if you're in the building that you are thumbing up. All free thinkers are allowed to come up and join the discussion, honey, to give your perspective. I think we had DJ something in the chat. Who said he was going to hit the motherfucking lane, hit the goddamn link, come up and sound the hell off. He claimed he'd been in the building for a minute. Okay. 
and he wants to defend his leader. So, DJ, I hope you're hitting the link. I just dropped it. Mm-hmm. March says, TTV, you should have tried the case because you laid the case out the best, period. <laughs> Conscience is always on point on period. <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> People told me my whole life I should have went in, 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 in to goddamn law, but see, I'm too violent and ghetto, and my Jesus is still down low, and so I'm just not sure I can act appropriate for um court grub, okay? I hope Miss DJ rides her ass in on a goddamn speaker, because I really want to hear from him since he was talking the most shit in the comment section. Um, okay, all right. So we got Presley, Joe, Marquez, Nikki, the beautiful Dela D Beauty. We have Anya and we have Tanya. Welcome, panelists, to the chat. I want you guys, just like the jury, to stand down and your thoughts, honey. Don't be scared. Yes, you're gonna be challenged. Yes, you're gonna be annoyed. Yes, folk are gonna have a rebuttal. Okay, so there's no all that's going to come, but you all are welcome. And I'm going to ask that everybody, please keep it respectful, okay? No ghetto shit. The case has been ghetto enough, and we've been doing the most already throughout the week. So let's try to have a civil discord, okay? So welcome to the platform, Prince. Uh, I want you guys to keep your initial thoughts kind of short, too, so that everybody has time to at least sound off initially, and then we can double back and get into whatever else. Presley, your thoughts on deliberation and all of the things. Justin is um, twerking on Twitter, girl. It's it's a mess out here in these streets. Yes, it is. And I just wanted to say I'm glad that you pulled up Nancy's tweets because then it, it confirmed that defense is the one who told uh, Quan not to testify. Um, but also my initial thoughts is that the defense, I'm not sure if um, it was mentioned earlier, but they mentioned Tori getting in the front seat. So he actually cited Kelsey's testimony in the, in the closing statements. So wow. I just wanted to mention that as my initial thoughts. I'm trying to keep it quick. All right. Next person. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Great. Great connection and observation there. Welcome to the platform, Joe. I know your ass is long-winded, but I'm going to ask you to be a, 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 a quick storm today, okay? And we will double back around so you can aggravate everybody. But, Joe, welcome to the platform and your thoughts on day nine and, you know, are you persuaded you know, that Tori, you know, did this beyond a reasonable doubt or not? Can you hear me, Joe? No? Okay. Boost Mobile is not boosting. We're going to have to move on to the next Marquez. I know that you are a Tory Lanez. Oh, no. Presley, then the beautiful Dela D. Beauty. Welcome to the platform, love. You are laid and slayed to the goddamn gods. You make me want to cam up, honey, because you are strikingly gorgeous. Thank you for being here. And I am curious to know what, first of all, are you a content creator? I was back in the day. I'm not anymore. Why are you not a content creator? Because you are giving beauty guru. You're giving beauty guru, you're giving cosmetologist, <laughs> you're giving model, honey. Like, why are you oh, not you. out here? Why are you not out here creating content anymore? It's, it's just a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, and I have, like, a sure. full-time job, so I can't really keep up. Okay, I ain't mad at it. Okay, so <laughs> welcome here. Um, what are you, Well, what are your thoughts about, you know, what's going on with this trial? What do you think? Well, yeah, I've been keeping up on your channel. I really haven't gone to any other channel. Um to really pay attention to the mm -hmm. to the uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so what I will say is you kind of took the words out of my mouth when you uh, were talking earlier, because at this point we have the, the truth that can be proven. Then we have the truth that the public is going to believe. It's obvious. I don't think there was any moment where someone could place Tori away from the gun. We listened to three different witnesses and everyone had a... Um, story that could link him with the gun at some point during the altercation. And the defense didn't even make a move to say that he wasn't. So the defense pretty much was focusing on, okay, well, what if this happened? And you know, what about Meg? They didn't even try to say that he never had the gun. So I feel like that's very telling. Unfortunately, in, in the court of law, um, it depends on what you can prove and you have to, you know, prove intent which is a bit more difficult. So I could see him walking because of that. 
but ultimately we know how the court systems are. And I think it's funny that there are so many men who would be like, F the police, F the court system. But today, all of a sudden, they can't wait to hear what the judge has to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, I think that the public, we have we got enough information. We've seen everyone you know, come up and speak. And I feel like it's clear as day that he shot at her. Wow. So, okay, so with that being said, so, it's, so I can assume reasonably then that you believe that Tori shot Meg. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. Okay, yeah. and from what it sounds like, if you was on the jury, you would be persuaded that yeah. he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt based upon. Oh, of course. I mean, they couldn't put me on. I live in Houston. I'm a hot girl, so they wouldn't put me on. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely. I I feel like there has no has not been any um, variation of the story that says that Tori did not have the gun at some point in time, and um, I unless I haven't heard it. But mm -hmm. everyone has pretty much given, put the gun in his hands. And mm -hmm. uh, that's just clear as day. So okay, so I got a few questions for you then, because you are a hottie. Okay, so my <laughs> next question is, if Tori walks, with the way that Megan has been bashed ever since coming forward about the fact that this was not glass, but she was actually mm -hmm. shot and then identifying Tori, and then, you know, how he has gaslit her and how the public has kind of like scrutinized the sincerity of her plight. What do you think is going, how this is going to impact her career? Do you think she's going to have the support and sustainability that she needs to continue on? Or do you think this is going to have a negative impact on public perception and the demand on her art and presence in hip hop? Do you think that it's going to have an impact or bleed over? That's a really great, great question. And I don't really know um, from what I can tell those of us that are having um, nuanced and educated conversations about it are very aware of what's happening in court and outside of court. And so it wouldn't make a difference to us if he were to walk because we can see with our own eyes. There are plenty of times. I mean, Casey Anthony has a documentary coming out. We all know she did it. OJ Simpson wrote a book. We all know he did it. There are plenty of cases in history where people walk when they're very guilty. And um, I think for Meg, it'll be difficult because there are so many heavy hitters that are coming against her. Like Drake was a big deal. Yep. I know um, Joe Budden recanted what he had to say, but um, at 50 yep. Cent, just like a whole bunch of grown men doing, yep. you know, little girl stuff is weird. But um, I think that those of us that are able to see through all the BS, we're not gonna stop supporting. And we're not going to hold that against her. I also feel like general public, non-melanated people are not that interested in this case. And that's where a lot of her money comes from, definitely during like festival season. So if they're not invested like we are, then they're not going to stop streaming her. They're not going to stop supporting her. Okay. Now, as a woman yourself, do you feel like sexism and anti-Blackness played a role in um, her not being believed? Or do you Absolutely. think- Absolutely. Like and I think you said this one of the, the other nights about how we have this Black male worship culture. And mm -hmm. Meg tried to be a part of that culture. She didn't press charges. She still, to this day, hasn't pressed charges in any way. She was perfectly fine with just suffering in silence, which is you know so sad to me. Mm -hmm. But she tried her best to not- um, show that she was a victim because she knew exactly how black women are treated in our community and they just proved her right every single day the fact that people are prematurely running with the story that he's not guilty just to you know get ahead of this whole megan hate train thing i think obviously um massage noir plays a big deal in this case and the people talking about this case yeah okay one more question before i move on to the oh girl you're so girl no you're gonna have to send you got to email me your ass gonna be a content creator okay because you are too well spoken you are uh given aesthetically honey you got you the whole package honey okay so one more question so the 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 people who are criticizing the way that meg played her part in all of this maybe some of the inconsistencies in her stories maybe her kind of shying away from uh, whether her relationship with Tori was just friendly or sexual, maybe some of the things she initially told the investigator, like not wanting to make a false statement regarding who shot her. Do you think that that makes the plight of those who are questioning Meg 
sound that that there should be reasonable criticism with if that. She were on trial about who she slept with, and of course it's relevant. If um, we were talking about only Meg's testimony and no one else's, then it would be relevant. Three, uh, two different people, like you said, um, what is his name, Sean Kelly? Sean doesn't know Meg, couldn't corroborate a story with Meg. He's saying the same thing, that Tori had a gun. Kelsey, who doesn't even like Meg, um, I, maybe she did at the time of the recording, but she also corroborated the story, Tori had a gun. So the whole sexual promiscuity element, like I get you want to be mad about it, but you're not really mad about it. Like, let's be honest. You really don't care that much. Um, just like when, uh, what's his name? The short, the other short one, the baby. Oh yeah. When he mentioned that he slept with Meg, it was like, he tried to make a shock value thing. People don't really care like that. Like nobody really cares. So this whole idea that because she slept with someone and she lied about it, now we shouldn't believe anything that she says is not true. Especially Thank all you. the people on social media who lie all day about the things that they have, the things that they do and the people that they're with. Like we don't, that's not enough for me. And, and do you know what's so funny about you mentioning the baby? Now that I think about it, I think it's also not ironic that his statements came shortly before trial began. And I wonder if there was, if that was intentional in order to start creating and muddying the waters and kind of working at Cred's her, her credibility because the defense already knew they were going to gun for Kelsey. They knew mm -hmm. this over the past year, especially when the GSR test came back, that it was thick on Kelsey. So then they had to start building the motive that this was a girl fight over a man, et cetera. And um, I just find it ironic that the baby, who obviously is very close to Tory, he's the one that brought Tory Lanez out on the Rolling Loud stage that led to Tory Lanez being fined for breaking um, his restraining order or the protective order that was against, that was in place for him as it relates to um, Megan. So I, that's interesting. Okay, so final, final question before I get to the other panelists is, so as, as a woman yourself, how does this make you feel? Like with you seeing what Meg has gone through as a victim, what does this make you feel when you think about my God? Like, God forbid something happens to me. What are your thoughts about how to navigate that as a Black woman? Well, it's, it's really... It's difficult. Like I said, I'm from Houston. Max from Houston. I'm 5'10". I think she's 5'10". Mm -hmm. So I can relate to her in a lot of different ways. And it's embarrassing when you give a guy a chance and then he plays you. And especially when it's a public play, like that's embarrassing. So I feel for her on that. I would have lied to like whatever. Um, but the state of Black women in our community has always been at risk. We talk about the, the five and a half hour statistic constantly there's constantly um black femicide conversations happening where um we're not at war because we're not fighting back it's just in a constant onslaught of abuse that black women face in various ways of course um and now she's being abused socially and verbally after she was physically abused this is a girl that's lost her parents and her grandmother now she's struggling to keep a hold of herself and her career and there's absolutely no sympathy coming from Black men in large. I really liked that um, Mark Lamont Hill participated in that letter that was sent out in support of her. But um, that's kind of where it is. It's like there are no Black men that are willing to stand for Black women the way that Black women do. That whole embarrassing thing Taraji P did on the um, BET Awards talking about protect Black men or whatever. I don't see Black men going on public stages and screaming, you know, protect Black women. And it's been like this for a very long time, and it's pathetic. Yeah, good, good, good point. So, so what would you tell another woman who may experience something like this? Like, mm -hmm. how how would you tell her to navigate this? Would you tell her to just you know, tell the truth and just yeah. like definitely report these dudes? Do not protect these men. Like, yeah. okay, even Kelsey's at risk. I know she has a husband that's allegedly with fifteen oh one. And she could possibly be on, um, you know, put up on charges for something else. So it's like, even when you do the caping, you still get burned in the end. Nobody really has your back, especially these Black men in the trial. They do not have your back. There's no reason for you to cape for them. There's no reason for you to look out for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the state of our community from yeah. my perspective. I saw the, because I messed that word up. I just say misogyny, but... 
Massage Noah? How yeah. Uh, so, Massage Noah? no, yeah, like, so I have to pronounce it because I want to say something before. Oh, everybody. Man. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> that, like, I saw the manifestation of that. Even when Kelsey and Meg were entering the courts, you heard black men, the professionals, the journalists, the media participating in the cat calling. But then you also heard them simultaneously insulting them. Meg, why you lied on our boy? Kelsey, why you shot that girl? But <laughs> in all the footage you see of Tory over the past 10 days, he's it, it, he's walking through like Dr. King. He being dapped up, <laughs> hugged up. It's photo ops. It's, 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 it's a whole movie. Mm -hmm. He's getting no backlash. Nobody is assaulting him. Nobody, nothing. But you see these women being harassed and trolled um, as they're entering to give testimony and deal with all of this. So I was so disgusted, so disgusted that these men had all this heat for these women and then treated Tori like a saint and he's the one being accused of pulling the trigger. It's just so wild. So we know patriarchy bands together like a nest of roaches. Disgusted. Well, thank you, D. Um, if you want to stick around, I don't know if folks will have some questions for you or if you want to participate in more of whatever I got to say, but you can stick around and hold your spot. Um, thank you for that. Um, who I got in the middle right here, Miss Nikki B. Welcome to the platform. Can you hear me, love? Yes. Hello, All everyone. Right. Hey, boo. Uh, your thoughts, deliberation, Justin is twerking <clears throat> on Twitter. <laughs> Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a ish show right now. What are your thoughts? Okay. So I do believe that Tori did it. I have always believed that Tori did it. However, I think that we're kind of, we're going on two different extremes is like, they're both telling parts of the truth and they're both all three of them actually are lying for whatever reason it really doesn't matter you know when you're dealing with the court of law why you're lying it doesn't matter if you're lying is what matters so I think that it's unfortunate what's happening to Meg and I am in no way victim blaming I do however want victims um of violence of any sort to understand that anytime you tell a lie, it's going to be held against you a hundred times more than the actual um, suspect. And the question that they continue to ask is, you know, why would Meg lie? Why would Meg lie? Yeah, she has surface reasons to lie, you know, like ego, pride, her career, but in the actual, why would she lie about being popped? Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask her because she did. She said she stepped on glass. So we can go into that whole, oh, I was scared. I was trying to protect him. And none of that matters. She made this case more difficult for the prosecution. Um, I hope that Tori is found guilty because if not, she's going to have the worst time, you know, in the industry she's in, it's going to be terrible. I mean, she's already really feeling it, but like you said, conscious, I mean, legally guilty is one thing. I think we all know he did it. And also really quick, um, just to touch on him and the lyrics, I think that we can see it's ridiculous. Like everybody who's a Tory supporter, can we just agree on that? Like, okay, y'all just no, please. They cannot. But we have to. We yeah. have to because if I, I mean, like, that's because it's to a beat and there was a sound engineer there, is it not still a confession? Mm. Like, so if you take out all of the music, he just said that shit, right? So he would be confessing to it. So I mean, I think that Sean Kelly, he was slightly confused on some things. And you got to remember, this is a white man. He ain't from here. He don't go here. This is some real foolish stuff that's in his neighborhood, waking him up. You know, he's half sleep. The police department did a horrible job. So because of all of those reasons, I do think that it will be a mistrial, 
However, Tori will probably still get hit with the gun possession. And for that alone, he should be deported. If he isn't, his lawyers are better than we think. But that's it for me. Okay. Thank you for Nikki. that, uh, Nikki B. Reckless hey, Conscious, can I add a really quick statement, if that's okay? Yes. Um, just based on what she said, I just want everyone to remember that everyone in the car was pulled out at gunpoint. So her lying about the glass, they were all pulled out at gunpoint. I just wanted to make that point. That's all. Yeah. And there was no, uh, you can see from the TMZ footage as well that uh, the SUV didn't seem to have a single broken window. Um, and once again, the surgeon also took the stand and said he pulled out metallic foreign objects out of her feet. He knows the difference between glass, fiber, and metal. Okay? Right. <laughs> the x the x-rays proved that, and there was a transference of that physical shrapnel, even though it got lost once in police custody, but there was physical evidence of that shrapnel and it can still be observed and x-rayed in her feet still to to this day so we know the glass situation is is it's just it's just propaganda it's just bull well, crap okay? it's more so a lie that megan said herself we right. i knew it was a lie when she said it but she did not let anyone know that she was actually shot. It is not true that she let the doctors know at the hospital. But four days later is when she came out and said that Tori did it. Now, I understand, you know, fear, her label is probably in her ear. I believe the whole time she was shot, I get being scared. I'm not saying that I don't understand. I'm just saying that moving forward, young women and, and young men, just because you may have a valid reason for lying to the police does not mean it is not going to come back to bite you. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth because if they catch you up in one lie, that's all they're going to say. Well, if they lied about this, then they're lying about that. And that's a very good defense to take. So don't make it easy on your perpetrator. Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I'm but still team me. I wonder if she, well, see, because she never planned on turning this into a legal issue, she didn't bother really with making it make sense because she was just going to allow it to just be a private matter at 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 best. And then mm -hmm. when she started to feel gaslit and she jumped out of the window and used social media as a window to jump out of. It was a downfall from there because then, you know, the whole, well, you said glass, you said glass. And then she tried to prove something to social media by producing pictures, with made, which made it worse because then people was like, these are not bullet wounds. These are not bullet wounds. And she was like, I was shot. They took bullets out of my feet. And then people was expecting, because of the verbiage, they was expecting to see an uh, entry and, and, and an exit wound. And they was expecting a bigger impact. And then... You know, she's dancing and driving a boat and she's twerking a few weeks later. And so people are just like, there's no way. And then it became an issue of semantics because, and it just got worse. And then Tori, he placated to that. He knew that was the backlash. That was the, the, the issue that, you know, produced contention. So when he went live, he also doubled down on it. Well, you know. You know, it's glass, it's glass. And if you got shot in your feet and there are bullets in it, then, you know, how could, how, you know, like, how could you, how could you drive a boat and da, 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 da. And it was just like, my God, today. But I think she, she didn't speak um, with like the level of precision because she was just speaking as a normal person and she was speaking as a trauma response. And um, she never planned on taking this there. But then because the state of California picked it up and she, of course, participated in testifying against him, then, as you said, those those inconsistencies or whatever it was, it all kind of came back to haunt her. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I do. I do want to add on to that. Um, I think I think another factor. It, I think another factor to that is that we also need. To, well, and I said this before. We also need to make a culture safe enough for people to honestly be honest and actually talk about their trauma 
because a very similar situation ended up happening where the person actually told the truth, but yet still got dragged with Saucy Santana. He got shot. He told the truth. He said what happened. People came out and said, no, that wasn't it, da, 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 and try to make it his fault for being shot. Right. So I think that we really do need to create a culture that makes it safe for people to actually be honest, 100% honest, and actually stay on task. Because let's be very clear. If Megan was to say she got shot and then said, we, me and Kelsey fought because I slept with da 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 people are going to be focused on the sleeping round part. They're not, gonna, they're, they're not even going to focus on she got right. shot. They're focused on she slept with this person, slept with that person, she slept with whore, slept. This, you know how music says this or so corroborates with that. And even then, we literally see it in this chat where people will talk about, like every time me, Conscious, or Presley, or anybody, or even Yanya, Anya, literally say things along, you know she was shot. They go right back to, well, you know, she was sleeping with this person, that person, but you know she was shot. Well, you know it says this over here with Kelsey, but you know she was shot. Like, we, we have to stay on task. And this, and this is what I mean when I say when these conversations come up, we have to take, we must have these conversations with diligence. Because... If we actually stay on task and realize that she was shot and actually stay on that task, then I think it makes it, it makes it easier for people to be 100 percent honest about everything. Because let's be let's be clear. The reason why she lied is because she was embarrassed about why they were fighting. Right. Especially considering her brand. <laughs> Fuck these niggas and you have fighting for a nigga. Well, th that's the way that it appears. But most like most, most definitely was was because of principle. And the reason why I can say it is because of principle, because what Kelsey says is that she was talking to somebody else. And Megan was But also, like, her. look at the inherent sexism in that. The fact that mm -hmm. Megan, like, the fact that Megan, even in the chat, is being called a hoe, a hoe, a hoe, a hoe. But nobody is dealing with the hoe that slept with two, that was sleeping with two females simultaneously. Mm -hmm. the like, sexism. if that's what y'all want to make Megan, fine. But you got to make Tori that equally. And Tori ain't no virgin. He was sticking his dick in two places. Those women and trying were to stick it in a third that night. Yeah, and trying and, and you're right. Even in his own song to you know uh, uh queens and um and and the queens and SUVs. He uh also stated you know he was ready to get it popping with Miss Ka with Miss Kylie Jenner. So I'm just mm -hmm. like it's and that be the sexism bullshit. Right. That but that's the part. I'm the so sorry. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. What? Who? Why is she a hoe though? Because for me, like I understand, they're saying like promiscuous means he's sleeping with a lot of people. She slept with Tori in twenty twenty. Okay, like I, it's foul to Kelsey, but that doesn't make her a hoe nor promiscuous. So I'm kind of like. I mean, if we talking about that, if you like what? So I'm I don't even count the baby. Like he's irrelevant. I hope other people aren't including him in her body count. Like, yeah, she probably did, but you know, so what? Like, whatever, whatever. So I just don't understand why people are saying she's a hoe. Groupie love has Tory Lane's got in his damn career. Like, if he in this situation smashing three, like two friends, and then he wanted to come to a party that both of them friends invited him to and smashed the world and smashed the girl. That's there at the party, then he's smashing, period. So, yeah. you know, like, I, and I don't even like the whole slut shaming thing is just so tight. When you're single, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, honey. Do what you want to do, live your best sexual life, try, like, be safe so that you ain't sorry later. But mm -hmm. if you enjoy sex and that's the way you get it and that's the way you get your needs met, whether it's men or women, it is what it is but it is 2022 about to be 2023 in like what two weeks and it is so tired that this double standard still exists if women are hoes fine but you niggas are hoes as well mm. niggas is the biggest hoes yeah you I, niggas I are hoes, and we're gonna use the same language for you niggas you niggas do not yeah. get to pop pop every piece of puss from the strip club from the college campus from the bar to to the to the roundaway girl in the neighborhood. Oh, and then, don't forget the men that they sleep with on the weekend behind their women back. So yeah, they hoes too. Oh, hold on. <laughs> but 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 feel like y'all out of all people get to call somebody else a damn hoe. Like it's literally the hypocrisy of our democracy. <laughs> like the hypocrisy of it all. But let's move along. Thank you for that, um, Nikki B. I want to get. Uh -huh. I'm about to send you a picture to your Instagram. When you get a chance, can you put it up, please? 
Okay. Hey, 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 conscious. Can I can I say this real quick? Uh, I, I don't think. Hold, I, I'm sorry. Hold on, Joe. Uh, go ahead. Well, go ahead and, and jump in after you, Marquez, and then okay. interject. I, I don't. Th- I don't think because because I think a lot of people. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, right. My bad, my mic messed up, but um, I, I don't think that the, the point was to um, label Megan a whore. But they or, did. They I know, did. I know, I, I know. A lot of people, I know a lot of people do that. Right, and, I know a lot. and it's something that comes predominantly from men because since this live has begun, I have literally seen Meg. And then the equal sign, ho. Meg is a hoe. Meg is a hoe. Meg is a hoe. Meg is a line ho. Meg is a line ho. Meg is a line ho. Wow, those same that, men that, know that not. Tory Lanez was smashing at least yeah, two so. fans for sure. And then Tory admits in his own music he wanted to smash Kylie Jenner as well. And you don't, right, right. And you don't see none of that energy from niggas to niggas, just like oh. you don't see none of that energy from men mm. when it came to Tory. Like doing this trial, but you see the misogyny and you see the harassment from those men unto yeah. those men, even as they enter the courthouse. Like yeah, so, 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 so that, so that part of it, I'll, I'll say this: that's that's not fair at all, and we all know that that happens. That's that's the court of public opinion. But then when we're talking about inside of court, what they were trying to do when they brought up the quote unquote body count was to try to uh, establish a motive for Kelsey being the shooter, meaning. Uh, you got Megan, the one, like, just just paint this picture, right? That's what they're trying to do. Um, Megan being the one that has the fame, has the money, she can get any nigga she wants, and then you have this friend that's kind of her sidekick, and she keep backdooring her. And I think that's what the what the defense was trying to do, is paint the picture of, hey, she sleeps with every single one of the men that this woman sleeps with, and then maybe that's the motive why it came to a head. And that's why she possibly uh, had the motive to actually be the shooter. So th- that's really what they were trying to do in, in court. Now, if, if you look at, um, I guess it's the GSR, right? So that's a, that's a term we all, we, we've all figured out and we use now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they both had GSR on them. So now you got five shots that we know for sure that were shot. For sure. Five uh, shell cases found. Somebody shot him. And you got two people with GSR on him. The reason why I think that he'll get off is because you have two people that have GSR and a, a witness that's not a part of their little clique that said mm-hmm. they, they, they saw both of them shooting. Now, what you would have to do is try to predict um, which one of these bullets that both of them shot hit Megan. And that's where you have reasonable doubt. Well, we already got everybody. We got three witnesses stating who shot the shots that injured her, even if there was a second shooter. Because you got Sean Kelly, who said that the last few rounds came from mm-hmm. Tory, who exited the vehicle mm-hmm. with his arm stretched and flashes came from him and Meg hit the ground. And then you have, uh, you know, Kelsey, who in her initial text messages and in her interview, and allegedly to a, a homegirl who came forward and said that Kelsey also confessed to her. That Tory shot Meg. Then you have right, right. Kelsey who said, "I look back," which is corroborated by what Kelsey said. And neither one of them can't even stand each other, and they don't even know Sean Kelly. So it's just ironic that these two women who don't even have a relationship, who don't put out diss tracks on each other, who can't stand each other, had the same story, and that same story was in alignment with what Sean Kelly witnessed from his balcony. Okay, so conscious. So in, in a in a court of in, in a court of law, right? Like us as black people, part of the culture. If I don't know, if I don't really know all of Meg's songs and all of uh, Tory songs, right? We at least do acknowledge that we all, we on this panel know who they are. I, I guarantee this white dude did, right? So, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So now we, what we can do is we can all establish, which I said the other day, that Tory lied, Kelly lied, and Megan lied. So, so we do know that. Everybody changed their story. Everybody lied at some point. So if I'm a juror and I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm going to lean more towards what this guy said. And then I, I have to base my decision based off of what he said. Now, I couldn't be a juror. And neither one of us on this panel could be one because we, we have too much knowledge of the situation. So in, in, a, in a court of law, 
I, I, I can't definitively say that Tori shot the actual bullet that hit her. I can't I say would. that. I would. I, I know. I, it's, it's easy to say, but, but okay, like even even with um, I would be able to based upon what was uh <laughs> right. evidence, Kelly's on witness statements because I haven't looked at nobody else's social media. I literally uh just listen to the feedback and the transcripts mm-hmm. from what was going on in the case as it relates to Sean Kelly and the second interview and then what they was admitted into evidence and all of that. And then I just sat back and just ruminated and just processed right. over and over and over and over again how, you know, like, like, like who's who, who's who. And Sean Kelly was the missing link. So in the beginning, I didn't feel like mm. I could as a juror. Um you know, feel confident citing Tory Lanes, but now that I've heard from Sean Kelly, everything fits right into place perfectly, and all that shit at Kylie House is irrelevant. I know why it was right. brought up. It was brought up as a deflection tactic. It was brought up as a smear campaign. I know why her sex life came into play from the defense's perspective. They did their job as a defense, but Sean Kelly still that shit for me. And Sean K did for me, I would be able to vote guilty on all charges. Oh, okay, if and I say you this. Couple that with the GSR, you couple that with mm-hmm. the fact that um uh, once again, he also cleared Kelsey as a shooter. That's what the alleged shooter did to the other alleged shooter. <laughs> it's cleared her on social media. So, like, you know, and then like like the defense, I mean, the prosecutor said in their closing arguments, you have the phone calls to Kelsey from jail. You have the yeah, yeah. Megan uh-huh. and pleading text messages True. to Megan. Mm-hmm. Like, why is the non-shooter this apologetic? And why the hell did the non-shooter apologize to the alleged shooter? Why the hell would right. he be down there locked right. up for something he ain't do? Taking a charge, possibly getting deported, possibly going to be charged with not only an unregistered firearm, but a but, but assault and facing 22 years deportation, you facing all that and you didn't do it and you gonna call the damn shooter who put you directly in the situation and apologize for them and then ironically did not provide any context for the apology as as well. Did that's, not that's, include that's any damn context and even when you apologize to Meg through text included zero context in that text and when Meg did it for you by saying, boom, why would this nigga be apologizing to me if he didn't shoot me, it was only then that he wanted to double back and then provide a context. But why the hell didn't you do yep. that? Why did you okay, not we... provide that context? And you knew damn well that she wasn't fucking with you by the time you sent that text message. Right. You knew damn well it was possible that that text message was going to come back to bite you. So then why the hell would you not include why? The reason why you couldn't include why is because you did it. So it was no way for you to include the why. You couldn't tell her a lie. So you just had to refrain from providing and filling in the context. Have y'all have y'all asked yourself why wasn't this case like public where we can watch this on TV? Because all the information that we actually get would have to be from people that's actually in the courtroom that that actually sat there and listened to it. We don't have transcripts out yet, um, official transcripts where we can actually see what was said, what was done. Um, you know, like where we can get uh. Uh, and an opinion of our own on on their countenance and how they acted. It's I don't know be, why they did. I don't be, know why they didn't publicize this because I think I, that's why it's so confusing. Because, because they didn't pu- because of course, are we not their priority? You know, it's only the priority right now of the jurors. But all but all that stuff is going to be released. The transcripts and all that they always come after the fact. But we're not their priority. We don't have a jail cell to put Tori in. We ain't got to have an RL. We ain't got a verdict to give in terms of, you know, the court. So Mm -hmm. they ain't concerned about us. But it would have, I I think these cases, everybody else's business gets to be damn plastered. And that's what I'm saying. I love it in color. I feel like, you know, it should definitely be the case. It should be public. Especially especially when it comes to high profile people of this magnitude. Because this this, this is really why I said that, that I'm going to drop down. Because. Okay, I listened to I believe it's uh it's uh goddess, right? She brought a report and uh she said uh things from her point of view while she's sitting in court and uh uh Flacco did same thing, right? 
then I can I can hear from another media outlet that says something of, of the same sort, but it's more in Tory's favor. You get what I'm saying? Like there, it's, it's it's divisive because we're not sitting there ourselves formulating our own opinion to where we can actually hear these people talk and and get it get it for ourselves. We're just we're just kind of like almost his third and fourth hand information. And I, I believe it's unfair when you have something as public as it was, even though it was two years ago. And then we can't sit and watch this ourselves. It's like they, they've monopolized us. Like it, it made headlines and it sold tickets, you know, back in 2020, but now we can't even get the information firsthand. And it, it seems really weird and off putting when I get the same, like, I heard that Tory, like, okay, I'll, I'll listen to your platform, and I'm like, damn, Tory shot the gun, because the witness said Tory was shooting all over the place. Then I go to another platform, and they're saying he shot in the air. I'm like, now, which one is it? But that's Which one I, is it? Did he shoot in the air, or did he shoot everywhere? And that's why, like, you you have to listen to, like, the article I read from earlier said, you gotta, uh -huh. like, try, try to listen to if you see the majority, that's more than likely than what actually happened. And and like the article said, all of the reputable journalists reported the same thing that Sean mm -hmm. Kelly said Tory shot everywhere, not everywhere. in the air. So when so when it comes to stuff like this where you're getting like third person, usually mm -hmm. the majority is going to win. So if you see that pattern or that consistency, then that's more than likely what what is versus the other stuff that pops up and out so right you know so there's that but once again we are not the priority of the court so they don't give a damn to bring us into anything like this. they don't give a damn that we hold in panels they don't give a damn that we are like you know reeling over this they don't and, give a damn you know and they, they, and they pick the worst the state hmm? they pick the worst state for this to happen in california has a history of just fucking up every single case like any high profile case like this, like the sloppy, the sloppy detective work, the it, it's it's just bad. It's like it's almost like nobody died. So I can't I can't compare it to like OJ Simpson. But they but but they had a hard on for OJ so bad that they neglected everything else. And you actually will miss like real evidence and real things that kind of solve something and, and put all the pieces together. Like California is the worst, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is about the Jenners and the Kardashians, but damn man, if, if we learn anything throughout this whole thing, is to stay your ass away from them. That's for real, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see that verdict. You know, we're waiting on. They may reach one when it's all said and done, or you know, we may not. You know, they may be back for Tuesdays deliberations but thank you for your talk okay. joe i appreciate, appreciate it. that um, i appreciate it um, can you share that picture um i sent you i don't want to show that illustration because oh, okay i'll it. find different so, um if you want to blur it out a little bit i'll show it but yeah okay um marquez king patriarchy what's t oh, you here you go yeah i can hear you so Verdict day, deliberation, evidence is in, the jury yeah. is jurying. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So what's up? Thoughts? I think um I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go to go to those theories saying she wasn't shot. Clearly the evidence showed that she was shot, so let's get it get that out of our minds. Um I think one of my key things is just and that, and this is why I'm saying that if you don't, if you shoot my face at all, so that would be a discrepancy here. Our quest, your you audio gotta start audio asking these questions. Out. Okay, uh, your audio was going out, but I think you sound okay now. But it was going in and out first. Is it out? Is it going out now? No, you good. Oh, okay. Um, like I was trying to say, um, I think that uh, that inconclusive thing. Um, I believe that inconclusive, he might have had DNA on it, but that's a very big thing when you can trying to get in conviction in any case where it's 
a high profile case like this or it's a lower case that inconclusive gun thing that's really one of those things one of those discussions that should hit now we can get to the Sean Kelly discussion and the whole witnesses and him saying that he saw Tory shoot the gun and I think that I think that's a little suspicious. How how can he be a credible source or a credible witness if you're saying that Tory shot the gun after the fact you said that you saw Kelsey shot the gun? And we have those inconsistencies. Well, it's not really inconsistent. Can- it's not really inconsistent if you actually pay attention to the language. I believe the initial shots came from the female in the SUV. A belief a statement with the context of a belief is very different from the a statement that says I saw. Because one establishes direct knowingness and knowledge and observation. The other one is based upon an assumption. So Sean Kelly was clear about the fact that he assumed because he had, you have to remember, he only assumed that it was the female because he hadn't even seen Tori at all at this point. So when Kelsey moved closer to the vehicle, say that again. And, uh, and, huh? Say that. Can, can you hear you me? Just repeat that last. That be, yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Can you repeat that last yeah. beginning thing that you said? Okay. So yeah, I can hear you. He stated he believed that the initial shots came from the female. He said he actually saw the flashes come mm-hmm. from Tori. So, and you got to remember, mm-hmm. based upon his chronological observation he had not seen Tori at this point so when Kelsey moved closer to the vehicle and the car lit up he assumed the shots came from Kelsey because everybody else was standing outside of the vehicle at that point Quan Mm -hmm. was outside of the vehicle Megan was outside of the vehicle and Kelsey was outside of the vehicle he had not even seen Tori so when Kelsey moves closer to the vehicle and got out of frame, the car lit up. That's why he said, I believed it. Believed the initial shots mm. came from her. But then shortly after those initial shots, he saw Tori exit the vehicle with his arms extended and then saw more flashes come from Tori's arms. And that's when Megan hit the ground and crawled from one side of the street to the other, etc. And there was all of the chaos and mayhem and cussing and fussing and all of this going on. So... It's not as inconsistent as you think at a first level. You just have to listen very intently when people speak. So Sean established Kelsey being a shooter as an assumption, not as something he directly saw, not as something that he knew to be a fact, and only something that he assumed because she moved closer to the vehicle when the first rounds came off. He had not even he didn't even know Tory Lanez was in the car until Tory Lanez ex- exited right. the vehicle with his arm extended, and then more flashes came from him. So it's not really inconsistent. Okay. Then he talked about a big struggle outside of that vehicle and a bunch of this and a bunch of that, which would have been consistent with what Kelsey told prosecutors in September. She spoke about a lot of back and forth. She spoke about a lot of chaos after that gun was shot. There was multiple fights between her and um, Tori. There were two different fights. The one that took place immediately after the gunshots. And then there was the one that took place when she started using the gear shift to jerk the car to distract Tori from being over there where Megan was. If you listen Mm. to what Sean Kelly says, he spoke, he speaks about all that confusion. He speaks about seeing two men on one woman that would have been consistent with Kelsey saying when Tori pulled me out of the car by my hair and was beating on me, Quan came to my rescue. Quan was pulling me by one side of my arm. Tori had the other side and was pulling me by my hair. So when Sean saw two men, it looked like to him they were beating on a woman. But really, but what he really saw was Daquan trying to snatch Kelsey away from Tori. Then he, yeah. then what Sean thought he saw what yeah what Sean thought he saw was all of them beating on Megan who was already on the ground injured well we know that that would have been an observation that he made an assumption about in terms of his interpretation because Kelsey was the only one that had injuries on her 
that were consistent with an altercation with somebody. And she told yeah. Megan in text message and told prosecutors in the interview that 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 those injuries came from Tory Lanez. So, and we know that when Megan went to the hospital, that no other visible injuries were apparent on her aside from the ones to her feet from the residual impact of the bullets. She was not at the hospital with a black eye, with a busted lip, with bruises all over her shoulders, her torso. And if three people are beating you violently, you're going to have more injuries than shrapnel in your feet. So we know that Sean, seeing three people over there with what I believe was a freaked out Megan, who of course was defensive. She should have been. If I just got shot, I'm paranoid. I don't right. know what's going on. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know why y'all did this to me. Y'all are now over here touching all of me, trying to pull me, trying to da 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 da. I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna scream into an outsider. That easily can look like two people are jumping. I'm like, I, I'm being jumped. You know, this is 4:30 at night by a British man on his balcony. He has no context for what he's seeing. All he knows is that there's chaos on the scene. And he's also looking back and forth between his son to the scene, etc. So he just is assuming that every time he sees people in groups, that everybody is fighting each other. But clearly that wasn't what was happening. So, you know, and this is what, and this is the burden of, the jury, like this is what they have to do. They have to sit down. They have to think critically. They have to understand that you have a witness who is, and you got to take the event, but then you got to question the way that that witness interprets that event because their interpretation right. has to be consistent with the rest of the data. So we know, like prosecution said in their closing arguments, that Sean didn't see like that they there was not three people beating on Megan. That was just his personal interpretation of seeing them all galvanizing around her. Because if that was the case, those injuries would have been corroborated by her medical examiners. And she saw two of them when she went to the hospital. So, you know, you gotta make it make sense. And it does make sense when you bring it all together. But okay. to your point initially. His statement actually was not inconsistent. He established that he assumed the shots came from Kelsey. He never okay. said he well, saw let me her with the gun. It. He never said he saw her with the gun. He only assumed that because she moved closer to the vehicle. But then he saw, oh boy, exit exit the vehicle right after. Okay. Inconsistent might be a wrong word for that. So thank you, Conscious. I, I think inconsistent could be a wrong word. But I I think the big thing here is assume. I think assume is a better word. He did say, and I quote, that he assumed that Kelsey shot the gun. And he also did, like you just said, he assumed that while they were helping uh, Megan, that uh, it looked like from his point of view, that they were jumping her and, and preparing to throw her into the river. So those two key parts of your, your, of your, your testimony, I mean, those are both assumptions, which could be in a sense, you could use it. I think prosecution, in a sense, it's only using the Tory, the witnesses part of Tory shot the, the thing, shot the gun five times because it makes more sense with their story. So when you're talking about from that aspect, I'm like, OK, I can agree with you there. But that's just even if you don't want to say the witnesses, the witness who were corroborated this whole story. I understand that. But we got to talk about some of the lies here, like. Megan lying. Okay, hold about on for a minute. Being... Okay. Hold on for a minute. I'm, not, I'm so sorry. I'm not the stand. I see that you are like, you know, you ha you have some comprehension skills, or like some comprehension issues as well. <laughs> I just instructed you all, the jury of the court of public opinion, to use your fucking common sense. Okay, Sean Kelly didn't have to specify because he was describing the scene. One woman hit the ground after flashes went off in her direction from the shortest man who exited the vehicle. Okay? We know that the only person who hit the ground and would have been on the ground the entire time as Sean described it until she would have been picked up by Daquan as Sean described it, it would have been Megan Thee Stallion. We know, and since this happened after the shooting, we know that Megan would have been on her goddamn feet beating on Kelsey on the ground. It wouldn't have been Meg, Daquan, and 
and um and Tory Lanez beating on <laughs> Kelsey. Meg was injured on the ground. See, and, this, and and see, this is what I'm scared of. I'm scared that these type of motherfuckers is on the jury. I'm scared of these type of like simple surface ass people are on the jury. Like this, this is what scares me about the jury. Cause well, like I, I I and that's why I'm gonna stay out of trouble for the rest of my life because I would never trust none of you niggas to to uh, to have to peel through and pile through and and discern and detect and think critically and y'all do not burden yourself with y'all's observations. Y'all literally yield to like the silliest shit, y'all half ass here shit, and then you like want the easiest straight to go collect two hundred as per girl. Like if I took anything away from the trial, bitch, I'm never getting in trouble a day, another day in my motherfucking life, bitch. And I would never require a goddamn jury, cause bitch, I'm gonna be sure as in goddamn jail, or I'm gonna be sure as having my goddamn perpetrator set free. This mm -hmm. is what is scary. This is what is scary, and I'm for real. There is somebody who was assaulted, and that abuser is on trial and subjected to other people's ability to perceive and to sustain continuity in the case. And mm -hmm. if people on social media, because the jury is made up of everyday people, not experts, not, 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 not whatever and so if this is a reflection of what we've been doing because we've been having to clear up the same shit you probably got jurors on the stand who believe that it's still glass That's you probably got jurors on the stand who think that sean kelly said something he didn't especially when you got the goddamn defense and they closed an argument who literally misrepresented intentionally uh ej's statements or maybe did but thought that ej said the things that he didn't say Actually thought sean kelly said the things that he didn't got there. Like, right. this is fucked up. Right. Okay. Somebody got um elevator music. <laughs> some, some goddamn Irish step dancing ass music playing. You will have to calm all that down. Erica Patton. You're gonna have to shut down the instrumental in the background, boo. It's given. Um, but continue on. Marquez, and then I'm going to move on to the next panelist. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the last thing I'm going to say. You know, yeah. I, I think I believe that he was going to get off. How I feel, he's going to get off just because because I don't believe that prosecution made a very strong enough case for him to get those charges. But if we're being honest, after you know. Reading all the, the information, being on this panel for seven days, you know, I saw those lyrics and I'm like, come on, man. Like, why would you put those in the lyrics? Like, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, KK got 55 years for talking about robbing people and shooting people and getting and catching licks. So why would you go into a song and talk about the whole situation? Knowing that people would read those lyrics, because if you use common sense, like you said, conscious, he basically confessed in that song. He confessed. He confessed. I'm not taking anything away. He's going to get off, but after reading the evidence, after being on the panels and stuff, this this man is guilty. Like, I don't want to cut the crap. This man is he's guilty. Like, you look at the evidence, the witness, the witness shuts down this entire case. The lyrics shuts down this entire case. If you want to involve his music video with a, with a horse leg that seemed like a female's horse leg that's in his butcher leg, that's in his butcher room, that's another point. You know, all these things, it's a much better case than, than I would even realize. You know, and honestly, he's going to get off, but he's going to get off. And honestly, I think he's he's guilty. So he's guilty in my book now. So I'm done. 
um conscious um so i sent you a post there um the jurors are trying to uh seize transcripts of sean kelly's testimony um and also i sent you another picture a more appropriate one. <laughs> oh my god girl so the jury is root they are reeling over sean kelly's testimony honey that's gonna be a problem because baby if they if they if they anything like my ass baby that's 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 gonna be the period on the end of the goddamn sentence because mm. Sean Kelly sold the goddamn defense out, baby. <laughs> he shook the motherfucking table and rounded that thing up with a nice old bow. So if they if they about to get into Sean Kelly's testimony, that's 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 about to be very 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 interesting. Um, intersex, are you there, love? Yes, I'm here. Okay, welcome to the can you hear me? Love. Yes, I can hear you loud, live and in color. Your thoughts on day nine. They are deliberating, honey. They're getting into the teens. All right, this time I wrote them down because I forgot some stuff last time. I'll be having my notes too, child. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm ready. All right. As a woman that lived her life as trans for eight years, Live her life as a gay man for 15 years. Finding out that she was she was born intersex 12 years ago. Honestly, I feel like I lived all lives. The lives, the judgment that the judgment of lack of education or able to have a adult conversation about something that you don't know. I'm afraid to date in this world we live in today. The hate for Black women, trans, gay men, and even black men. Honestly, most men don't respect boundaries. Uh, they don't respect celibate women. So how could you call or say Meg is a hoe? As a woman that lost her mother at a young age, I believe Tori used that pain and her grief to get closer to her, to get that, to get a chance to be with her. That's why he used our mothers would want us to be together. This man is disgusting. Women, when you're healing, the best thing to do is to be by yourself. As for Kelsey, she was waiting for the opportunity to be the toxic friend that she was. She actually, she actually was a friend of me. A, fr oh, a friend of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. If she um if she was a if she was a great friend she was a great friend no matter how mad she was no matter how mad I, I would be with my best friend I wouldn't get the things she done some of the things Kelsey said shows exactly who she was a friend of me the witness said he believed he believed shots came from a female and he also said Tori shot four or five times so no matter if it was in the air or at Meg's feet, he's guilty. Kelsey needs to do time, and so do Tori. Mm, my God, today, intersex put both their ass behind bars. Flip the sentence down the middle. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Is that all uh, intersex? Um, I also want to share, I have lost a lot of women in my life, um, some from murder, some from different things. And I do want to share a story. I live in Baltimore City, and mm -hmm. out of all the trans women that lived in Baltimore City that got murdered, we had not one case, case is closed. Every wow. single one case is open. Um, it was a basketball player that had a trans sister. And his case got, and her case got further than any other case in the city. Um, and this is what I hate about um, the law. This woman um, was shot and killed and murdered. Uh, the person who was on trial, she had his blood in her nails. But because wow. she was a prostitute and she had multiple DNAs on her, she was let go disgusting yep wow wow, the wow, wow. politics of it all yep my god
Now, now, just because she's a quote unquote a prostitute, she doesn't deserve justice. And 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 that goes to what I was talking about when people go to slut shame. <laughs> like it's so inherent, like it's so deeply ingrained within us, we don't even notice it. That's crazy. Um, yeah, and you know what though? Reckless. Mm -hmm. That that talking point that intersex had just brought up is also consistent with the type of respectability politics coming up around Megan and being a whore. Yes. And, and, and not even just being a whore, also being a man. And mm -hmm. being a man and and all of that. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Can you put up that picture that I sent you? The appropriate one I sent you? Because I really want to touch on this. Why why plus especially while we're here? Okay. Um let me pull that up after I get the initial okay. panelists to get their talking points out of the way, and then I, I'll definitely pull that up. Um, thank you for sharing that intersex um and like. Intersex and um, Dolly D Beauty said, like, these are systemic issues, and the data reflect that regarding women's community. There is a dramatic, um, we'll get into that. I'll, we'll get into that. Uh, let me get into ZX14. Can, uh, can I say something before you go? Yes. Uh, I don't know if you've received my cash app or anything, but I yes, can't I wait did. Get, Thank you for your I cash can't wait to, I can't wait till we get into other topics, especially yes. trans topics. <laughs> yes. I'm a new supporter and I'm yes. here to stay. <laughs> and I thank you, love. And yes, I received your cash app. Thank you so much. And God bless. I'm happy to have you on board as a conscious crew member. I'm happy that we're wrapping up this trial too. I hope that it wraps up well, but I'm also like eager, eager to kind of get back to to regular schedule programming and get into those other things as well. And we definitely will be. And thank you for that intersex. ZX1400, can you hear me? ZX, if you can hear me, I can't hear you. I saw you unmute your mic, but I don't hear sound coming from your device. And your device just disconnected as well. Okay, uh, uh, Quake, welcome to, no, Pink Clover, welcome to the platform, love. Your thoughts, day nine, deliberation. Justin is twerking on Twitter naked. Definitely twerking on Twitter naked. <laughs> Allegedly. Okay, um, thanks, Conscious, for hosting this platform, specifically for this case for the last few Thank days, you. eight, nine days. Um, I first want to talk about what you guys said about Drake. A lot of people was up in arms wondering and thinking or gasping why Drake mentioned Megan's shots or whatever in his lyrics. Drake is affiliated. I mean, deeply, deeply affiliated with 1501. He have ties to Jay Prince and definitely ties to Carl Crawford for the last eight, nine, ten years. And I think that with him and the baby mentioning or insinuating Meg and their songs, I think they were definitely on a smear campaign the last six, seven, eight months in regards to Meg to muddy up this trial. And it makes total sense being that the defense is pretty much putting her sexual history on trial or who she slept with on trial. And I do hope that other people like Alicia Keys, other, celebrity, other celebrities like Alicia Keys will start speaking more and supporting more, Megan Moore on these platforms. Um, I do think Sean Kelly's interview, his, te his testimony definitely put a nail in this case to me everyone was up in arms they were talking about oh sean kelly he just said tory didn't do it and he messed up the case i always thought that his testimony definitely a trip attributed to the prosecutors oh, on the yeah. prosecutor's yeah. side it because i mean it did and everybody was like oh they were fighting oh and i think in another point kind of 
she's reporting that the jury was wanting to hear Sean Kelly's testimony again. And I think that they will want to hear Kelsey's testimony again. And this tells me that they are doing critical thinking. And it's a, it's a, it's a process of elimination at this point. They're going to compare those two testimonies and compare Megan's testimony to reach their verdict. So I said in the, another, um, in another live that you did, that it, it's like a 50-50 chance. And I still do believe it's a 50-50 chance that Tory will be found guilty. I don't think that the defense, I, I don't think that it's over as they think it is. And remember when Sean Kelly said that he saw someone flailing on the ground, kicking and screaming, mm -hmm. that was, that was Megan. Mm -hmm. And they wasn't trying to beat Megan up. Mm -hmm. That is when Tori Kelsey and the bodyguard was fighting the first time. Mm -hmm. Because Kelsey walked over because Tori walked over to Kelsey with the gun and Kelsey said she started defending herself. Her and Tori started fighting and then the bodyguard came in and they all started tussling. That's the point when Megan was on the ground kicking. I think Sean Kelly's testimony is definitely plausible and I think it's just that so much was going on that night him just waking up, he have his son, he know he's hurt shots, he's sheen shots, he's discombobulated. I think his, his testimony lines directly up with Kelsey's testimony. That's it for right now. Okay, thank you for that, Pink Clover, and I agree. Quack, welcome to the platform. Day nine, yeah, 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 deliberation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts? What's happening? Uh, you know how I feel. I know that Tory did it, but is Tory going to be convicted? I do think he's going to get convicted from discharging the weapon. That's one conviction mm. that we all can agree that he's going to get convicted for discharging the weapon. For actually landing on Meg's foot, they trying to foggy it up where it's like Kelsey was the first shooter and then he was the second, right? But me, I personally don't think she even touched the gun. I don't think she was no, well, I won't say nowhere near the gun because, you know, but she didn't she didn't discharge anything. Like she kept on saying, No ma'am, no ma'am. Like I don't think she like wouldn't she be, be perjuring if she was a discharger? And, and secondly, uh and lastly, I'll just keep it like this. Um I hope that this trial, right? Because I don't want anybody on this panel, anybody who's listening, hi Tori, I know you're listening. I don't want anybody listening to like take this like it's a, a guy versus woman thing because that's their separate issue and that's not pertaining to none of us. We didn't get involved in none of this shit. So I don't want anybody to really get emotionally invested into this trial where it starts lashing out at the guys versus the girls where we could differentiate, we could compartmentalize, we could say this is wrong, but at the same time, I still got love for black women. You know what I'm saying? Or this is wrong. I still got love for black men. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't want nobody to take this and personalize it and say, oh, you know, fuck me. That's how all dudes are. That's how all this, that, the other. Let's not do that. All right. That's all I got to say. Reese's. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Quack, for that. I am looking through something real quick. Let me uh, see who's next on the panel. Uh, Erica Patton, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, welcome to the platform, love. Day nine, trial shenanigans. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is I am a domestic victim, or I was, and I was mm -hmm. going to be a key witness before they settled or took a plea bargain a couple days before. And I know three other women that did have to be key witnesses. The thing that doesn't, that upsets me is they tell you over and over coming to court. If you did, even if you picked up dirty underwear off the ground, stuck it on your head, ran around, be honest. They will tear you apart if they find one reason that they think you're lying. And that's what's upset me. 
about this case is it will make victims not want to come forward and she should have been honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean for you? So, so you definitely believe that Megan, well, first of all, I'm sorry for your experience as a um, survivor. And does that mean that you believe that Meg is is a victim and that Tori perpetuated this violence upon her? I don't know. This case has confused me. Mm -hmm. And I get nobody wants to make themselves look bad voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And I feel like justice was in her hands and she chose to not be honest so she chose to give that away and that's how i feel i don't know i, I really don't know tori lane's music make the stallion music all i ever heard was my teen listening to it driving across country while I'm moving so i'm not a fan of that because it just got annoying but mm -hmm. i think she gave away justice and it's disappointing as a survivor mm because it's going to make people not come forward. And it's hard enough to come forward. And then this will set everybody back. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So that's interesting. Um, Cause you're speaking from the perspective of a survivor, but that doesn't, and it's good. It's healthy to have that a part of the conversation too, that even though there are women who have been survivors of BV, it doesn't necessarily make them automatically rush to any particular assumption about the case. But when you say you are that you've been confused, um, you don't think that the evidence or the eyewitness accounts or the GSR and the fact that there are three people who can put this gun in Tori's hands makes him pretty incriminating to me uh, the, the eyewitness made it the most sense i didn't believe a firearm got shot from a car by a car and the casings weren't there i grew up shooting guns i knew that wasn't a true statement i i believe everybody was fighting so i didn't believe kelsey or megan when they said they weren't it's just there's too many things I don't believe. And that poor Englishman, I don't think he knew what was going on. So I don't know. There's, I don't think there's anything besides a video that can convince me one way or the other. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I just, just for clarification, you're saying that you don't know if Meg is a victim of domestic violence? I think, well, according to her, they're not, they, if they were not in an actual relationship, she probably isn't a victim of domestic violence. It would be an assault is what I think they actually categorized it as because there's so many steps to be a, it to be considered a domestic partnership. Okay. So are you just arguing like terminology or just the, the, the label of her being a victim of something. No, I know she got bullet fragments. I'm not questioning that part. Part. I don't think the story, as it's been told, made sense, and I I don't think the trial cleared anything up for me. The only thing that really bothered me was, I'm sure her attorneys told her, "You have to be honest." And that just as a survivor and knowing that I was told that over and over again, and then she chose not to do it, I feel like she gave it away. And, and I, I feel like there has to be a reason for that. If you wanted justice, make yourself look stupid if you have to, tell the truth. Well, unfortunately, um, because I'm a survivor of abuse myself, so obviously it's, it's very common, unfortunately, especially in our country, to find a woman that's been um, victimized in some way. And we know that everyone handles their trauma differently and the 
the path to justice isn't always easy. It's very difficult. And you're going to face a lot of people telling you that you're not telling the truth. So when you say that it's on her, if she doesn't get justice, it's her fault because she lied initially. And we know that in the beginning, she wasn't seeking justice. She didn't press charges. She wasn't interested in going through all this. I think she kind of foresaw everything unraveling and her being victim blamed and all this. So for me, it's difficult to say if this turns out where he walks, she should have told the truth. It's her fault. It's like no matter what she would have done at that point, someone would have found a way to blame her. And I think especially, you know, when we're talking about a survivor of any type of abuse, we need to be very careful in the, the guilt that we put on the person who's a survivor. No, I agree. I was told by my sisters they didn't believe me, even having a black eye, that I was like, I get people say that. And I'm just meaning uh, she gave it away with letting the, the defense have a reason to say she cannot be believed. Mm -hmm. Not the general public. I, the general public's not going to believe a woman anyways. But her not being honest, I feel like there had to be a reason that she wasn't honest. It's just my whole thing. I, I got a question. But she did yeah. think. I, I got a question for you. Are you, no disrespect, are you a white girl? Yes. Okay, so you, you have to understand that you wouldn't understand where Megan is coming from as a black woman in a society of uh, people who grow up in a uh, what we consider a no snitching um, uh, rule, I guess, is what we go by. Um, that That's something that if you grow up in that environment, you just don't snitch. One, um, if you you could either get killed, you could get harassed, you could get your career uh, taken from you in a blink of an eye if you get labeled as a snitch. And that's what Megan you know, is is thinking when she doesn't come out and tell the cops right from the jump go what happened. You know, so you can't say just because she didn't say anything up front that she's not a victim of domestic violence when clearly dude shot at her. No, I'm not saying because oh, she didn't clearly? tell the police oh, first. Yeah, I, I hey didn't. guys, can I give a quick update? Is that okay? I understand that there's discourse going on. Do you want me to wait? Uh, uh no um you can insert and then I want uh a reckless insert and then I want them to return to their uh conversation. Okay. Um just about the papers that were going around today that were saying not guilty. Um it was just updated that each juror has a paper that says not guilty and guilty and they have to fill one of them in. So one of the jurors actually sent in uh, the guilty form to the blogs, and it was a, 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 a black guy, judging by the hands that were sent in. And they haven't reached a verdict yet on any charge. It's just that all of them are giving guilty or non-guilty forms on each charge, but they haven't been filled in yet. So one of the jurors actually sent in uh, a guilty form even though they haven't even signed it yet mm. okay wow that's messy messy right yeah it's a lot going on that's interesting then I, then I, I just want to say what's up there everybody man oh what's going on Terrell okay um on, yeah. I thank you for that update boo uh a reckless are you are you was good I'm okay okay so, so y'all can turn uh back to the DV and then I'm going to get to the other panelists for the DV conversation that y'all was having. I, I was just saying, I understand her lying to the cops at first. I did as well. And the, the, uh, state, I guess, I think, or county or whatever, press charges. And then I was going to testify. <clears throat> I'm more meaning if they left Kylie Jenner's house, without Tori first and she's saying that didn't happen. It, it's just there's too many things that I feel like she's hiding for pride and I don't get that. But do like you think that any right, other but, things hold on, hold on. But do you think that any of those things are relevant to kind of like who pulled the trigger and injured her? 
because regardless of how drunk she was at the party is irrelevant to who pulled the trigger regardless of i mean it creates context and maybe motive but at the end of the, at the end of the day somebody was behind that gun and there were three people who put that gun in his hands three people one person completely outside of the situation who has no bias no reason to lie who doesn't know anybody involved to walk no, I, me and him as the last uh person behind the gun no i agree but she, i'm just saying she gave the, the defense a reason to say she's not credible oh for sure i agree and, and, you know. and as a victim when you or as a witness i guess when you go in they tell you for months leading up to it be honest don't give them a reason to say see she lied about this don't give them a reason to be like oh you said brown before and now it's blue like they prep you to tell you they will tear any minute thing apart and that's been my issue like she has set it up for them to say she's not credible oh yeah i agree that in terms of a case where there's going to be a opposing party that's going to cling to every word, cling to every line, cling to everything that, yeah, I think it's unfortunate that Megan didn't initially decide to take this up with the courts because I think she would have played her cards differently had she been the one to charge for it. But because the state did and not her, I think she, she just moved the way she moved on social media. And then now that there is a case that has been resurrected against Tory, now, to your point, the the defense is able to pick through that and to do what they will with what they call inconsistencies or her line, et cetera. So, yeah, it's an interesting yeah, set of circumstances. That's all I wanted. I hope you guys all have a great day. Okay. I'll listen to the chat. Bye. I appreciate you for being here, Erica. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for having a conversation. That was important to have. Um, Miss Queen hey, Barbara. And, oh, um, oh, well, Erica, uh, there are some people who have some questions for you. So if, if you want to hit the link again, I'm going to drop it for you. If you have time um, to engage the panel again, I just dropped it for you. Um, Queen Barbara, then Dirty South, and then Terrell. Miss Barbara. Your thoughts on day nine of the trial? And before you speak, I want to say that this picture here is there was confusion for whatever reason around whether that leg in Tori's cap video, which was a disc record and music video to Megan Thee Stallion, was actually a cow or a horse. So I created this outside <laughs> to show you that this is a horse. Okay, a cow has a split hoof. Okay. <laughs> And a horse has a singular one, okay? And as you guys can see here, this is a singular hoof, and you see that the ankle and feet dimensions are the same, okay? For those of you who didn't pass basic biology and science and all of that good shit, welcome to the platform, King, Queen, or King Barbara. Your thoughts on day nine of the bullshit? What a perfect timing. That Jeffrey Dahmer movie and then the judge allows this in the freezer. <laughs> oh, God. Jeffrey Dahmer. Day nine, day nine is over. It's over for Tory because they got this hoof in the freezer. It's over. They just did a whole Netflix series on, on people are already subliminally brainwashed to hate cannibals, you know? So this refrigerated thing is over. Like, you know, if they wasn't allowed to use this record, which I f really feel that they shouldn't be allowed to use because artists could have been feeding off, you know, creativity and um, just doing this to, just to make money. That video made millions of dollars. So I don't think they should have been allowed to use this, but they was. And being that they was, it's over. It's over. The, the, you know, movies, brainwashing people, minds, that's that's it. These people don't know nothing. You have, you know, I'm I'm just gonna call them their Karen's beautiful Karen's, you know. They they don't they don't know the hip hop hood world. It's over for him. Hoof in the freezer. Okay. Thank you for that, Miss Barbara. She said it's over. 
Okay. Well, period. Dirty South, welcome to the platform. Day nine of deliberation <laughs> or day nine deliberations. Uh, your thoughts on the shenanigans? No, nah, what's what's happening? Uh, what's going on? This 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 ain't got nothing to do with my question. But what what's up with the hoof? With the hoof in the freezer thing? Probably from the video, the music oh, video. Okay. 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 Um, I I wanted to touch on um. And what 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 do you think about that? Because look at how maniacal and look at how um slick and clever like the EU windows are because what Tori did in that video to to distract people from common observation was the video starts off showing all oh, healthy, like, brother. Sorry, Tori, brother. huh? No, I was saying sorry, somebody was speaking to me. Oh, you good. Uh, so the video starts off like panning across the room from the left to the right. And then you see like this diaphragm of a cow. So when the camera, so when you see him butchering this leg and you see the camera pan out, you make the assumption that what you're seeing in the display window is a cow. But when you actually just look at what you're seeing and you don't fall for the okie dokie. You realize what you're actually seeing is the leg of a damn horse and not a cow's leg okay so it's just and this is what, yeah. this is what I'm saying yeah. it's like people I, I, I'm, I'm terrified that we cannot clock this kind of stuff I'm terrified that people can play in our face in this way and I'm terrified that this kind of stuff just goes over folks heads because these are the people who become politicians and become jurors and become lawyers and people who become like people who are in in very important positions who are dumb as hell like and just <laughs> all for the banana peel and it's just really wild in me like this case revealed how stupid a lot of people are about things that are just like blatantly in your damn face like it's just wild. Right. Anyway, welcome to the platform, Dirty South. Uh, yes, your thoughts. Um, so I'm a, I'm gonna touch on two things. One, um, I'm from Houston. We do a lot of trail riding down here, so I think I would know what a horse hoof looks like for those folks who saying it's not. That's a horse hoof, uh, for sure, hundred percent. Um, two, as far as the people, I don't know how many of y'all use Twitter, but there's a lot of um, you you, you see those tweets where people say something and you know that's just not true like who the hell would say some stupid shit like that you go on their page you check they don't have no followers they just created their account in december or november and everything about them is tory positive so i just wanted to let everybody to know about all of these bot accounts out there spreading the misinformation along with people like say cheese i can't believe sean is you know reporting what he's been reporting you knowing it's not true just yet at least um so just you know just look out for those folks spreading that that um misinformation and that. screenshot them call them out tag them whenever you can oh yeah 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 i got a, i got a lot on my twitter so you know if you need me to tweet them to your conscious then i will you know we need to put these these fake accounts on on Front Street, you know what I'm saying? That that shit's gotta stop. We gotta report them until they gone. Please do. <laughs> yeah, um, somebody got to. <laughs> and we, I think we got Erica Patton back. Okay. Um, yeah, fake news. Lots of it is out. Okay, but just stick to the reputable. Once again, stick to what you are seeing consistently. That's gonna be your best bet in a situation like this when it comes to us getting like you know, secondhand information because the transcripts haven't dropped. So we're having to rely on, you know, uh, those who are journalists in the field, those who we trust are there, et cetera. So the consistency is super important. I agree. Uh, anything else you want to add, Dirty South, before we get to, to get to, 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 oh, so what do you think is going to be the verdict? You think he's going to walk? You think he's going to be charged for something? You think he's going to get charged for the actual assault? What's T? Um, I, honestly, um, I think he gets convicted for two of them. I think he gets convicted for uh, possession of, of the gun. I think he gets convicted for um, rec like shooting a gun recklessly. But here's, here's where like I I have like, I don't know, like I disagree with myself. It is if he gets convicted for shooting the gun recklessly, then how does he not get convicted for the assault? You see what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. So, so it's like, if if they're not gonna convict him for the assault, 
then they can't convict him for recklessly shooting the gun and they can only convict him for possession. But we know he was shooting a gun. So to me, it's, it's either possession by itself or it's all three. It, it can't really be anywhere in between. Right. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you for that dirty stuff. Terrell, welcome okay. to the platform. I know you outside of the 7-Eleven buying four locals and single Newports and shit. I don't well, drink. <laughs> I don't drink that stuff. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm getting hey, me a cigar, bro. Okay. What's going on, everybody? Hey, uh, what's the question? Hey, My bad. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You said I'm messy? Oh, Jesus. No, I said it's day nine deliberations. Shit is messy. Oh, shit is messy. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I don't know. At this point, honestly, either you're going to get them. I guess I answered that last question first. If you, Either you're going to get them on all three, or you don't you don't could beat them at all. What? Um, I don't think it's fair how a lot of stuff goes because a lot of people conflate uh, public opinion with what you proved in court. You know, uh, it's a prosecution job to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. You know what I mean? And I don't think they did that with their case. You know what I mean? I think the, um, I think the defense did it, though, by putting Sean Kelly on the stage, though. <laughs> well... I mean, all right. So even if you break, even if you break it down in basic trial, you know what I mean. Even if you want to say I, I possess the gun, you have to put my fingerprints on the gun, not inconclusively, definitively. You know what I mean. Uh, if you want to say negligent, you will have to have more than just one person saying, "Oh, I I seen him waving his hand shooting." You know what I mean? If but, if you but they do though. All right. Well, actually, you only have one person saying that. Who? Um. Also, John Kelly. You no, you actually have three people because you, you have multiple three. people saying. Hey, you got uh, Megan too. Uh, you forget Megan is the yeah, witness. But yeah, that, that's uh, the that's uh, my uh, whole uh, issue. All right, my bad. Y'all won't go ahead. Five, I'm saying allowed. that's my whole issue in the trial because. It's too many conflicting stories. You know what I mean? It's called as communicate. It's if really I could say you, if if I could say you lied about one thing, I can negate your old testimony. Yeah, but we know that's also not factually true because we know that. I, but we talked about this yesterday, conscious. I ain't, I ain't disagreeing with you. I'm with you, but I'm talking about what you proved in trial. I don't think they did a great job on that trial. I don't think. Um, that they should uh, just take public opinion and just say, okay, well, yeah, he guilty or not guilty and take that into deliberation. You got to go off the evidence that's in front of you. Okay, the evidence that's in front of them, but to be clear, Terrell, the evidence that's in front of them is witness testimony from Megan. They uh, made uh, Kelsey's uh, interview admissible. Okay. Um, right. so she, she and they... Also, her text messages identifying Tori as a shooter to uh to Justin are in evidence. Also, Sean Kelly placing the smoking gun behind Tori's hands, etc. In and, addition to his but see, you have to, and right, guess what? And the defense know that it's they know they're struggling right now, so they're also having to place his ass behind the gun. So now it's a okay. matter of well, he was defending her or taking the gun from. Kelsey, etc. Because you also have GSR registered on both of these. Right. People. Have That's one of gonna do it. Okay, so I got a question. Behind the gun. Wait, hold on, 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 reckless. Uh, okay, so I do want to also say because the whole thing about the lying part, the, the 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 defense attorneys was were misrepresenting the statements as well, and that was something that the prosecutors made very known and also said in their closing arguments, as in like. How, how like so? How does it feel, jury, that just to know that the defense attorneys completely misrepresented the the conversations that were had, had and stuff? So this is what I mean when I say that a lot of times when people want to talk about lying this, lying that, but yet when Megan lied, we stuck to it. When Tori lied, we didn't stick to it. When Kelsey lied um, on the stand, we stuck to it. But when she lied, when she was telling the truth or lied in the video, we didn't stick to it. When prosecutors lie, we stuck to it. But yet, when the defense attorneys lie, we're not sticking to it. That's all I got to say. Okay. I was going to say, okay, so in, in basic case law, 
Oh, I'm finna say I ain't cut nobody. I'll go ahead, man. What you oh, I'm say? sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean to cut you off either. I just wanted to add to what he was saying, and what your point was. Um, also, the defense cited Kelsey's recorded uh, confession, I guess, uh, in September. They, they actually cited it. They said, okay, um, we're not sure how Tori got in the front seat. They also talked about how um, like Kelsey um, paused after the third shot when she got from around the vehicle. So I just wanted that to be in context to when you respond. That's all. Yeah, I mean, it's the problem. The problem is like, like I believe, like I personally believe that lady was drunk that night. And do you, between, do you, are they all were because are they all? I don't party? think all of them was drunk the same way. Huh? But drunk man, drunk. they was partying with a Kardashian. I, I, I understand that, but all of them weren't partying the same way. Kelsey like, was asked the fuck out at the party. That's how drunk. But she that's was. but re let's remember. And Tori admitted that both, he was drunk. Right? Tori was in the okay, pool wait, with his what? drawers on. What you mean? What well, well, shit? I'm, I'm put you <laughs> in the pool. Uh, uh, let's see no, 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 how no, you no. at. I'm about to You better hold on, y'all. If I'm in the pool with my drawers on, I'm fucked up. Hello, hello, hello. I'm not. Hello, 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 hello. And remember, uh, uh, Terrell, Tori. Apologizes for doing something when he was drunk. He never clarifies in that apology what he did when he was drunk, but he acknowledges that whatever that was, right? Was I was wrong for doing that. So, to your point, that Meg, you got to say they all were drunk, they all were drunk as hell, they all had been drinking. All in them, all I'm saying. All I'm saying, all of them went on the same level. Like, give, give for example, just like when EJ got up there, EJ was like, we got there about between one and three. I don't remember the exact time they said they got there, but they had been drinking. That's how Kelsey passed out and had got to end up getting put upstairs. You know what I mean? And Terrell, uh, really, Terrell, really quick. All right, I don't go think ahead. You, Excuse I'm me. Sorry. I, I, okay, I'm sorry, but I don't think that um, what I said was, I guess, interpreted correctly. Tory's defense, meaning his lawyers, cited Kelsey's uh, September interview in their closing arguments. His lawyers were saying that what she said were true. His lawyers. That's all. Right. Saying. Yeah. Right. So your closing argument is nothing but trying to base the facts of the case or the evidence or the testimony that came out in the case to what you said in the beginning. Because your opening and your closing are supposed to go together. So uh, if one person cherry picks or the other side cherry picks, that's that's what they do. I've been privileged to be in front of a lot of trials, not just I, my own uh, person. It's funny question. that you say that, but you. Mm. I what? You can finish your sentence. Every time you say a statement, you're not saying it completely. You've been on it. You've been up here with well, all I mean, of us. You leave stuff out. That how could you say the statement that you just said? And every time you say something, Meg was drunk. I don't think the other ones was as drunk as Meg. What? Well, when I was finished, I don't think everybody. I didn't say Meg. Actually, I said all of them. I don't think all of them was on the same level. That's not what you said. Oh, you actually <laughs> said Meg. You you actually did say Meg. Like I bet. I don't think all of them was on the same level. Bet. Okay, but that's that's so, right, Terrell. That's okay, that's that's so, opinion. That's not okay. a fact that you can so prove. Tory then. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Tory was his level of drunk was it caused me to do the unthinkable. It caused me to do something that I did not mean to do. It it it, it this level of drunkenness hijacked my will and my inhibition. It 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 took me over, it consumed yeah. me. It possessed me, okay? Um, Megan doesn't even claim to to have been drunk at the point that she is shot. So I don't even know kind of what we can say to her alleged drunk because really her drinking kind of came from everybody else in the situation, cited that really. But and then you have Kelsey who, you know, was, you know, she <laughs> turned into her maid at Kylie's house and, you know, she 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 was out of there. So, but right. nothing, you have okay. So everybody, okay. So you say that to say what exactly? Like I was just saying, I don't think, man. I, mean, listen, I don't, I don't think that shit went high. Either one of them really say. But that's honest. why, 
But that's why right. Sean Kelly's eyewitness account is so important because he ain't drunk. He is sober and he is outside and doesn't have a bias or a reason to protect anybody because he don't even know who these people are. That's why his testimony is significant. What's that short guy? <laughs> but what about yeah. but what about the fact that he saw Kelsey shoot he saw flashes from Kelsey first, then he saw then he no. saw no gun. Uh, ex- no, explain saw, explain no, how no, Kelsey got a gun. No, gun. No, no, then he no, saw no, Tori no, with no. the gun shooting. No, no, honestly, I, so I how did Kelsey get the gun? Look up the word I believe. believe. Y'all would be look here up the word believe. beginning because sometimes we be get, we be going over the same stuff that we already done went over earlier on in the discussion. But to be yeah, man. really quick, but to be really quick, Sean Kelly never said he saw Kelsey with the gun. He said he assumed that the flashes came from her when the flashes went off in the vehicle because she moved closer to the vehicle. But after those shots, Tori emerged out of the vehicle with his arms extended and the rest of the shot, the rest of the flashes came from him. And he used the word belief. He never said, I saw her. He said, he, I, I assumed she was a shooter because he had not seen Tory Lanez at that point until Tory Lanez exited <coughs> the vehicle with the flashes. Coming from All right, him. A conscious, quick question. Squad this for me real quick. Uh-huh. He also said when he heard the first gunshots, Tory was in the car. Uh-huh. Squad that with what you saying. Because uh, it, it was only Megan, like Megan, it, it was only five fighting. shots. And you saw the girls were fighting before. Hello, the shots, before uh, the uh, what the question? Happened, happened, right? on. We don't want to. We're not gonna move on anything so that we don't have no more confusion. So let people right. move on and let us piece it together. Yeah, that's consistent. Tory Lanez was shooting, hanging out of the window initially. Remember, according to Kelsey, and according, uh, according to, to Meg. 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 You mean? No, I'm talking about according to Kelsey as well. Kelsey told prosecutors in her interview that she looked back when she stepped out of the vehicle and saw that Tori had jumped from the back seat to the front seat and was hanging out of the window shooting at Meg. So Kelsey and Megan report he was in the vehicle at the time that the gunshots were fired. Sean but Kelly that- did not see Tori Lanes until Tori exited the vehicle. He had, he, he had no idea there was even a fourth person until... Tory got out of the vehicle, ironically, after the initial shots that seemed to have came from inside the vehicle. Now, we know that the actual shots, we know that Tory, according to Sean, if you look at what Sean said, Tory would have had to have been still in the vehicle because the gun casings were found outside of the vehicle. So, we, but in the grave. But obviously, yeah, he was, they have. But Tory that's what I'm saying. He, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tory was, I, Tori was hanging out of the window and then he got mm-hmm. out of the vehicle, stepped into the grass and emptied the clip. That's why you hear the gunshots and the pause and then the remainder of the gunshots. Tori had made his way from inside if the vehicle we only... down to outside of the vehicle. Okay, so if we going off what Sean Kelly said, he said he, he was woke up to arguments. They was uh-huh. arguing and went to fighting first. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, Kelsey, Kelsey. Mm-hmm. run to the car. He heard the gunshots first. So if no, they outside, no, it, no, he wait, no, what? No, he didn't hear the gunshots first. You just he said heard the he gunshots heard before first. Tory got out the car. You just heard. Oh, no. when he say Tory got out the car, I just explained. You're not listening to her. I just literally explained it to you. You just said it too. You can't say he heard arguing first and then heard gunshots first. He only heard one of those things first. He heard the arguing when he got up right. to the balcony. He saw two women violently beating each other. Then okay. he saw one female, a.k.a. Kelsey, move closer to the vehicle. So she basically went out of frame. At this point, he could only see the tippity tops of folks' heads. Kelsey moved closer to the vehicle when the shots went off from inside the vehicle. He assumed that it was Kelsey because of her proximity to the SUV. At this point, Daquan was already out of the car. Meg was already out of the car. Kelsey was already out of the car, but moving back toward the SUV after her altercation with Meg. So, okay. so Sean had not even seen Tori at this point. He couldn't even account for Tori until after he assumed the shots came from Kelsey. But then shortly after those shots came from inside the vehicle, he saw Tori Lanes emerge with his arms extended. And then he saw multiple flashes from Tori in Megan's direction. Okay. Megan, he observed Megan hitting the ground. He observed mm-hmm. Megan 
falling across one side of the street to the other and balling up into a fetal position. He observed uh, the remaining three at some point all around Meg as Meg is kicking, etc. So I, I hope. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it still don't square because that means your star witness lied to you. Who, who's the star witness? Who's the witness? Who's the first witness? Your first witness. Your first witness is usually your star witness, which was Meg. Meg said she got. They would. Meg uh -huh. said that Kelsey and uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to mess the names up. So Kelsey and Tori was the only ones arguing. She didn't want to hit an argument no more. She walked out, made a few steps, looked back. Tori said, "Dance, bitch, and shot." Uh huh. Which would be how does how does how does as we say the eyewitness we're just going off this because it's just a hypothesis. What it's just what we, about? Her testimony is confirmed by Kelsey. The fight. How? And we know that, they don't, and we know she that don't that put no fight in her. She says uh -huh. the fight. She don't. Oh the no! Fight. So we already have the back and forth. Hold on. We already established that both Kelsey and Meg lied about the fight. Both of them lied about the physical altercation. There definitely was. A physical altercation between Kelts and Meg. Now, right. I believe, so so, but both of them edited that out. But if they wouldn't have edited right. that out, I mean that that I mean, but that points to motive, though. That's not only points to motive, but it also makes you realize that if you want to stand and you you you're you're supposed to tell the truth, right? And these questions were formed to both women. Mm -hmm. You have to. I mean, it's called as communicate. You can't lie on the stand. Yes, you know both, what I mean. So I they really, both lied. Really Only thing. Lie, but how did we get back to Meg? We were just talking about that the witness. Doesn't, that doesn't because change. we're relating all stories together. We're not. Okay, I'm not, I'm only, not down right. talking Meg. I'm just we're but relating people, all stories together. But the people who are talking all have cooperating stories. Is the whole point. I and Sean don't In know what Kelsey. way. I if. Did you not listen to what I said? To you? Like, I was I, listening to what you saying. I, 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 I'm just trying to. I don't understand like how you don't understand how they cooperate together. The real question is, have you been listening to Meg, 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 Meg said in her testimony and said in her Gail King interview that she got out of the vehicle and when she, she got shot at, at, there was some point she looked back and Tori was hanging out of the window. Kelsey told prosecutors Tori was hanging out of the window. Sean Kelly says the shots came from inside the vehicle, which would be consistent with somebody being in the vehicle shooting. Okay, so they all have cooperating stories. Kelsey acknowledges that Megan turned back and saw her shooter because she said that when Megan looked back, Megan was looking at the both of them like a deer in headlights. Her and Tori. Okay. Don't get quiet now. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not get. Hey, I don't know who that is, but I'm, I'm trying to let bro finish and not interrupt. You don't got to. I mean, but do you understand me. it's the most important thing? Like, are you. Yeah, are you, yeah, like, yeah. I hear what you're saying. All I'm saying is, like, this, this, this is trial, right? So we, we, you can't lie on this thing. You can't obfuscate. Listen, obfuscation of the truth is the same thing as telling they a lie. Okay, but they lied. We are like it already happened. Now the point is, once again, you lie or no lie. The shooter is what is on trial. Meg is not on trial for her lie. She's not on trial for whether she fucked or didn't fuck her. This is the state of California versus Tory Lanez. Right, okay, but their witness and there's a smoking gun. Tory has GSR all over him. He gets arrested that night for being in possession of the firearm that was found on his persons at the point that he was pulled over. He mm. his job is to they battle. To, but, his but, job but, is to battle that mm. out. Megan, it's the, Megan and Kelsey line is. It, it, I mean, it, it's well, secondary. no, that's really it's constructive it. possession. That's not actual possession. Constructive possession. Construction pos constructive oh, possession is means is I come the terminology is they charge his ass with the weapon because it was found near him. Which this means I gotta put your fingerprint. And the GSR and the GSR confirms 
that him and Kelsey had the most, which would explain Sean, Sean Kelly would confirm that because if Kelsey moved closer to the vehicle at the point that Tory Lanez hung himself out of the window, started shooting, she would have been practically right next to Tory Lanez. That GSR would have dispersed all around her as well. If she was thrown into the car, and if my theory is correct, that he left the gun in the car after he realized Meg was injured, and Daquan threw her back into the front seat, like Kelsey said in her interview, then she more than likely touched the gun, moved the gun. It might have had been dropped in the front seat where Tori left it or on the floor. She might have moved it, hit it. I don't know. So, you know, like, she would have yeah, came into GSR. It's a lot of I don't know. Uh, she would have came into GSR again by even getting put in that position. Then there was two physical altercations between her and Tori after he had discharged the weapon. She would have got GSR transference on her as well through that. So it like it's not really rocket. I think we're out of the ballpark of this being rocket science. It's it's no longer rocket science. Like it it like it's Yeah, it's I don't only, think it's rocket science either. It's not. So Tori is on trial, not Meg, and not whether she's some barbaric angry drunk. There's GSR found on the person alleged to be the shooter. The person who was alleged to be the shooter was charged for the gun that allegedly shot her. And now his job is to be proven innocent that he yeah. was the shooter. And even if it, we don't it, talk it, about possession, you have it, to have you have to have you have to have evidence to prove my, my hands they on that. Do. They have three witness accounts and GSR. <laughs> I, I I don't like that's pretty good. I, I mean, I, I mean, all right. You got you got the you person got, that, that one person you got a person that lied on the truck with a whole bunch of GSR all over him. That's we don't know is how we don't we don't know that because when they we even asked that. the they asked the we don't know who had we don't we don't know who had more GSR on them. We do. We know who that do? because Daquan was never tested and Meg was never tested. So Kelsey, I said and, we don't know. I, I'm talking about out of Kelsey and remember we talked about this last night. Oh, yeah. Out of Kelsey, out, out, out of Kelsey oh, and we, out of we, Kelsey we, and Tori, we, we don't know, know that. That's why his defense team thought it was intelligent to pin it on Kelsey because they have because they're they're going to make a mountain out of the GSR being on her as well. That's why it comes down to either Kelsey or Tori. But the problem with Kelsey as a suspect is that. Sean Kelly doesn't put her behind the weapon of the gun. I mean, the the, the weapon of the gun. Sean Kelly mm. doesn't put her behind the trigger. Tory Lane exonerated statement. her on social media as being the shooter. Meg doesn't acknowledge her as the damn shooter. And when you have the alleged shooter saying that the other alleged shooter isn't the damn shooter, that only leaves one person here. And that's yeah, but you, himself. But you can't prove who I said that. The gun was found near. Who the gun... Who? I know like, that you can't prove that people can't prove that he said that but again his defense attorney his attorney cited Kelsey's uh, interview in September as he was closing his statements he also tried to go the anti-black woman role which was weird um, during his closing statements he said do you guys believe that Megan wasn't jealous of Kylie and Tori in the pool do you guys believe that that's what his attorney said so i'm going off of what his attorney said so she was i don't know i wasn't in the courtroom today so i don't yeah, know see, i have to say i don't know attorney, i just worked the double i just worked the double so at, i don't know uh, Torrell, his attorney's at this point placed him behind the gun but they're trying to say the reason he was behind the gun is because he was wrestling with the actual shooter over the gun. So, 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 so it don't boil down. The argument now legally is it done came down to Kelsey or it came down to Tory. Really, it comes down to Tory and whether the prosecution has provided enough substantial argument and evidence of Tory being the shooter beyond reasonable doubt. Do you think he has? Do you think they have? I'm talking about just off the case. I'm not talking yeah, about nothing. Yeah, after I, after it was Sean Kelly for me. It was Sean Kelly. I was I, I was initially gagged by by him throwing the defense's case because he was brought in as their witness. So it was freaking right. hilarious that he like jumped straight out of the window and gagged the hell out of them with what he gave us. 
But once I actually got past the initial gag and I sat right. down and really dealt with what he communicated and his observations, and then I thought about what what Kelsey communicated. Yeah, I read the transcripts earlier. Megan communicated, and then I looked at the evidence and the audio, and I put it all together. I'm absolutely convinced that Tory Lanez factually did this. Um, I'm I and and, and I'm pretty convinced that he legally did this as well. I I no longer believe that Kelsey pulled that trigger before Sean Kelly. I I entertained Kelsey after Sean Kelly. I am convinced that he pulled that. I got trigger. a question about Sean Kelly. Wait, one sec- I just want to know one thing. Where does this district attorney get twenty four years from? Huh? Why would he want to give Tory twenty four years, even if Tory is guilty? Twenty four years. Yeah, that's, uh, that's California here. statute. It's overkill, bro. It's, li- it's get- lynching. It's a lynching. It's a well, lynching. It's a disgrace. It's a. They're lynching. making an example out there, nigga. Uh, it's called ten twenty life. Thanks, thank Joe Biden. I have a question. Uh, I have a question for the panel that's pro Tory or whatever. So, uh, like, one of the things I have noticed throughout this panel, this this series, is that a lot of people that were saying, no, Tory couldn't have done it. But, however, if he did do it, he deserves to go up under the jail. So now that he actually has a sentence that sentence that actually puts him up under the jail, why are we complaining? Uh, I never complained about the charges they gave him. Except for the last charge they, they gave him right during uh, jury selection. Because the, you you you're supposed to all right. If I say you shot a gun, that means I can give you aggravated assault. If um, I can give you that, I can give you possession. So that was his first two charges. The third charge wasn't put on to what a couple of days before the case started. Mm-hmm. So well, I mean the the it, it line. Mm-hmm. I mean they they charges line up. I just don't think they they executed it right, nor did I think they actually did their due diligence, which I don't think nobody, whether you believe he did it or not, I don't think they did their job at all. Okay, but my but 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 here's my thing. My thing is is that like y'all do know this is not his first time running into the law, right? <laughs> like you do know like with with legal systems, and the reason why I know this because I'm in the military as well, and they have the similar things that they do. The first couple times they're gonna let you off. But then once they get you, they're going to get you. Depends and, on who you is. And and then not only that, the consequences are going to be extreme. Depends on who you is. And it's a high profile case. This is the this is top yeah. case in the country. And that's more of a reason why you, you need to be on your best behavior. Which the, means you, you shouldn't even brought this to you should. That, listen, they ain't even I can't. It's inconclusive on the gun, so I can't even really give you possession. Like, if anybody, I've been through gun cases. I, I ain't trying to put my business out in America, but I've been through gun cases. The one thing you hope when you sitting in that dorm is that bitch come back at least inconclusive. But you do know that there are people like, like this is the reason why I come back inconclusive. Really, you really cannot, to you cannot say I had my hand on the gun, and you can't say I, I didn't. You know what I mean? That's what inconclusive means. Inconclusive means we cannot come. I, we're very much clear what inconclusive means. Me. You don't just need don't, the DNA. I was like, don't yell at me. You're I was very just much clear because my thing on, is on, 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 on. You don't just need the you don't just need the fingerprints when you have the GSR and you have three witnesses verifying a shooter, including the victim themselves. Right. And, and, and that's why I'm like, you know, like they're you're not going to they, they are not going to disregard the victim's observation. In this situation, her testimony is significant to the potential of conviction. The victim saw who victimized her, and she has two people corroborating that, including an outsider, which makes it even, which which enriches that testimony. Because it's one thing for people to say, well, Kelsey and Meg are in cahoots, or Meg w- or Kelsey was paid off by Tory, or, you know, it's it's easy to get into the biasness. The That's why Sean yeah. Kelly was such a head turner, because he's a total outsider, entirely removed from any of that bias speculation. And he also puts Tory behind the smoking gun. He saw Meg drop to the ground. 
He saw her thrown back into the vehicle. He saw multiple flashes coming from a Tory who had the water. He saw Tory exit the vehicle after the initial flashes inside the SUV. He identifies Tory as the angriest out of the group, as the person who was the most uh 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 angry and upset and verbal and cursing profusely and etc etc shouting the whole nine uh you have all of that and you also, have the genius on all these persons yes presley well, i was gonna say i put um the latest link i put in the chat i was wondering if you wanted to to look at that to show um that that tory's lawyer know he's guilty if you wanted to look at the latest link I put in the link. <laughs> latest link and I put the, in the link. Yeah. And, and the reason the why it was like kind of okay. irritating is because I've like I've literally been on mute. I've been walking back and forth, but I've also been monitoring on my phone. They conscious and they would think it was somebody else has and I think it was uh Dirty South. They literally have been explaining to you the exact same thing for the longest now. And so when it comes down to this case, if if we understand and for people who think Tory didn't do it, but now once we actually get to the idea that he possibly has have, has done it, you guys always say, I'm generalizing here. If it doesn't it does not apply, let it fly. You guys always say, if he did it, he needs to be put up under the jail. So now we're in a position where it's a strong possibility that he did it. And now there's a strong conviction of he might be put up under the jail. So why are we complaining if that's if that is what you guys always say? Twenty four years is a lynching. That's ridiculous. Is it okay? So let me put that into perspective, and then I got to get on that part. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me speak to that, and then I want a red card to jump into. Uh, considering that. We have a unregistered firearm. We have a Canadian here with that unregistered firearm. We have the discharge of that firearm and three people accusing that person of shooting said victim. And then we have that same alleged shooter who was already on probation in this case, already on house arrest, who violated house arrest. Uh, by showing up at, at the Rolling Loud, the judge had to reprimand Tory a few times, put a gag on on, on his ass, then put restrictions against his ass. You not on house arrest for that, August. I was, I was had, Hello, no, it, right? But and, I'm saying you just added. And, it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He was, uh, uh, yeah, right, because he he was perpetuating more more violence. So you are accused of shooting somebody. And then you are penalized by the judge who is presiding over the Tory. I mean, yeah, the Megan Stallion situation penalize you because a part of the stipulation is you are to stay out of trouble. So then you are put on house arrest as a result of beating the hell out of August Alcina. Then you are put on a gag order, and then you are given a fine for uh uh for for um. For the whole like restraining order situation between him and old girl, and then you have the fact that this man just wrapped up other litigations involving his violence, aka the one against Prince of Love and Hip Hop Miami, that literally wrapped up the same week the trial started. <laughs> um, hey, it and then you a black man in a white man system. So you are going to perpetuate this much violence, have this much litigation under the umbrella of violence, and then you have the issue of being black and male in an anti-black system. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, Tory Lanez, you fucked all the way up, sir. Hey, Conscious, did you hear about uh, the hit and run he had in October that they still pursuing? I didn't even know there was a hit, a hit and run. Oh, oh, yeah. The pregnant lady. The pregnant lady. What? Oh wow! No, that, that was the video. Um, the the article that uh Presley was talking about, but the, you know they was tagging her ass up at the time. So, I, but I did read I it. It was about a pregnant with woman. All of Tory Lane's court cases. I can't. He got he got more court cases than there are letters in the alphabet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I can't even. I, don't, I what? 
Okay, so then, so then, that's why they giving his ass a run for his money. Now, Red Clark, welcome to the platform. Happy to have you here, brother. So uh, day nine <laughs> deliberations. Apparently, the they deliberating. So it's it's, it's possible. Tory may may walk because you know I mean I don't know what this means you know but they did ask to review Sean Kelly's uh interview like about forty five minutes or an hour ago so they might be what I'm happy about is that they are seriously deliberating that's what it gives to me is that they are moving through the evidence they're having the conversations they're trying to piece this thing together that they're taking a time through this. But yes, day nine, crazy man. What do you think, Red Clark? Um, I don't know. Like, it's a good sign that um that the that the jury is, you know, like you said, taking their time to deliberate. Um, because that like you show, I mean said that do show like, okay, they really being serious. You know, they ain't just going there and just I right, I'm ready to get the Christmas. You know, I'm ready to drink my eggnog. I'm ready to boom, 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 and just picking some shit. So that's a good thing. Also, you know, I don't know a boy name, but I feel like a boy that was just talking, you know. But, you know, I somewhat feel like the reasonable doubt, like the defense gave, it, it like how they painted the story was like, like from a logical perspective, they, they, put it on Kelsey more so because, you know, the reasoning for her to do it was more, I like, I I felt like they made a better thing like that. But my thing, I got a question about Kelly. If he's the only star witness, well, well not only the eyewitness that was there outside the situation, besides Jaquan and shit like that, why didn't the prosecution have him as a witness? Why did the defense have to get him as a witness? You know, if that's the only star witness that's outside of the event. You see what I'm saying? Like, that was kind of confusing to me. It's like, this is your only star witness besides the people that was in here. If I was a prosecutor, I would want the only guy that saw it that didn't have, you know, anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. I think the prosecution got nervous because Sean Kelly did did allude to that gun possibly being in the hands of Kelly. I mean, in uh, the hands of Kelsey. And I think that they, they see Nancy was smart because if the defense wouldn't have got desperate and stupid, they wouldn't have made the mistake of being put in Sean Kelly ass on the stand. The prosecution knew that his story implicated both Kelsey and Tory, And what they needed was to focus on Tory. So they stayed away from somebody who would even allude that anybody else outside of the situation shot that gun. But the defense took a chance on Kelly ass and it ended up <laughs> going completely left because even though he eludes and says, I believe the initial shots came from Kelsey, it was Tory who I saw finish the situation. And it's Kelly who I definitely saw the flashes come from. I assume those flashes came from old girl because she moved closer to the vehicle. But I definitely saw short man, little man with the flashes. And I saw the female drop and da 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 But I think the prosecution might have just got nervous and they didn't want to because their job was to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So Kelly, for them as a witness, would have might have worked backwards. It was the defense's job to actually muddy the waters and bring the confusion and to place somebody else behind, you know, the thing of that gun. So actually, now that I think about it, 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 it was smart for the prosecution not to necessarily bring Sean in, and it made sense for the defense to do so. Okay, okay. And I got another question. Um, And correct me if I'm wrong, but did, did Meg say that Tori was standing over the back window shooting? Did she say that or not? I don't recall her saying he, he stood over the back, but she definitely said he, he was hanging out so, of the window. All right. Well, mm-hmm. um, I mean, all right. So when they put so the sitting arrangement was Quan driving, Meg in the front, and Tori and Kelsey in the back before the situation happened. 
Yeah, Tori right. was behind Meg and Kelsey was to the left behind Quan. Okay, okay, okay. So um when they found the the gun, well first like after, I mean when the situation was happening, um she said Tori climbed in the front seat and started shooting or hopped out. Yeah, Kelsey over. said that uh he had jumped from the back seat to the front. Oh. All right, all right, all right. And and well, I asked that to say like, okay, just how the just how they assume Tory had possession of the gun. Can, th th this is the same assumption energy that we using to say Kelsey shot the gun, right? Because she was in close proximity of the flashes, just like Tory was. In close mm -hmm. proximity of the gun. Not saying that Tori had possession of the gun and not saying that Meg, I mean, I meant that Kelsey shot the gun when they saw the flashes. So what I'm saying is just how we'll give Kelsey benefit of the doubt because the flashes were closest to her, but that don't mean she shot it. I feel like Tori deserves the same because the gun was in my proximity, that doesn't mean I have possession of the gun. You the reason why we can't read is because we have three confessions now from Kelsey. Mm -hmm. We have her initial text to Meg that says, help Tori shot Meg. We have what she said to prosecutors in September a few months ago. And then we have um, her her old best friend that came forward and said that when, she, when Kelsey came back, uh, for her clothes and shit or whatever it was that Kelts also confined in her that Tori had shot Meg. Then you also would have had Justin Edison, who Kelsey initially texts, help um, Tori shot Meg, who also alleged that when he went to pick up the clo Meg's clothes from Tori's house, that Tori also was very apologetic and confessed to him that he had shot Meg and was apologetic for it. Then you have Meg, who identifies old boy is the shooter. Then you have Sean Kelly who acknowledges that old boy is the shooter. So we can't give Kelts the same we can't give him the same grace we're giving Kelts because you have nobody putting Kelts behind the gun, including Tori who cleared Kelsey on Twitter when somebody posted, it's being said that Kelsey shot Meg and Tori responds from his Twitter account that that's not true. Kelsey did not shoot Meg. Kelsey is saying I did not shoot Meg. Megan is saying Kelsey did not shoot Meg. Uh, Sean Kelly is saying Kelsey did not shoot Meg. So it's it's an entire. It, it would be a false equivalency at this point to give. I, I'm just speaking to the possession, the posi not 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 the firing of the firearm. I'm just speaking to the position. You hear me? Like, no, we can't stick to just the position. We got to stick to it all because that. No, I'm just saying. All right, but, but, but isn't one of the charges possession of a? Oh yes, possession of the gun, which, yeah, it's but and his defense isn't. Look, his team is not arguing that it's anybody else's gun. They not even fighting on behalf of that in the court. They not saying, "Hey, this gun was mixed or Kelsey." So we can also reasonably assume that he told them that this is his gun. And he probably also told his lawyers that he did this. So that's why they're not even fighting certain issues because they already know the truth. So their only job now is just to muddy up the situation to prohibit reasonable doubt beyond yeah. a reasonable doubt from being achieved. Yeah, because it was all like interesting to me because I'm like, damn, like if 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 the gun is, you know, not a hot gun in the sense of, you know, the serial number scratched off and stuff like that. And I can see what you're saying. Like, if if it's his gun, I feel like that'll be the first thing to trace. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like okay, the serial number is intact, so let's trace the gun and see whose gun is it. And that way, we can see okay, if it's if it's Tory's gun, we know um, we know he had possession of the gun. Or if it's Quan's gun. Or if it's Kelt, I feel like that was an important part that it probably was with Kelt the defense or Kelt the prostitute. I mean, prosecution. If um, you know, it it was came out. Oh, this is so and so's gun because that was kind of interesting to me because even the people um that saw the evidence pictures that was in there said the gun had the serial number um 
not scratched and stuff like that. So I'm like, damn, just trace the gun and see who the fuck gun it is. But like you say, like it probably was Tory's gun and in the, in the defense ain't want to say that because that wouldn't help the case. So, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. And uh, and, and let me ask you one question, Red Clark. Do you believe that two females would have been walking around with a hot gun, with an unregistered gun? Do you think that two, that, that a high powered, a high profile black woman who doesn't even have a reason to have a gun, honestly, in her possession, because unlike Tori, she's not in a string of litigations and don't have multiple people with a desire to whip her ass like all the men that Tori is on camera punching in the face and assaulting does like does it even you know just coming from a place of discernment does it even feel to you that it would make sense for Kelts <laughs> and Meg to have an unregistered gun and then ironically the olive the green gun is green is also Tori's favorite color like what does that feel it, like to you um um it 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 feels as if you know uh if Cause I don't, I, I don't know Meg to the, you know, a point of, but you know, I know her music and things like that. And she, you know, I can say, and maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, if you are more um, in depth with her music than me, but you know, I, she's, um you know, she talked like she liked that. She talked like she savage. She talked like she, yeah. So I, I, I don't, I don't know. Which she or which she not, you know, she's from Texas. T Texas and yes, who also talks uh, like that in their music. Tor like Tori does too as well, but but you asked me about Meg. So um both women are from Texas, which is an open carry state, which is also now they just changed it to concealed to carry without a license there. So um and she's a it happened she, in California. Yeah, it did happen in no, Texas. No, 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 no. I'm just saying speaking from where she's from, you see what I'm saying? The mindset being that she's from where she's from. You see what I'm saying? Like, I know it yeah, She ain't problem. made these type of decisions throughout but, her. Like, Tori is the only one who, who has who has a pattern of sabotaging his career. But what like, I'm saying he's not caught up in a bunch of criminality out here in these streets, unlike Tori is. My discernment would be like, I, I would feel like Kelsey would have a gun more than Meg would have a oh. gun. Not saying either of them had or has a gun for my my inference my discernment i feel like meg wouldn't have a gun no kelsey maybe yeah why you said why because mm -hmm. she, because she's her she's her assistant she's her like like the assistant not a security guard no but meg is the money maker right so if my friend is the money maker and i'm the assistant i would be more likely to have a firearm than her especially if we we don't have security with us right now so such as ej testified when we move without security sometimes we do take matters into our own hands of how how but he clarified exactly what matters what, taser and, and, and so forth not but, gun. but i'm just speaking on what you asked me uh -huh. and 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 my answer is meg would not have a gun. I feel like Kelsey would. Just, just, well, just would but I'm not speaking in this case. I'm not. I'm just hypothetically speaking, just in general. Mm -hmm. I but some like of the questions are valid though, because Meg was the one who was initially invited to the party, not Tori. And that mean Meg knew, but well, she didn't need security because Kylie already had her own security of six on standby. Because Corey Gamble, who was also present, is in charge of Kylie's security detail. So security was already on deck and at the pool party. They wouldn't have needed a gun. It wasn't no need for them to bring a gun to... I mean, it, 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 it just wouldn't have been a need. Don't you find it more... Because I just want to make it... I just want to make it make sense. Don't you find it more plausible... More plausible that... A man who has multiple beefs out here from assaulting other men would be more likely to keep something on him just in case he run into any of those niggas that might be on their get feel, out here in these streets. I feel like any any nigga with some type of stat I, well honestly, 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 is 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 unpopular, but these days in 2022, going 2023, I feel like everybody should be adverse in some type of weapon. 
weaponry, especially firearms. I feel I'm I'm pro firearm. I'm concealed to carry. Um, I carry my gun everywhere. I carry my gun to um, um, family events. Not that, so, but you never know what'll happen. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel like he would be and more. Dare I ask? Is it a registered gun, a Red Clark? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's okay. registered to me. It's, I have a question. Is Corey Lane a felon? <laughs> I heard some along the lines. Not correct. Uh, is he a felon? I mean, I go, I googled it, and you know, you can trust Google these days. But it said, it said that he didn't. I mean, he wasn't, and it said he wasn't on probation because they dropped the charges. But I, I, I don't know mm. how. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, how true is that or not. You know? I, I have another question for you, Red Clark. Um, What's up? So, in the track, uh, a Queen and Slimmy, uh, by Tory Lanez, which addresses the events of that day. He has a verse that mm -hmm. says, I fumble, try to rumble, taking shots to make her stumble. Yeah, 1942. So, mm -hmm. so boom, 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 boom. All right. That 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 could and and, and this is just me, devil's mm -hmm. advocate, and as a as a as a as a um, you know, a person that's in the metaphors and things like that. What what else type of shots make you stumble if you take more, you know, enough. You know, alcohol. Like you take enough of alcohol shots, you will start stumbling. You know, so uh, because well, after that, after that line, he said nineteen forty, like nineteen. Well, I think before after that, because I know exactly what song you're talking about. Um, he said not like nineteen forty two, some, 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 and then that's when he goes into the line, or that came right after. So it'll. To me, I felt like he was talking about that, but I I don't I don't you know he that, could be talking about he he could be talking about shooting her too. But that's the same thing with the Drake lyric because remember the Drake lyric they were like oh no he meant ass shots and now you're saying oh no Tori meant alcohol shots. It's the same thing they were coming at her. Come on, facts. It wasn't no it's there's no rumbling in taking shots of liquor. Ain't no rumbling in that period. All right. <laughs> Red Clark is fighting for Tory, baby. Red no, like I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. I'm, like, if, if Tory is, if, if Tory mad at is it. guilty, he, he, he deserves whatever comes with him. Because I'm not with, you know, I've never hit a woman. I don't even like arguing with women. You know, I'll be like. He says I, that while he has a whole case out here with a uh, ex that came forward and said that she has been physically and emotionally abused by Tory as well. So that would be inconsistent with his statement. Maybe he thinks that his ex this, won't come forward. Maybe he thinks when he makes these blanketed statements that, you know, his people that have experience and won't necessarily speak out, and then they do. And then it's like, okay, well, now what about that statement, Tor? And I got a question. Um, Did May, did May have a boyfriend that said that she up, up the gun on him, broke his window? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you said that because... Um, another raggedy, worthless motherfucker in the comment section had brought up that Megan has a history of violence. Once again, I, th I think the extremity of the uh, language is very fascinating to me. Um, mm -hmm. That's not a history of violence. Megan had one isolated incident regarding a domestic dispute with a boyfriend that she said put hands on her first when police were called. Police saw her returning that energy, and yeah. then and then when asked about the situation, her boyfriend threw her under the bus and made her the villain in the situation. But let's say that Megan just was perpetuating violence upon her ex. That's the only incident that anybody mm -hmm. can recall of her. While you have now ten incidences, including all recent and up to date ones. Regarding the the violent pathology of Tory Lanez, yeah, like and, and like I say, if, if 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 Tory is found, and once again, hold on, and I want to add this part in there, a Red Clark. Um, you know, even though Kelsey had to fight for her life, and even though Tory is fighting for his, neither one of them are claiming self defense. So this whole narrative that megan was the aggressor it's not even something that's being asserted in the situation by the defense or by tory or by kelsey this narrative that meg 
that somebody needed to defend themselves from Meg or that Meg was the one perpetuating vice isn't even something that's in this case at all. So we can also rule that out as a thing as well. They literally are arguing only what is the context of Tory being behind his gun? The shooter or was he trying to stop the shooter? And, yeah, and like I said, like I'm, I'm, I'm more so, I'm more so, like I don't, like in, in like a lot, like, a lot of people uh, may be like, oh, you for a tour. I just, I just didn't. My biggest thing, I just didn't like how as soon as it happened, everybody turned their back on it without getting this far and knowing the facts this far. If you are against Tory at this point, it's, it's, it's valid because you know you have more evidence to go but the people that just oh she's a woman i'm gonna believe her i'm not one of those people i'm sorry like, i i can't be one, one of those people but but um yeah like so i'm not copping please for Tori trying to make a excuse for him i'm just looking at all possible scenarios of mm -hmm. how it may have went went on with, and what with do you think about this a red clock like what do you think about tori calling Kelts from the jail. What do you think about him apologizing to the alleged shooter? What do you think about as a nigga? As a nigga, as a nigga, that um, like I feel like he was genuinely apologizing for like spilling the beans and because. Well, why would you apologize for that if the actions of somebody else put you in jail and now you facing deportation and you facing twenty two years and you facing charges for guns and and. And and you think you owe something to the person that actually pulled the trigger because he's not responsible for Kelsey pulling the trigger, even if he inserted something that made her angry. It's still Kelsey's responsibility to handle her temper and her ego appropriately. But it just it seems very Twilight Zone for Tori to prioritize that. And he's actually the one now. That, that that's in the lava of it not not kelsey so for him to be calling from jail under the guise of being so sympathetic toward upsetting her when what when her actions directly put his ass behind bars and now mm -hmm. got his ass facing all these charges that could destroy his career that could deport him out of this country that i ain't never seen a nigga that empathetic it's just yeah. it's just yeah. ain't men ain't I bet ain't I don't all know. That. I don't know how. I don't know how good the. I don't know how good the box was for him to be like that. Because if it was me, I'm like, hey, baby, look, like, we ain't even from the top. Oh, he fighting. He fighting for Tori. <laughs> like, like, he fighting for Tori. People got that magical box for some. For you know him to you know. Red Clark, and hey, would you do that for a friend? Like if 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 me and you was with another friend, and you told me, hey, that nigga been talking behind your back. And then I pulled out a gun and shot that nigga. Would you be calling me? But then you get charged with the weapon and possibly for the shooting. Would you be calling me from the jail, being like, "Yo, I'm sorry, I should have never told you." Like, would you like? Would you be calling me sympathizing with 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 what you inserted that I used to justify perpetuating violence on somebody else? And I'm your best friend. Me and you, best friends. Would you be calling me? And you're the one going down for this. Nah, like only way I'm calling you is if, hey, hey, bro, like I'm in here. What well, if it's my homie? And hey, bro, you you either finna tell these people what you did, what happened, or I'm ha hey, if I sit in here a few more hours, hey, son, I'm gonna have to, hey, I'm gonna have to do what I gotta do, son, like, uh, yeah, like. Like shit. But so I, why are we giving Tory this benefit of a doubt when Tory is a known abuser? He he like has there are like several eight pieces of footage of him abusing other human beings. So why would we believe that he's capable of such empathy now? Why would we believe that he he has such a heart that's just so big and his conscious and his empathy and he's just his heart chakra is is it's just so stimulated and he's just so concerned about these women and the predicament that he put them in when if he really cared why would he have been having sex with the both of them to begin with that would have been the very first way to protect these black women is to not do anything that would have led to a breakdown in their relationship so if he was thinking about himself from the very beginning why would he not be thinking about himself right now i mean he's only done 
it, it seems he's only done that consistently. Yeah, like, like, uh, a mind, and, and this is me trying to be empathetic, a mindset of them, like, I feel like all this happened because of me. If I would have kept my mouth shut or kept my dick in my pants, it, it, it wouldn't have went this far. Um, and, and, and I feel like he, he was thought he, he, was so called, he called her to get her to ask for like to get him out. He's he now like, sorry, Aran Clark, over something he was so proud to insert. Yeah, yeah, like that's something he was so proud to say. I said, oh, wow. he was wrong for that. He was wrong for it. After that drink feeling this stuff, he was wrong for that. And 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 I'll be quick to say it, like that, 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 like if 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 Tori was here right now and I was talking to him like that's some pussy ass shit. But you know, exposing that even if you is doing that. In that moment, not like that, bro. Like, if you're going to come out with it, you know, come out with it one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, in, like in a different type it's of way. Just, right. It, it's just not, the math ain't math then, because not only, because if your argument is is what we're going to go for, it, like, Tory not, oh, okay, so he gets to say now after the fact, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but never says why he's sorry, right? But mm -hmm. he was so proud to tell Kelsey, hey, your homegirl smashing me. And he was so eager to do the smashing. But then on top of that, he has such zero respect for either one of these women that despite this being their invite, he comes to the party to try to smash another woman before them while having a situation with Kelsey and having a situation with Megan. And then gets in the pool and admits and Queen and, and Salemi that Kylie was turning him on and he was with it. Yeah. And, but, and, now and, all of a, but now all of a sudden he cares about the women he disrespected to their face. Now all of a sudden he cares about the women that he asserted this truth in the car before. Now all of a sudden he cared like it, it, it ain't giving care, bro. It ain't giving love. It ain't giving I give a damn. It ain't giving I give a fuck. It ain't giving empathy. It ain't giving character. It ain't giving integrity. It ain't giving nothing. That makes me land to Tory Lanez being of sound moral character. This man disrespected both of the women that he had a situation with at a party that they were nice enough to even invite him to. He came there to disrespect them. That's how that's the level of respect he don't have for Meg or for Kelsey. And 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 on some on some on some real nigga shit, bro. I feel like they probably was all on some weird old freaked out shit. You know, that's what it's giving to me. The way they acting, I feel like they all was in probably on some other shit, bro. Like like cause the whole situation, and also we have to consider, man. These are all single people. Meg was probably doing her thing. They all probably doing their thing, bro. And and it's just a situation that got out of hand, and like I can, I can put accountability on Tory, bro. You shouldn't have, you you. This this lesson for all men right now, like and me as a Tory fan, I'm learning from the situation and dealing with women. Mm. Be be honest up front when you're dealing with women. Be 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 considerate of other people's feelings. Even if you're not, you know, if it's just a sex thing, if we just fucking, then, you know, keep it at that. You know, keep it real like that. Versus if it's, you know, I feel like he should have kept it real. All this, this whole thing was built off of lies. That's why it's ending on lies. It, the, 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 the initial energy signature that was, it, it was manifested upon was, like, it's like a cotton foundation. The foundation wasn't even strong. So that that's why... Right now, it's ending like that. You see what I'm saying? So this is a lesson for everybody involved. Watch who you around and watch who you involve yourself with and your energy too. Because you can end up being like a Meg or end up being like a Tora, even end up being like a Kelsey. Or you can be like a Quan, just being there witnessing this bullshit. So be exactly. I'm going to add to that, man. Tori lucky that one of them girls didn't spaz out and shoot his ass. Yeah, like for you know, for for moving Aki how he was moving, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so it, it's a lesson for me. Hey, bro, don't deal with women from here. Now, this plan, <laughs> but because um. <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, Red Clark, and to the other straight men on the panel too. I think we have a Dirty South here, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh you. So 
have either one of you as men, have either one of y'all been in this position? Have y'all smashed two cousins, two sisters, two friends? Did y'all smash women who had relationship to each other behind the other's back? Have y'all had side chicks and all that before? Um, uh, oh, you go ahead, Rick. Um, me, like... <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, but like it was, it was, it was. I'm gonna give context though. It uh -huh. wasn't like they were friends at the time. Like you know how women be friends for a little bit, then they don't be friends no more. It it was like she's not her friend anymore. Like oh, I don't fuck with that bitch no more. Or I don't, so it was friend. like more okay. so like that uh -huh. versus uh -huh. oh, that's her cousin. Oh yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna because I know it it, it get messy, bro. It get messy like. Like start talking about, oh yeah, I'm fucking with this new nigga, boom, boom, boom. Oh girl, what he look like? And then they showing a picture. Damn, bitch, I'm fucking with him too. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, nah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm nah. I, would I you ever, would you ever <laughs> take the opportunity to smash two friends if both of them were your type? What, like, would I do that if mm -hmm. both of them were my type? Mm -hmm. You would. Nah, nah, I can't. I couldn't do it, especially after this. Like, nah, I couldn't do it because the the the, the ramification is like a risk and reward thing. The risk, the risk is bigger. I mean, the the yeah, like the risk outweighs the reward. You see what I'm saying? Like the risk of you see what I'm saying? Like the like the risk of having them both find out and being a hodgepodge of fuckery is 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 bigger than just the satisfaction of me having sex with either one of them. You see what I'm saying? I just have to pick pick one of them, man. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, whichever one, whichever one, man. Just, but I go, wait, whichever one of them fuck with me the most, that's who I'm gonna fuck with. <laughs> okay. That's a Red Clark, uh, that's a Red Clark game, okay? A dirty yeah, foul. Like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you ever been in a situation like that? Uh-huh. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Yeah, back in college, man. Um, I was I was smashing this one chick. Um, they was both from El Paso, but uh, <laughs> I ended up smashing her friend uh, a couple of months later. But I didn't know that they were friends. Like like Red said, you know, it depends on that okay. situation. I but didn't that know the that situation. Have you been in a situation with two women who you knew knew each other? Uh, Yes, but yes, but the second one I didn't smash her though. So what did you do? It was an emotional. Yeah, it was a a peck like a peck on it the was lips. Intimate. Yeah, no, nah, it wasn't intimate at all. It was a peck on the lips. I kicked her ass out my uh, apartment after she helped me wash my clothes, and then she called her homegirl to come pick her up. And then I saw a homegirl pull up in the car and was like, oh, shit, let me turn around. <laughs> and then she went right back to the homegirl, told them that we was talking like we was an actual fucking item, which we weren't. Wait, wow. you, wait, you said, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. You kicked out of y'all kids, man. Her breath must have sang or something. Man. No, nah, you, <laughs> you just get that one chick that just talked too much about nothing. And it's just like, oh, I'm trying to Oh, so are you saying uh, that the kiss was unwanted? <laughs> Uh, I didn't really want to kiss her because the only reason she was there was because my homeboys told me how, how you know good her top game was. Oh wait, oh, so you did have intention? I knew it was crazy. You did have the intention. I knew. I'm not gonna lie. I knew. I knew the, the story kind of sounded crazy because he wait, said the so, first one kiss it. But you just lied. Like y'all yeah. said, Megan lied. You just said, no. she lied. Told that we was an item. She told them like we talking, like I was being serious with her. But it was <laughs> <I> <laughs> under <laughs> between me and wow. wait, conscious, wait, conscious. I knew, I knew the story sounded crazy because he was like a peck on the lips, and then, and, and then you know, I kind of blanked and I came back. All of a sudden, I heard something about washing clothes, and then he kicked her out. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, damn, my guy. <laughs> smash though, so that was a, that was a whole different thing. We never smashed. Wow, wow. But but wow. now, wow. Just like wow. it gets too it gets too messy like that, man. Like it's a conflict of interest type thing, man. Like you know, like and especially after this, man. Hey, look, hey, I'm I'm searching Instagram. Like who you with? You know, I'm on your Facebook trying to see who you associated with, man. You ain't trying so, to let me ask you a question, Greg. You ever have a chick that you 
you basically told her like y'all y'all have an understanding that y'all not together y'all just fucking right yeah so you start smashing or whatever and then she go and get on twitter and start talking about yeah my boyfriend this my ex-boyfriend that and everything she's saying is about you yeah like like <laughs> i catch subs i catch subs like i work at subway Until I, I, I catch you them. But like with that, like I like I like if it's too early, a turn off for me. If it's too early, I just met a girl and she started calling me babe or babe and things like that. You know, I shut that down quick because you know you just met me. Like I'm, I'm not your babe or your babe unless you call every nigga this, or unless you're just trying to you know see how I'm gonna take that. If I keep letting you do it, oh, it's like I I kind of agree with you. See what I'm saying? It's like. I'm 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 kind of agreeing with what you you know where, where we going with this. You see what I'm saying? Because this kind of goes with the prejudice against Megan, um, with thinking that oh she's so crazy over Tori, oh she's so jealous over Kylie. They keep on saying oh uh, Megan's so jealous over Kylie. Even his lawyer was like she's jealous over Kylie when. Kylie wasn't even in the car. Oh so if you're saying that it led Presley, to that. Presley, okay. And I All know right, I'm um, <laughs> Amy, uh is going to jump in here too. But girl, I just, I look, I don't, because see, that's the easy narrative, right? Is that Mick was just, but that's such an easy interpretation of, of her attitude. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I you don't know, believe I that. Initially, I, 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 I initially said that I think she didn't want Tori to blow it on business. But the reason, yeah. but to add to that, I think Megan was protecting her social equity that was rooted in having a solid relationship to the Jenners. And she would have had even more reason to have an attitude with Tori coming there because at this point, not only is she aware that she's messy, she's aware that he's messy times three because it's already bad enough that me and you in a situation and then did something that could cause conflict in my relationship to Kelsey. But you're here also trying to sleep with Kylie. And I know for sure that situation is going to get messy. Because once again, Kylie's ex-boyfriend is Travis Scott, who he had an open beef with prior to the pool party. So, kept, so Kylie ass was being messy by even bringing and wanting Tori ass to be there because she knew that would piss him off. But if you're looking at this purely from Megan's standpoint, I would have caught an attitude too. I didn't bring you here to flirt with Cockazoid Poonani in the pool. You here, my good girlfriend just got over Carisha 19. She only been in LA for two weeks. Give her some good dick. Make her happy. Give her some masculine energy. I did not bring your ass here to be canoodling with your open enemies, baby mother. And then once again, I know you messy, messy, messy because me and you in a messy damn situation. Okay. Now you're trying to be even messier by doing the damn most. I would have got an attitude too. I would have made my decision. I didn't think this through. This is what's wrong with coming to Kylie's house getting drunk. And now I done made these messy ass decisions. I'm bringing this messy ass nigga into the situation. I should have known. This messy hoe ass, ass nigga. <laughs> and, now, and she knows it's going left now because she's seeing the teacher he's giving. But I don't believe her attitude was about remotely being jealous. I think it was, it was because she knew like this was going to fuck with her her, well, her white money, I agree. Two billion dollars on the elevator, and she and it ain't every day that every melanated person gets to get that Jenner or gets to get that Kardashian cosign. She knows how important this is for her career, and the situation just got messy and it got messy because if Tori would have got there in front of it, been all up in um Kelsey's face, this would have been fine. Yeah, that's, like, like, that's like, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, like, I agree. That was, because yeah. that was the whole plan. I'm going to invite Tori, let him give Kelsey some fucking energy. But he here giving Kylie the damn energy. And now I don't even want to deal with how Kelsey may feel because Kelsey's going to keep it cool until we get back home. Then I'm going to have to hear her damn out about all the shit Tori was doing in the pool with her and all of this and all of that. Da, 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 and then, God forbid, Tori fuck around and the shit with Kylie go left. This is going to be a reflection on my ass.
because he my plus one and all it is and you know everything is relationship built in the industry everything is about your relationship your relationships are probably more important than your actual goddamn talent is it's all about who you connected to it's all about who you can get that clout from who's willing to give you that clout so i don't think Megan was remotely pressed, and I'm gonna even give Me Kelsey. Either. I don't think that Kelsey was even angry at Meg for Tory. I think it was just about the principle. It could have been any nigga. It could have been. Too. I feel like anybody, and it wasn't I about do. Tory. It was about the dishonesty. Like me and you too close. We known each other since 2012, girl. We've been together every day since we met in college. Yeah, we, we better than that. And we done been through this before. How many conversations we done have to have about your level of integrity when it comes to men? Like, how many times I done forgave you on some slick shit? At this point, we too grown. At this point, we're making too much money. At two point, we got too much to lose. At this point, we should have outgrew this immature shit. And here it is, you still on your bullshit? Like, I think for Kelsey, it was literally just principle. It had nothing to do with it necessarily being... Tory. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I feel like it was principal with her because she like I don't I don't really give like I don't really at, at, at the situation, I don't really think she even gave a fuck about Tory. You know, like you say, it could have been any because nigga. she was texting her other nigga when they was fleeing the police. She uh Kelsey would have her options all the way open, honey. She told investigators. Yeah, so it wasn't about it wasn't nigga. about was him. Him on the open line, honey. Like Kelsey's a bad bitch, honey. She ain't like she she cool it. Mm. It was, exactly. it was, it was, it was, it was on principle. Why and that's then, why I hate everybody talking about, um, oh, like pushing the, keep on pushing the narrative of black women being, um, jealous of the Kardashians. That's all I was trying to say. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I feel like that's another ploy to divide or have people look like, no, nah, like, I don't like, I feel like, I don't think it was that either. I don't think it's like. Oh, the white it's the woman. narrative that black women are so insecure and black women are so inferior to other women and black women are so beneath all these other women. Like it caters to that whole. Yeah, like I don't, I'm not buying that ploy. While they I'm, don't realize that who they're telling black women they're jealous of are women that have had the culture vulture off of their aesthetics and their people and their men that, like, and Kylie getting, their creativity. Kylie's trying to get ass shots and shit. Jealousy will be in reverse. You know, she like she's trying to get fuller lips like the black woman. She's trying to, you know, she's trying to emulate the black woman. So, you know, that that that's just but it goes off of clout. I feel like Tori felt felt the same way Meg felt, but not in the sense of biz how Meg was looking at a business. Tori was just trying to get trying to oh shit, man, I fuck Kylie Cardat on some shit like that. And got out of his body too much, bro. That one player, he ain't keep it player, bro. If you're trying to fuck with Kylie, don't make it so overt that you fucking up, you know, what, what you're trying to do. You know, you already got two situations. Like, you really getting greedy right now at this moment, though. You see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, so so what I'm saying is I, I, I think it was principle with Kelsey. You know, like, fuck Tory. Meg, we man, we better than that. I've known you for twelve years, you know. And um, Tori, like, keep your dick in your pants, bro. Period. <laughs> keep keep your dick in your pants, bro. Like you all. And the Meg, stop sliding on, on your. And Meg, stop <laughs> sliding on your friends. Yeah, stop so, sliding on your girlfriends. If 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 <laughs> black women need protection, that has to be first and foremost a priority. Amongst black women to do protecting, like you, you got to make it real, Meg. Your responsibility is to honor that girl code. Your responsibility is to understand the predicament that black women in, and you know that because you a black woman yourself. You know what these niggas give. You know they don't give a fuck. You know they ruthless and trifling. You know that 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 you already this know. This nigga ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold yeah, on, like hold so, hold her, on, knowing that, her knowing that, her knowing niggas ain't shit. She should. You know, she should have kept it straight with her friend, you know. I would like to clear up something. Protect black women does not mean that every black woman should be kumbaya. Protect black women. To protect black women means if somebody is in danger or if somebody is being unjustly piled upon, well, then we need to protect them. That does not mean as a black woman that I need to like every single black woman I come across. That is unrealistic. I 
like I hate that people um do that and be like oh you don't like that black woman I thought it was protect black women that's not what that means it means protect them from violence it means protect them from being bullied it does not mean it it it, it, it it does not mean if this black woman does some fuck shit, I'm supposed to be like, oh, I I didn't see that. No, that's well, not I what say that, that about Megan. You want everybody to think that everything is kumbaya with Megan. I could say the same thing about Megan because I don't feel oh, that. Oh lord, way. here she come. Yeah, here we go. Protect black <laughs> women. Ha- protect black women really means destroy fucking patriarchy altogether, so that. First of all, everybody has a uh, even shot and is afforded the same dignity and rite of passage as the other without that having to be determined by ethnicity and or gender. Because you can't even protect because protecting black women has to be destroying the sexism. It has to be destroying the thing that allows there to be this disproportionate social equity that black men get to benefit from that black women don't get to benefit from. If you don't destroy that system, then ultimately you're going to just like the same people getting sick from the lack of power and resource are going to continue to just be sick until you cure up the actual fucking root. So I feel like what men need the first and foremost do is destroy the root of sexism that also is going to have to start where that sexism is legislatively, where that uh sexism is um economically where that sexism is where that misogyny is in all of these areas that impact uh the fundamental building blocks of all of our lives like education like job opportunity etc and you trickle that shit down to also addressing your own inherent sexism your own gender biases your own anti-blackness etc it's gonna take a massive, it's gonna take a massive matter of fact, Delhi D Beauty, you've been so classy and poised and sitting pretty here. Are you hopeful about the black community transcending the gender bias? Are you hopeful that <laughs> there will come a time where black women exist, if not in the white man's world, um safely and fairly, but that at least in the black community? that that space is created. So I actually have an unpopular opinion. Oh, I'm interested. It goes against what you were saying. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, <laughs> I'm listening. Um, because the Black American experience was birthed through the trauma of slavery, I don't believe that the Black American community was ever a patriarchy. I think that it was, from its inception, it was a matriarchy. Throughout the um, years of slavery, the men were emasculated to the point where um, they were like literally broken bucks, whereas the women, though they endured the same type of sexual and physical abuse and violence against themselves, they typically were the ones that would keep family together. They typically were the ones, um, we talk about other mothering a lot in um, Africana womanism where we discuss how you take in children that aren't your own and you raise them up just you know, as if you gave birth to them. Um, and I think because of the history of um, the Black American experience, it was always a woman-led community. But the problem is we're now in a Western world, we're in America, where patriarchy is supposed to rule. So unfortunately, Black men were not ever given, well, from my perspective, Black men were not given um, the proper tools or the proper space to grow as leaders because of the um, emasculation that they faced. Um, So now we have a matriarchy that's supposed to fit into a patriarchy where we have a lot of men that are not equipped to be leaders being told that they're supposed to lead. And we have women that were kind of taught to get it on their own and then they did so. And now it's like, okay, well now you're a strong black woman, you don't need me, so I'm not gonna protect you. And so I think the issue that we're facing now is that we have two different schools of thought trying to fit into a Western ideology that we were never supposed to fit into. I agree with you like 95% because like 
like like yeah we were taught to do that we were taught to protect black men we were taught to get it on our own and we do get it on our own and the only part that i semi disagree with you on is the part that black men weren't um is that black men are are, are basically handicapped to become men in this western society i they have all the tools to do so but they just choose not to I can I can see where you're coming from. I think that a lot of it has to do with the whole, um, I don't know if it's a, a fable or the idea that if you tie an elephant to a chair, it's going to think that it's stuck there because that's the way things look, whereas it doesn't realize it's a strong elephant and it could just go where it wants to. I think because of the severity of the emasculation during slavery, a lot of Black men felt like because they weren't the dominant male in society, the white male was dominant, that they could not be dominant in a society versus him. They had to be dominant against another woman, which ended up being a Black woman. And so I think that because they never felt the need to compete outside of their ethnical realm, um, they never really pursued leadership. And I'm, and this, of course, is a generalization because we do have like prominent Black male leaders from the past and present, but I think as a collective, we don't see it on a grand scale. And so we I wouldn't consider this community a patriarchy because it seems as though for the majority of time, our households are led by women. The children are reared by women. The workforce is filled with women. So from my perspective, it just seems like this is a matriarchy. I think exactly. the reason why, and, uh, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on for a second. Oh, Frankly, okay. I think that the reason why we consider it a patriarchy is because even considering like what you just laid out for us, that women ultimately were just made the slaves of the community, which, because you talk about the laboring that black woman has done, taking in the kids, cuddling the men, taking care of the man that is and, and essentially that became what was intergenerationally transferred in our community and why men don't protect women because on some level they've seen women be stronger than them and kind of rely on that strength and rest into that sh strength and then that turns into um disregarding women the same way that this white patriarchal structure does to women and i when we look at the fact that women have pretty much black women have been the empaths in the of the black community but it seems that black patriarchy weaponized that to their benefit the willingness to help the willingness to be submissive the willingness to um endure and when you look at because we were talking on this platform a few days ago about how, like, somebody was saying, I think, I don't know how it came up, but we were talking about, like, how women make up the majority of churchgoers. Black women make up the majority of churchgoers. Ironically, though, the majority of leadership in the Black church is by men, not by women. Mm -hmm. That patriarchy weaponized all those positions of leadership. So while Black people are also taking care of children, Black men oftentimes led the homes. Even if the Black woman made the money, even if she held the household together, he was given the social equity to actually make decisions, even if he wasn't qualified to make those damn decisions. And you still have Black women, unfortunately, like in these type of dynamics where even though they make more because of this perception of male privilege that has been kind of adhered to culturally in the Black community, you still have black women giving up power they don't have to or giving up space to have a voice or giving up um, the right to uh, assert themselves as the other part of the equation simply because black men have that social equity. And you really have a lot of women, a lot of black women even now really believing that they have to kind of dumb themselves down in the words of T.D. Jakes who told black women that y'all are becoming too much, y'all are becoming too 
to independent. Y'all are not leaving space and room for these men to have a place and a purpose. And y'all need to reduce yourselves and da 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 so that men can absolutely thrive, etc. That you need to become less. And that's very interesting to me. But okay, so matriarchy. I can I can see where I definitely believe that there's been a large matriarchal presence. And I agree that Black women have been the, I don't know how to explain it, but I agree with matriarchy. But I also agree with the patriarchy. So my question to you is, can both of those things exist? Can part of it be, because see, even in, because when you were talking, all I saw in my head was, Oh my goodness, it's a sh- what we're really describing is black women's willingness to contribute and black men um taking advantage of that willingness to contribute because when you look at all of the actual leadership and who that's extended to in the community, it always went to the men. The men were, were on the forefront. We know that there were just as many black female civil rights leaders, but largely we see black male civil rights leadership upheld. We know that for every black male civil rights leader, there was an even stronger black woman behind him. And yet our community had also did not resurrect those women and monuments of those women and did not you know, engrave those women into history and their contribution to the community for being a backbone to a black man who was willing to be on the forefront. Like we, we, we see women there, but we don't see the same credit and we don't see the same value for what black women have contributed. And the fact that they stood into place, we see that equity go toward the men over and over and over and over again, largely. And so how do we put that into perspective? Because what you said is true. Like, Black women have done it, but have not been necessarily rewarded for it or valued the same way that Black men are valued when Black men contribute to the betterment of the community because of that inherent sexism. They got rid of the mammies. Okay, before you get started, Miss Queen. <laughs> 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 What are your thoughts about what um what are your thoughts about what I just said and what Presley was also saying in response to that? Are you speaking to me? No, I'm speaking to D Beauty. <laughs> oh, okay. My response to what you said? Yes. Um to be honest, I just I just feel like it it was something that was matriarchal trying to be squeezed into a patriarchal role. So um you have these males that were raised by their mothers, their grandmothers, and when they got into the world, they're told, okay, um, why aren't you the head of your household? Why aren't you leading? Where's your um, example of a leader? Why can't you be that? And some of them don't, they don't have the tool. Well, I wouldn't say they don't have the tools, but they did not have the example. And if they did have the example, it wasn't an example that they could point to as that was the head of my household, my father. And I come from a two-parent household. My father was in the military. And um, I don't have that perspective. But just doing um, a lot of research in college, I learned a lot about the inception of African-American culture and how deeply rooted it is in trauma and how oftentimes the ones that would typically take care of everyone, though they were also dealing with their own trauma, were the Black mothers of the community. And so I feel like when we're in a society where they don't value a woman in the same way they value a man in a leadership role. Well, everything that we've been doing this far is not not going to work if we want to, you know, get proximity to whiteness. If we want to be successful in a Western world, so um, we have all these women that are used to taking care of things, running things. Their families are used to it. I think, you know, as silly as Medea is, it is a you know a relevant story of how the head of a household and the head of a family tree typically is the great grandmother or the great great grandmother and everyone goes to her when they need help everyone goes to her when they need a place to stay when they need advice 
We all have a lot of Medeas. We don't all have a lot of Papas, but we have a lot of Medeas that we go to because they're typically the head of our head of our family tree. And um, when we're here and we're supposed to be successful, it doesn't work that way. We're forced to accept less pay. We're forced to accept roles that are um, below our experience and things like that. So I think um, we're still being forced to assimilate. And for a lot of us, it's very difficult. And um, I think we're just going to keep seeing that struggle. And I don't wow. know that can be done about it. Yeah. So, again, I uh, agree with so you. 90%. Women have been, so women have actually been the patriarchs, but men have ultimately gotten the credit for it. Like, like that. Essentially. And, but then the fact that, but like, oh, hold on. So, okay, hold on, thought, Presley. I want to get the black men in here real quick. Red, What's Clark, up with and Dirty South. What do y'all think about what's being discussed about patriarchy, about even the matriarchy? Would you guys agree that the black community has been largely a matriarchy? Gonna go, um, Dirty South. I went first last time. All right, I bet I, I would say, um, a lot of us, uh, young black men in this country, we come from single parent households, mainly the mother being the one that raises us. Um, so, so I agree, you know, the women have been holding it down for the longest. Uh, my issue is, uh, with what we as black men have to sample as what a real man should be, uh, what's being pushed to us as what a real man should be is not something that we should be accepting to begin with. Um, we, we look up these, you know, rappers and these, these folks that are doing stupid shit that, you know, we, we, we look at that as that's, that's what we consider to be a real nigga. And we model ourselves after that. And that's not something that is helping the community to begin with. I, I, I'll leave it at yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. And coming in and, I was raised in a single parent household. So um, my mama, you know, my mama had three kids and yeah, like she's been the head of the household, you know, like I never really had like a dad to, or either my grandpa, you know, like I, I got him a deal, you know, type grandmother. And I never really had a, and a lot of black men in this, in our community don't have a legitimate role model to look up or look towards and every man has that yearning for that masculine energy so you're going to get it any type of way so that's why you see a lot of i feel like that's why we see a lot of young black men getting into gangs or getting to just to you know get exalt that energy you know and 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 when we look up and worship celebrities and things like this it's because out of ignorance like not knowing like damn like i never had my dad to look up to to be a man so now you're sifting to try to find what it is to be a man and 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 if you're not blessed with discernment you'll follow anything you know you stand for nothing you'll fall for anything uh samantha philip um that that's that goes against everything that i've been talking about um i'm not for the thugs when they do dumb shit that's why i'm so mad about people, black men specifically, capping for Tory Lanes. Um, I don't support that mess. I don't at all. Yeah, and like, I can't, me, me as a supporter of Tory Lanes, I don't agree with that. I, I wouldn't, I'm not so, like, lost in the world and lost behind it to be like, oh yeah, that was right. That's something I would do. No, that's not, that's not, like, that's an example of what not to do. You see what I'm saying? And it's a lot of black men that or that are heads over heels for Tory and Young Boy and things like that and think that's what you should do. You know, Young Boy had a quote that said, like, uh, I don't fight, you know, I'm a shoot, you know, I'm a shoot, boom, 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 boom. That's not manly to do, but it's a lot of people that fall for that. You see what I'm saying? Like a lot of young black men fall for that because that's all they know and and, and they don't have the you know, in our community, we don't really have, like, they don't exalt what's positive in our community. So if you don't have it in your immediate area, a role model to look up to, you're going to be grabbing for anything, you know, and, 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 and I do feel like 
the matriarchy in our community specifically has been a a a a, a main catalyst to the 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 forward movement of the black community. However, they don't get exalted or praised enough. And I think that's even systematically done. Right. And they do go out there, do something positive and go make a bag, you know, like Deion Sanders, they get vilified for doing so. Yeah. yeah. And like when 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 like how T D J would tell a woman, Oh, you're beginning to be too much, I don't agree with that. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I don't agree with that rhetoric because any anytime you have to water down who you like, instead of telling her to go around people or manifest people or be around people that's on her level, you'll tell her to dumb down. You see what I'm saying? I don't I don't really agree with that. You see what I'm saying? Because you're telling the black woman to be less than her full potential that what she can be just so she can. And I if, if I could just tack on to what you're saying, um, basically, I heard everything that you said, and um, I do agree with both of you. I agree. I'm not sure what you guys' name are, um, but the man who was just speaking and the beautiful woman who was just speaking earlier, I agree with um, with both of you guys. I think the thing that um, I'm not 100% agreeing with is that um, there's no accountability for the men. And if you look at who you guys are citing, and if you look at the names, you just said a young boy. And then um, with all of the, most of the black male rap artists, it's young boy, lil this, lil that, lil that. And then with the black uh, female rap artists, it's Barbie. It's dolls, and I think that that is a reflection of our community, that Black women are seen as Barbies and dolls. We're supposed to be perfect no matter what. We're Barbies. We're dolls. But the men in our community are seen as young boys and little babies that we need to take care of. And I think the issue is that... Um, that we're past that now. And I know that there's racism that still exists to this day, but I think that the men in our community are still resting on the young boy, little this, I'm gonna go to my crib, I'm a boy, because the Barbies and the dolls are supposed to take care of us. And uh, totally, Kelsey, I totally agree. What's up, y'all, this IG? Cause I was just about to say, I'm speaking from that experience um, of having the single father. And that's so true with what you're saying, just piggybacking, because when a male child sees his mother do, at like the only example of your food, shelter, clothing, taking care of your basic necessities is a woman or a female. Now to another, um, to another little girl, that could actually be somewhat empowering for her because she can see herself um, in that strength of saying, that's my mother, you know, me and her have that in common denominator. What it teaches for boys, however, that grow into men, <clears throat> that I should expect a female person of any kind of walk of life to take care of everything for me because I had to really learn that about myself. I said, when I started growing up and having female friends, it wasn't the expectation that a female should do something for me. Matter of fact, that would be so weird. Cause I asked some guys, I was like, isn't that weird that you think that a female is supposed to do everything for you? Like it's supposed to provide your basic necessities. Like, I don't know what that's like to look toward a female entity to provide my basic needs. And, 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 more idealistically, you would want it to have both parents so both genders of the children can see the example of being a family. But I think that goes kind of, and then it goes into, well, at the same time, you're going to over masculize and shame the mother for being there. And I'm going to just say this too a lot of these men do not have paternal instincts. You know, this might be anecdotal. My mama died when I was six, I was raised by my pa. My folks had me at 16 and 47, and I'm saying this to say this. When my mama died when I was six, 
I had older, older siblings that were in their 30s, you remember, that wanted to raise me, that wanted to take care of me, like really dead ass. And my father was like, no, because I don't want my child. Yes, I have the easy way out. I'm 66 years old. I'm a male widow. I got the easy way out. If I don't want to be responsible for my child, but that's a paternal thing. You can't, you have to want as, as, you, as a male, you have to have paternal instincts to want to be there for your children, even though it might be hard. And I think for a lot of people, because they might have had father figures or male figures, but they don't know what it is to have a paternal figure, someone who genuinely a male who has paternal instincts to their children. So because we talk about patriarchy, but we don't really deal with what patriarchy does to paternalism. And I'm going to just be quiet right quick and then finish enjoying this and see y'all. Thank you for that, IG. Um, (laughs) Any other man want to have a response to that? Yeah, well, I would just say, like, I agree with, um, well, it's interesting each perspective, you know, because we got the the, the young lady at the top, well, the top of my screen, you know, on the camera, she grew up with both parents. I grew up single mother. The guy that just got done talking spoke um, spoke to his his single father. So it's 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 interesting how each you know how everybody has a different perspective, and I just enjoy um you know li- listening to everybody's perspective. So that's all I had to say, really. <laughs> what did y'all? What happened? in... I, I grew up with a loving adult. Hold on, Miss Wayne. Oh, Sorry, but hold on. <laughs> Just one question. What happened in your life, Red Clark, and in your life, Dirty South, that uh made y'all uh y'all are different than a lot of the other men who uh come come up here. Y'all are more uh, inclined to listen. Y'all are more inclined to uh give credit where it's due and to affirm uh the experiences and the contributions of uh black women etc like is that is that self initiated like what 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 like how i would i would say i would say for me like i say i've been i've grown up around like women like mm. my mama my grandma my sister i got aunts even my uncle i have a um a uncle a uncle that's you know he's more like like feminine so i just i just grew up around you know and me being like a masculine man you can be too masculine so sometimes you have to tap into your feminine there's like a balance oh can you hear me red clock i think your phone went out i think your audio went out if you can oh. hear me conscious i'm hold off a minute Okay. Uh, uh, let me try to get this audio together. Can, did you do it? can you hear me? Yeah, it's back. Yeah, like, did you not hear nothing? What, like, what no, not I heard the part all the way up to um, you were raised. You had, you had a feminine uncle. You were raised. Oh yeah, so woman. like just being mm-hmm. just just being around it, I I understand you know the the importance of the feminine energy. You see mm. what I'm saying? Like 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 being a, being such a masculine man that could be taken too far. So it's important to find the balance of the masculine and the feminine, honing in on being more understanding, more nurturing, more, you. and, and, and I, I thank God every day for me having the, the, the curiosity or the, oh. the yearning to learn about, because like I say, I've never had a, you know, like a constant father figure or, or parental masculine figure around, but I know them, I, I've learned the importance of it. So I have to outsource that from different places. And, and when you do that, you have to be, have some type of discernment because you could be latching on or listening to people like, you know, be indulging too deeply in things that you shouldn't because you just yearn for that masculine energy. So I just pray for this ermine and pray, and pray for, you know, having a wherewithal of, okay, where I stand in this society as a black man 
as a light skinned black man and the division, seeing the division, you know, seeing the division of the black man, the black woman, it's it's uh oh. it's uh it's it's deep, and I don't want to add more to the um you know add oh. more suffering. So the least I can do is just take take from it. So if that if that means that I have to listen more, or that means I have to e exalt women more on you know. On certain things, I'm gonna have to do that and put my pride, my ego to, to like to the side because the 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 man and the woman are one. You see what I'm saying? Like you can't have a man without a woman, you can't have a woman without the man. So why the hell are we you know so divided? So that's where mine comes from, just just growing up around women and, and knowing the importance of women and 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 just you know appreciating it. But you discovered something very powerful that even other cis hetero men who have been raised by very um, admirable and honorable black women, which is that you understood that it wasn't just important or you didn't just see like those qualities external to yourself. You also realized that it was important for you to align yourself with um, the divine femininity within yourself and i think that that's something that a lot of men miss can you speak more to the fear that i do believe that a lot of cis hetero men hold either on a conscious or unconscious level about the fear of um the fear of vulnerability the fear of compassion the fear of empathy and this being connected to homosexuality, this being connected to incompetence as a male, this being connected to, uh, you know, some of these other things that fear cis hetero, that kind yeah. of maybe, you know, contribute to cis hetero men moving away from those qualities in themselves. Yeah, like I feel like that, like, like it's a fear of being, I feel like it, it boils down to the fear of being weak. Like you don't want to be. Like as a man, you don't want to be viewed as weak. Like vulnerability, like it, it is also the perception of it. Changing your perception in relationship with certain words and certain things that you learn will help a lot. Like just understanding vulnerability doesn't mean weak. It's more power with with being vulnerable than not being vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? Like there's a certain power within that because when you're vulnerable, you're open. You're 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 being more truthful and authentic, not only to others, but to yourself. And a person will have more respect because a guy may think, damn, man, I'm being too vulnerable, too honest. I'll probably be viewed as too weak, but not knowing that, that, that that's the opposite. Like you'll be viewed as more stronger if you're more vulnerable. Like, like one of the top artists is, is Drake. And people say, why? because his music is vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? Like he's vulnerable in his music. And and I just use that as an example because that's just a, a cultural example, but it boils down deep into not the fear of being viewed as weak, like knowing yourself, know, like know thyself, know that just because you're being vulnerable, that doesn't mean that you're weak. You know, if, if you're weak, you're weak. Like that, Like that's just who you are. But if you know that's not, you know, if you don't, you see what I'm saying? Like, don't, uh -huh. don't view it as being weak if you listen to a woman or if you exalt a woman or in, 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 especially these days, like niggas think if you, it, it's fucked up to care about a woman. Like if I'm dealing with a woman and I like her, I send her flowers. Oh no, nah, that's simple. No, nah, like I just wanted to, you know, I'm fucking with you. You see what I'm saying? So I just want you to know I'm fucking with you. You see what I'm saying? So, but is viewed as being weak. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of guys need to get out of that mindset and and, and and not only men shunning other men for being weak, women shunning men for being weak or vulnerable. You know, like women will be like, oh, I want a guy that can be open with me. But as soon as you be open with her, she looking at you different. Like, damn, man, this nigga crying in front of me. And I'm not telling no nigga to cry in front of a woman. I never cry in front of a woman, bro. But, but, <laughs> I'm just saying, just be more open with how you feel and be with yourself. But if you don't know yourself, how can you 
communicate with somebody else about right. yourself. You see what I'm saying? Like, like you. So you have to know yourself before you start trying to, you know. So, but a lot of men, black men, don't know themselves. So that sense of no identity fucks us up a lot. You see what I'm saying? So it's down <laughs> to, it's down to that. You see what I'm saying? Like it's down, it's down to that for a lot of help. A lot of heterosexual men, one being viewed as weak, two not knowing themselves, and three, um, not not having the empathy to, you know, not having empathy, the lack of empathy, the lack of consideration. <laughs> so like that, like that's what I feel like a struggle for the black man of knowing the balance, like trying to find that balance of. What's too much? What's too less? Should I give more? And then and, when you get to that point, a lot like like a lot of niggas just don't do shit. And can I ask just, you a quick question? And can I say something real quick? Did 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 anybody catch the subtle cat's meow of Delhi when she put when she combed her hair <laughs> softly <laughs> with her hands? As she looked at this, uh, oh damn! Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I don't even look at the screen. I don't even look at the screen. Look at the screen. That was. Oh, I was going to ask you, Red Clark. I don't think you knew that I was auctioning you off. No, nah, like I wouldn't even look at that. I was just talking, like my fault. <laughs> <laughs> now she said me out. I heard it. Yeah, uh, I, I like cats. Like cats, my exactly. favorite animal. By the way. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Before we proceed further, uh, 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 are you an eligible bachelor or are you taken? Oh, no, nah, I'm single. Oh, oh, so auctioning. Yeah, I'm single. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm actually a single in these streets. Okay. I know uh, a Presley had wanted to contribute. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, wanted to ask a, I wanted to ask a quick question uh, because... Up? In America and with all other races and ethnicities, the man is seen to be the lead. Um, so I believe that in the black community that men are like, I know that uh, misogyny exists across all races and ethnicities, but it seems to be super violent with us. And I wanted to ask, is that because you guys see us as competition simply because um, in our community, women are usually the lead and you're taught that men are supposed to be the lead. So when you see women as the lead, you want to compete with them and you want to bring them down. Is that something um, that is in your psyche? Um, yeah, like, I mean, like, I, I personally don't view the woman as a, you know, adversary, but I know a lot of men that, that do, because it's like, damn, like, cause example, I was listening to um something and a woman said, she don't, you know, she like, she's not a big fan of like the trips, but she'll, you know, she'll go on trips. She can take her man on a trip, but a man will be, you know, a man would feel less as a man if if she does that and i don't agree with that because if you're a man you're a man it doesn't even have to be like if you're a man you know that you're a man you don't have to compete with a woman because you know it goes all back to knowing thyself like like men that think like oh well this this this, this black woman is my my op she's my op i mean like you I feel like you don't have, you know, like other, other, either you're going to look at her as, 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 as a catalyst to your growth or, or an asset to your growth, not a hindrance of your growth. And I feel like people shouldn't look at, people shouldn't look at nobody like that. Like, like nobody should be a hindrance of your growth, especially like a person of your same um, race and a person that you should be working with. You see what I'm saying? Like we're more stronger mm -hmm. together than apart. Do you believe that most men who are abusive, not all black men, but 
most black men who are abusive, do you think that that stems from the fact that they feel like they should be the lead and the women have always been the lead mm-hmm. and are the lead? And if a woman is basically outpacing them, out successing them, that's the reason why they kind of come down on us so hard. Yeah, like I, I can I can I can I can see that also too and 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 also um like how the black man has been, you know, exploited by the white man. It, it, it's kind of like really. how it, it's kind of like how if you got a, 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 a like a younger sibling and you get bullied at school, you're not going to attack the bully, but when you get home, you probably be mean to your sister. I mean, I can I, I can attest to this. Because I was bullied in school, and at the time, fuck bullies. Fuck bullies. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I, I wasn't. Hold on, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on for a minute, a record. Miss Monica, we. What's up, Monica? We. <laughs> I I I need you to adjust because we're having a. We have gotten somewhere in this male and female thing, and we have men who are willing to listen, and we have. Black women feeling good, and we need now the we need a we need a we need an uphill conversation, not mm-hmm. a downhill conversation. We need a uphill conversation, and we need we we need a supportive conversation, Miss Monica. So I I want you to challenge yourself to not use this moment to pile on and to. Send the conversation to the left because we spend so much time on this panel to the left of the conversation. We need now, we need a right, a right directional exchange. We need to get into where it needs to go. And these black men are here, are sitting here talking about being connected to their divine feminine, uh, femininity and showing respect and knowing themselves and overcoming trauma and overcoming social conditioning <laughs> and being true to the authentic self. And this is really refreshing. And when it comes to the ignorant buffoons who hit the link, I definitely want you to come and be the demolition, Monica. But <laughs> this is not this isn't the demolition. Okay. This is the building. This is the <laughs> we get to expound. We got to expound upon this. Okay, we got to build upon this foundation. Okay, so this Monica, I want you to just breathe. The angry Meditate. black. Woman. I want you to realize that you, also, that you also are in a safe space, and we get to entertain that uh, we have a dream uh, <laughs> philosophy. Okay, we get to entertain the new world here. Okay, what does the new world? <laughs> Talk. needs to look like what needs to happen in the psyches of black males, black females, black <laughs> women, black men, and what do we need to do to produce more growth and progress as a community? What needs to happen on a spiritual level, psychological level, etc. Okay, so because see, uh, I don't know how long you read and you, um, dirty south have been to the platform, honey, but uh. Miss Monica is, uh, you know, she's our ace in the hole. Okay, what she she, said? I didn't even see what she said. What she say? No, it was it was about what I know she's about to say. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, hey, my father, Monica. I'm sorry, I just be talking. I'm sorry, you know. No, hey, Miss Monica, Monica is good, but Miss Monica <laughs> comes from a certain experience as a black trans woman, and she has been through a lot, like you know, a lot of black women in the community and certain her intersection as a black trans woman um, has allowed her to see a lot of the shadow and dark side of our community. And Ms. Monica also is working through a lot of her own trauma. We've had to address her anti-blackness as well and her colorism as well. And you know it's a lot going on with Miss Monica. She's in her healing process, but she's, she's been through a lot. Black woman. But she's been through. Excuse me, Miss Barbara. She has been through uh, a lot with cis black men, as a lot of black queer people have, a, 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 especially a lot of black queer men and a lot of uh, black trans women have been through a lot when it comes to black cis hetero men. So. 
I just want to prep Monica and help to give her some some context for what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna bring Miss Monica up and hope that she has meditated and set her candles and her aromatherapy and that she is feeling good, honey. Hey, Miss Monica. Miss Monica, you there? I think you're on mute, but can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I'm Ms. Sorry. I was just, I was just, I was just so happy to be out. Let me tell you what happened. I got kicked up. I went on Nosy Ho's live with her aunt bite looking at you. She kicked me off. No, not Nosy Ho. She kicked you off. Why? I wasn't even saying nothing. And it was like <laughs> in the chat. She's a creep. They said it, that, that bitch bipolar like me. She crazy as hell. She'll flip in a minute. She just oh like me. Miss so. Monica, before you get into it, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I actually believe um, that people try to uh, mistreat people who they feel are under them in the social hierarchy. And so while I believe that Black men are being held down and that's why they push down Black women, I also believe that there's a lot of, not all of us, uh, but there's a lot of Black women who treat, uh, who treat gay men and trans women the same way that Black men treat it is. Black women. And those and, Black women make me want to, they, they make me want to slap the hell out of them. As much as I yeah. cake for Black women, those type of Black women, I cannot stand. Those type That's of black what women, I was trying I call to say, yeah. Black bitches, and I want to take some and knock them across their head. Like, That's what I, I mean, 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 There's really a lot of black women who do that. But I yeah. some told me not to get on there. Because I know how bipolar her, her dumb ass okay, is. So let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question, Miss Monica. Um, How long have you been listening to this conversation here? I've been listening to it for a few days. No, like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm saying today, Um, how long have you been, like, um in the chat before you had got up here? Uh, just like 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay, cool. Okay, so how do you feel about some of the things that you were hearing from a Red Clark and Dirty South about, you know... Well, how, first of all, it's Red uh, Clark that's obvious in the thumbnail. You know what I'm about to say. Is it Red Clark Red? Yes, you are about to fetishize him. Yes, No, I'm not. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> He's a... What's up? Hold on. It's, uh, yes, he is light-skinned and green-eyed. <laughs> Girl, so tight. Yes, you want to suck his toes and all. Yes, yes, Monica. We <laughs> not Monica over the meow. Oh, too. People still hate mine. No, 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 no. I, that, it wouldn't even, even about that. I mean, I was just looking in the thumbnail, but mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm about to say. I mean, him <laughs> being like, I don't mean to change the subject, conscious. You know, I'd be trying to stay on topic, but mm -hmm. you know, him being, you know, as a shade he is, you know, I reckon that he. He he's I think he's being conditioned to do this from black folks because I, I don't know this man. But you know, I'm assuming that they probably oh. made him feel like he had to defend them or something like that. Do you think that he's being put so that he's being pressured to be protective? Yes, because they despise yeah, him for being Hold on, where'd he go? He left. Let me drop the link because he's been having some connection issues for a minute. Let me drop the link. Oh, yeah, wow. like, but I feel like a lot of black men gave him some, probably gave him some problems, and he feels like he has to be pro. Like they condition most mixed folks to do. They condition mixed people to think they have to be pro black because they've been pressured by these black people. I'm gonna try to stop. I'm gonna try to be positive. Okay. About this. So I'm, I'm gonna let try not to cuss. Okay. I'm so I'm gonna let the part actually kind of speak to that. So do you it kind of, it kind of. It, it mm -hmm. kind of had clicked me off, so like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really hear. Which okay, was, so Ms. Monica says that she feels like you might have been pressured to be uh by the black community to be, you know, protective of, you know, of the community of because they gave you a hard time because of your complexion. Have you oh, ever had a oh, oh, with black oh, hands? okay, mm -hmm. okay, 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 okay. So. Um, Oh, like because you're light skinned and you got green eyes. You do you do you think they gave you a problem because of that? And you being and they made you that, feel like you had to pressure you had to protect they protect them or something. I'm it, just asking it, it, I, I see why you asked that and like I can say the black community as a light skinned man with <laughs> with green eyes that change they I have I was speaking to that earlier, like 
I was bullied growing up, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Know, that's I, what I, that's what that's that's what I'm saying. I, I was bullied growing up, and and I saw a lot of colorism as well, colorism from black people, and I've experienced racism from from white people. So you so, really get it worse than dark skin. You really get it worse. Yeah, I don't. I I'm see, not girl. Don't, I, I, don't I, I, ever I wouldn't say, say I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's the worst than a dark skinned person. Don't ever uh, say that. Like skin skin brand us. I would yeah. I wouldn't say no, I'm wouldn't not say, talking about dark light skinned women. I'm talking about light skinned men. And I would say I I I can't speak that I get it worse, but I know I definitely got it. <laughs> I got you get it. it worse than dark skinned men. Skin. Dark skinned women get thrown under the bus all the time. You know, because, you because I've skin. I've I've always I've always been like just, just just like just because I'm a light skinned man that takes pride in you know taking care of themselves, I've always been like like says a girl that I'm not light really, skinned like, women ain't the victim of color. I ain't really oh, feeling the girl. Oh, 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 oh. I'm automatically called gay or something like that. I'm not uh, like by, see that's the that's the colorist shit I be talking about. I like, don't mean just to make because this I'm a light skinned man that again. you know. I like to go to Ling Ling and get my, you know, get my shit look cut, you know, cut off. And you got to embrace that. Don't let these black people make you feel bad oh, about who God. you are. You should love your skin color. Do not let them pressure you into he, being like them. He, he's not struggling okay. with any pressure. One moment, or ma'am. Any, uh, no, ma'am. But I wouldn't say I'm, pre- I, I wouldn't sister? say I'm pressured though. I wouldn't say I'm pressured though. But, I like dark skin women definitely pressure. suffer from colorism. Dark skin women get dragged through the mud all the time. Just ma'am. not dark my, skin men. That's all I'm saying. Man, I'm not trying me, to be funny. I ain't even trying to be mean. I'm just saying. Yeah. Me and my sister have the same parents. I'm I'm different than her. She is uh basically she's like uh mix is not black. Great value Megan the stallion, and that's not to down my sister. But come on now. Let's not get up black. here. Say we all black the mix. Mix, you mix. do judge people by their looks. You said I was ugly. That's why I had I opinions. And I, I this was my picture. Miss Barbara, I never so Miss Barbara, I never said you were ugly. <laughs> I'm ugly. Miss Barbara, <laughs> not I'm ugly. Not Barbara. ugly, Miss Barbara. That's not not ugly, huh? <laughs> Um, Please, Clark verified what you were saying. Miss, Clark verified what you were saying. He was bullied because he was fine and handsome. He no, was he, he was light skinned. He got his bullied by his Miss Barbara, I never. Miss Barbara, I never. Miss Barbara, I never said you were ugly. I'm not gonna say niggas. I'm gonna try. Miss Barbara, he got. I never said you were ugly. All I said Mayo. is that you were you so I was ugly. Anti- that's why I had that opinion. I'm ugly. Uh, and that's Ms. not Barbara, me. I'm ugly. I never Barbara. said you were you ugly. Make- All I said is that it's sad that you say that that profile picture is you when it's not you. Listen and I to said this, that you should this be proud of yourself. That's what I'm saying. You judge people by your looks. That's no, why they dark skin with my no, I don't. And I look so damn good, you don't even believe I, I it. All delusional. I said, <laughs> all I said was that. <laughs> All I said was that you shouldn't you go around telling people, people that Barbara, that your profile her. picture uh, is you when it's not. Uh, that is all I said. It's not my picture. <laughs> okay. Robert, don't start. We were having. We were. I, I was trying said. to ask this man a legit no, question. No, no, we gotta to let the dogs out. But no, man. like to answer your question, Monica. Like, no. Nah, like, Just because I'm light skinned don't mean I'm a dog. You stupid. Okay. You anyway. think you you think you look better than dark skinned women? That's your mentality. No, I do. What? Dark Dark skinned men think they look yes, better than light skinned men. You got, got that mentality, Presley. All I said, because I'm black and ugly. That's no, why I, I, I never said that. <laughs> All I said is that it's sad <laughs> that you're telling people that your profile picture is you when it's not you. And that's sad and that you should that you be proud of the way, way that you look. Woman. That's sad that oh you feel that way about a black woman. This is me all day, baby. And that is Miss Monica. Uh, uh, and that is uh, Miss Barbara. I have seen a uh, Miss Barbara in the flesh. Thank you, sweetheart. Miss Barbara. Okay. I might not be your type, honey. <laughs> well, that's I'm a black in, that in that picture. I'm black. That's in her in that picture. But I'm black and I'm, ugly. I'm surprised that y'all are judging. That, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm surprised that y'all are judging Miss Monica for being a catfish in her picture when she's largely covered up by a mask 
And um, I ain't no cat. That. Bitch, that's no, me and my I'm, picture. I'm not. No, I'm not. 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 You it, said it, it, you she, like she's making it, it come black off. and ugly. That's no, why I that's not opinion. what I said. You light skin, you black and ugly. No, no like, you literally. Can I? Can I? Can no, I, you I'm literally called yourself. Yo. You literally called yourself light skin. You literally said oh, that black, I'm. Oh, I could do that. You know, I'm. I'm ugly. Can we black finish that ugly. conversation? Not yeah. What what's I up? Said. What are we talking? Like, what, like, what's up with you, bro? She's literally taking my words and twisting it, and I don't. We weren't like even that. talking about that. Like I was, we was talking okay. about this man' experiences with black folks. Didn't yeah, you? Like, I understand that, but I don't like time. her trying to make me something that I'm not. That's all I'm saying. Okay, it's okay. Like she's gone this, around okay. saying that she's this, <laughs> she's that, she's that, and that's what I was speaking <sighs> to. That's all. All right, bye. Okay, okay, okay. Did black niggas give you a hard time, sir? Ooh. That's all I got to ask. Did they give you a hard time? I'm not trying to be mean. Yo. I ain't Yo. trying to be funny. Okay, so I have a follow up question to Miss Monica. So I I have a follow up question. So he just says yes, he was given a a hard time. And that's that's Monica. Allow me to go. Uh, allow me to God so we can get the clarity. So how, so can you describe some of that experience, Red Clark, and then tell me how you how did you heal that experience? Like what perspective did you give to the treatment you experienced? So take your uh, channel. What I would that say treatment like, was, what that treatment was, and then how you overcame that treatment. All right. I would say like being like being accused for being like like you know like a young boy just because I'm how I am. Oh, and and this, this is a tactic. Oh, you gay. Oh, you gay. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Oh, you oh. you white. You white. Like you know, boom, boom, boom. I ain't black enough. Like shit like that. And it's like. You know, to the point that I didn't really, I didn't really talk a lot growing up because I didn't want to garner more attention than I already got. You see what I'm saying? I would hate to be in the line at the grocery store, and you know how your mom will forget something. She'd be like, "Go get this," and I'll go back People and get it and walk back in line. <laughs> People thinking I'm breaking the line because I'm different from my parents, and that they're not saying it, but they're looking at me like. What the fuck is why a boy doing you you breaking the line and they're not saying it but I feel it and and just in school and even like with women like I say like it's 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 oh I don't fuck with light skin man cuz they soft I don't boom 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 cuz the I'm best always, part but they want a dark skinned man they call him a bitch every 5 minutes that's what them hoes want you know so yeah. so in 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 conscious to answer your second question how did I hear from it just just honing in to be like, hey, Red, man, you know what, bro? This is you. Like, just embrace who you are. You see what I'm saying? Like, but just, that don't mean you have to fight for the same people who hurt you. But I'm and not... Yes, and I went, you but, literally but, called but, me Puerto Rican, so... Hey, fuck. look. Hey, look, Monica, I look at it like this. Like, how they what say... Talking to? Hey, Monica, like, how, like, like how they say... Forgive them. They know not what they do. Man, a lot of our people lost. That like they, don't they, know they ain't that damn blood. They can't use it. They can't keep using slavery as an excuse because one they don't know no slavery. better, man. <laughs> I hate they don't know no better. You, you, it's like I can't say what I what we went through in World War Two when I was not even <laughs> thought of in World War Two. So how can you sit here and say what we went through in slavery when you weren't a damn slave? People say all oh, this shit come from slavery. You weren't a fucking slave. You had ancestors from slave, and that's a disrespect to the ancestors because you piggybacking off of their trauma thinking you actually went through what they went through and you didn't. How you gonna sit here and say you a fucking slave? You weren't really getting whooped on your back like the ancestors was. You were really getting your head, your dick chopped off like the ancestors was. You were really getting raped, cooking from your families, beaten, or so you wouldn't you weren't going through none of that like the real ancestors was for, for, so for you to say that. They came from slavery and everything. That's BS because, first of all, slavery happened 400 years ago. Your great, 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 great grandma wouldn't even thought of. First they of all, it wasn't 400, 400 years, years ago. ago. So there are still use, slaves that are alive to this off day. Anybody else's trauma. I can't there say what I went through in 9 11. I went in 9 11. alive old. today. Okay. So hold on. I got some questions. Um, <laughs> oh, go ahead, oh, Reckless. Go ahead, Reckless. 
I do, do want to provide some clarity. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I do want to provide some clarity is that the reason why um, understanding what certain things um, may be, but what may be the root of a lot of things or the way that we may see people operate within society for us, the many people, it's typically the monitor. No, the reason why. No, the re the reason why is because it all does actually stem from slavery. Slavery. Now, the way that it may appear, it may be mutated. It may not be as explicit or in your face with it. But however, all these different power systems do stem from us being stripped away from our land, stripped away from our identity, stripped away from our belief system, and then we are. Uh, given a new identity, which is inferior, we're given a new religious system, which is Christianity, and then yet we internalize self hate. Um, so yes, a lot of these different problems and of power. But, systems uh, were we you own. literally getting taken off the boat? Is it a picture? But Miss, but see about okay, you? so Miss Monica, let's have a real conversation. <laughs> so no, Ms. I'm Monica, not uh, Ms. Monica. I'm but Ms. Monica, Ms. Monica, to answer your question, there's no, a thing actually, called actually, red no, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. Because Ms. Right. Monica, let, let's actually have a real conversation. Um, with that being said, that means no one on this panel should have tolerance or even should endure you and your you and your anti-blackness, you and your colorism. But yet we also know as well with those power systems, those also that's also stems from slavery as well, too. So if the car can go forward, it can go backwards. Now, I do understand you may be frustrated because don't get me wrong. I have my moments behind the scenes and Conscious can tell you. I'll be kind of being your shit like the same thing. you be on, fuck these niggas. Da -da -da -da. But I also <laughs> have to reel it back in and recognize that I understand why we're here. Mm -hmm. I understand why we're here. Now, things but may look still, more mutated. It's, it's mm -hmm. still not an excuse, though. No, it's there not are right. There literal but laws against Thank black you. women's hair still alive today. So let's not... Yeah, like, no, but, but, let's not forget what they died for. They died for our civil rights, and they died for us to leave, live freely. So that's why I be trying to promote the young generation to sue the United States government for their civil rights that their descendants died for. That's my fight. They are. But you under you gotta understand why I be upset. I'm just up, only you, for you black right, men, Miss right, Barbara. Right. Right. Let's not. You're right. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You're right. I just, I just get frustrated about the colorism and the homophobia because it's something I take. I take it. It's personal to me. I'm not just saying that out of my own will. But do you know that, Miss Monica? Because, because I know that you come down a lot on dark skinned men because you feel like they have gone out of their way to use the way that they are fetishized in the black community to like bully. And they make. And, and hold on, hold on, Miss Monica. Uh, you cannot fully respond to my statement if you're not listening to it in its entirety. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. But do you also understand that because of colorism, light-skinned men have also benefited from the social equity that comes with colorism and also behaved in the menacing and abusive ways that you accuse dark-skinned black men who have that social equity in certain pockets of the community have until like do you like do you understand that it's all a product of anti-blackness that both light-skinned black men and light and dark-skinned black men have have participated in colorism when it came to each other and when it came to the black community that it's not like one over the other like the reason why a lot of dark skinned black men are so eager to take advantage of the social equity that comes from being dark skinned is because of the inherent racism that's overarching in the black community. So black dark skinned men have gotten in where they fit in at. So of course, and 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 I would even agree that maybe on some so on, on some unconscious level, it's it's been a get back at a at a from a sense of powerlessness to now kind of have a stab at. Um, disrespecting white racism by disrespecting mixed race people or disrespecting um, lighter complected uh, black men and black women but that when you no matter which way the bullets are flying it's the same author that authored it all and that's our proximity to white supremacy and it's mutations and it's realities that have become the black experience. My question to you, Clark, is 
when people criticize light skinned people, anytime they speak about their experience of being bullied or their experience of being mistreated or their experience of being considered not black enough or particularly for light skinned black men, um, being light skinned, being associated with being weak or being soft or being gay or being <laughs> queer, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what do you say to black people who say that light skinned men? do not experience the colorism or that light-skinned men do not get to have a pain regarding their experience. I feel like you lack people that think like that. They lack, well, they are ignorant, meaning unaware. They're, um, you know, they're not very empathetic because anybody, you know, I can see how me being a light-skinned man and for somebody that in the com like in the comments, I'm not mixed. I'm I'm black. I'm just light skinned. But um, being a light skinned man, I can see the struggles of a dark skinned man. You see what I'm saying? I can see how colorism can affect a dark skinned woman, just how just as I can see it affects exactly a light skinned woman. It's just a matter of 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 understanding that we're all in this together, <laughs> like. Like colorism is stupid to me because it's just a another ploy of division in the black community. That's how I look at that. Like, Maybe, I think let me say this. I think just because I like light skin and mixed men, that's I think that's why I take it so personal. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm really trying to be serious. But like, it's like I, I'm laughing because like you're being like like like. I mean, I'm glad that you're being honest about. You know what, like, what's your body? I think that's why it pisses me off. And for me, being a dark skinned woman and you know, seeing the things that my mom goes through as a dark skin, I love my mom to death. I kill a motherfucker over my mom, you know. I think that's why I take it dark skinned women and light skinned men's issues more serious. And I just kind of trump the other ones. And I'm just being real, that's why I don't focus on it because. The situation at hand is things that I take very personal because it's personal to me. You dealing with what I like, and you dealing with what I look like. Exactly. You know That's saying? why I told everybody that my, how my sister looking. We got the same parents, and I I didn't. I'm not sure if it was on here or if I was on Reckless Live, but I've literally like said that's why I'm so gung ho about this stuff, and it pisses me off when people, certain people in this chat want to say that Use i'm that point not point period oh no, there she goes you feel the way you feel mm -hmm. Barbara, because you look the way you look you feel that way because of the way you look look at her profile she doesn't even look like her profile that's why she has that opinion i said what i said what are you talking about my name is my profile girl what, what are you what i'm no she's saying that that's what you told her that, that's what she's saying no, she's for me. She's I wasn't serious. my profile. I had my opinion because oh. of the way I look. I, okay, yeah. hold on. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on. I want to get back to some to some educational conversation here. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so, Dolly, what do you think about? Is there a such thing as reverse colorism? What do you think about the plight of light skinned women and men who have been attacked by their own community? because of the complexion of their skin? Like, what, what is your understanding of, or how do you perceive this plight from light-skinned Blacks? Um, to be honest, I don't have much knowledge on it. That's not something that I really can understand. I did mm -hmm. watch the, was it Oprah that did a documentary called Dark Girls, and then she did one that, got, that was called Light Girls? And so it had like Raven Simone and people discussing, it's gonna sound really insensitive, but I feel like they were discussing inconveniences in their life because they were lighter complected mm -hmm. and an inconvenience versus like how black women can't even get in certain sections or are mistreated because they're mm -hmm. on the dark. I just feel like it was, a false equivalency, just in my opinion. Oh, as a that's a perfect one. Hey, I, I hey, completely agree hey, with you because I have issue, a sister a who I have from. A, a systemic issue versus uh, a antidotal one that's more, more about uh, 
being inconvenienced, and I guess even maybe put on a look, just put I, I, put in a more antidotal context versus a systemic context. So, dark skin mm-hmm. men and women experience the actual systemic racism, the w- and lighter skinned women and men experience. I would what like. Would y'all even call it a pushback as a result of the privilege that comes with light skinnedness? Which I, I believe it should be What's with this in, in the equivalent. Miss, miss, miss Monica. But okay. my, my oh, thing well, is. Like, uh, 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 oh, all right. No, I, I was saying, like, okay, me being a light skinned man, if I'm doing a job application and you doing a job, a dark skinned person doing a job application and I put black. Me being a light skinned man doesn't give a, you know they don't give a damn about that because you don't think so. Well, if you mix, no you because like mix. like if they don't if they don't see me like I'm putting the application in and I right. Black. But once they see you, once they've interviewed Red Clark and they've interviewed Wesley Snipes, can you hear me, Red Clark? And I'm don't you lie. I think your phone yeah. is breaking up a lot of Red yeah. Clark. Like, when they see mixed, mix, they don't see Hold black. on, Miss Monica. Uh, hold on, hold on Miss Monica. Can you hear me, Red Clark? Yeah. Okay, so once they have seen you and they've interviewed you and they've interviewed Western Snipes, you don't think that racism and colorism is going to play an impact in who's a candidate for the job? Ex- and, and I feel like that, and that could go deeper into, okay, as a light-skinned black man, how do you look? You see what I'm saying? See, me, I got locks. I got locks. I got, um, you know, I got tattoos. I got shit like that, that, you know, they would associate with being a black, you know, a black person. So that could probably play into it versus if I was clean cut, shave, you know, hair, you know, haircut and I could go off as, okay. I feel like that, like that'll, that'll put me, me still being, I feel like me being a light skinned black person still the, 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 the light skin part don't matter. Just me being black. Just because I'm a black person, I feel like, yeah, but I'm not. Huh? Mr. Clark, you're lying. I'm lying about what? It, you're what lying, about... lying about. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm very, I'm, 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 I want to know what he's lying about. See, that's what I've been talking about. You're taking this experience. And you're not taking it serious, but I bet you if it was if it was some Wesley Snipes, you Spice cannot thing. tell that man what he is not taking seriously and what he is. And maybe he's not lying; mm-hmm. he's speaking his experience and, yeah, I'm speaking and the way he from and the way he understands his experience. See, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm speaking, speaking from my experience. That these I've, 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 and I would say this: the reason why I said it like this, I've been like before I had locks, I've experienced um people thinking I was white when I was with my b- black friends and seeing them treat them a certain type of way, but looking at me and treating me differently than exactly. them versus Those when combos. I got my, I got hair, like I got nigga hair, boom, boom, boom. Oh, this is just a light skinned nigga. You see what I'm saying? Like, so that that's what I'm speaking off of. Like, But you still don't think that you would be preferred choice next to a dark skinned black male with locks? <laughs> If it's a light skin with locks and dark skin with locks, the, the way systematic racism is, they're probably going to pick the lighter person because they okay, that's so a damn shame. Uh, no, that's a damn light. No, and that's what we're talking about. Hold on, 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 hold on. I want to ask the panel a question. Can starting okay. with a day? Well, they said she doesn't know a lot. Real quick. Like, um, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get everybody to speak. Uh, can somebody? Can somebody give the definition of a colorism? What is the definition of colorism? I believe the definition of colorism because, again, me and my sister have the same parents. I came out different than she came out. And we're only a year apart. And I noticed the issues, the different issues that we have. Uh, So the definition of colorism, I believe, is just literally that color like literally people will treat me different than they treat my sister my sister goes through so many struggles and goes through a lot of 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 crap and i also go through a lot of crap but i know that it's not as detrimental to my livelihood it's just insults 
it's just insults as people calling me Puerto Rican cough Miss Barbara. Uh but, so but other than that I don't even want you to be black. You literally, I get her start. You, anyway, sorry. But 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 other but other than people just being like, Oh, you're not black, you're not black, it doesn't affect my livelihood. My sister's color affects her livelihood. Not dark skinned men. Um, I cannot. Okay, so okay, so 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 let's just get clear here, and then a reckless on you to jump in. Colorism, a practice of discrimination by which those with lighter skin are treated more favorably than those with darker skin. This practice is a product of racism in the United States, and in that upholds the white standards of beauty and benefits white people in the institutions of oppression, media, the medical world, science, etc. Racism. Racism is the individual, cultural, and institutional beliefs and discrimination that systemically oppresses people of color, black, Latino, Native American, and Asian. Discrimination, the mistreatment of an individual or group based on their social membership, regardless of their social power, anyone can experience discrimination. So, Red Clark, I think it is safe to say that in terms of the way that these things have been defined, that light-skinned people cannot experience colorism, but they can experience discrimination. Yeah, I agree with that. So you said they can't experience colorism? Really? No, that light-skinned people, based upon the way that these things have been defined... Not in the black community, in the black community, ex- that's considered colorism. Light-skinned people cannot experience colorism, but they can experience discrimination. See, and that's, that's the shit that that's you pissed me off. Because you, you, it's like you say they don't experience colorism because they like... That's the stuff to be... The men, I ain't talking based about, upon, I'm talking about the Based men. upon the way that... Hold on, hold on, hold on, Ms. Monica. Based upon the Why way just that, the men, though? Hold on, hello. A lot but of I time, fucking said that. Ms. Monica, I haven't had to yell all panel. Let's maintain CTV being able to just flow, okay? I'm saying based upon the way that these things have been defined, the way... The definition of racism, the definition of discrimination, and the definition of colorism, based upon the way that we have collectively defined these things, yes, light-skinned people cannot uh, experience colorism because colorism exists because of white supremacy, which uh, gave leverage to lighter-skinned black people that benefit from white supremacy. So the, the only people that can experience colorism are people on the darker spectrum. But light skinned people can women. experience but light skinned people can experience discrimination. They can people can have a prejudice towards light skinned people. People can have a discrimination toward light skinned people. But colorism benefits light skinned people because colorism benefits white supremacy. And white supremacy because of it because of its nature creates the opportunity for assimilation, which is what light skinned people can benefit from assimilating. They can assimilate. What? Their complexion allows them to benefit in ways that are unbeknownst to them and beknownst to them. Yeah, well, I've but, been discriminated but, against. But, 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 but colorism <laughs> itself is the definition of a system that oppresses those. Your mama's a nut, bitch. The, Miss Barbara, don't pay attention to the chat. You hear <laughs> that, okay? If you want to be in the chat, go down and argue with the chat. But if you're up here with us, pay attention to us. Focus that was Miss Monica. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Chat. We didn't say it was you. I said the chat. Okay, let's keep no, it no, together. Somebody, you said Miss Barbara. No, I, I don't know who said that, but see, only listen to CTV. Miss Folk, bro. It's only one captain here. Okay, I didn't even misspoke. I said the chat. So I don't know who Miss Barbara heard, but oh. I said Miss Monica don't respond. That to was the chat. me. Okay, so see. Okay, so let's <laughs> calm down. Keep it together. Okay, now. Clark, how do you feel about the definitions, okay, that light-skinned people cannot experience colorism but can experience discrimination? I mean, if that if 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 that's the definition, hey man, that's the definition, bro. Like I'm I'm not I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here to like be like, oh, I'm I'm not here to harp on it to, you know, be like, oh, I feel bad because I'm light-skinned and and people discri- I've been discriminated against, but I mean, by definition, if colorism isn't the right ter- ter- terminology or verbiage, 
Um, discrimination. Well, okay, I've been discriminated against. Okay, that's 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 what it is. You see what I'm saying? So like, I'm not here to argue with the definition if that's the definition. So yeah, like. It is what it is. Then y'all go paper for these dark skin men again. That's that the fuck I'm talking about. I will Maybe. argue with that oh. definitely. I will no, argue with we that just definition. know how we're treated differently than other people. Like, well, why I'm you got to? I, I see the women. Why you got to involve the men, the, the dark skin okay. men, into this? CTV, I just, we you stuff. Women, I live in the cool cuts Klansman town. Talk and healing with Bree. I live and, with the Klansman, right? Once the Caucasian white women even had a baby from a black American man, they was treated just like a black American. They they discriminated with who they associated with. So light-skinned people got the same treatment. Cleansmen um, will treat a light-skinned person. Like Presley won't 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 work so well in the Cleansman town. She'll be treated like a black person. She'll know mm. <laughs> the no. difference. Can I, okay. And, healing, um, and the 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 person that you just had up on the screen, conscious healing with Breeze, I believe. Um, I know just by looking at her, I know that she has had a lot of conversations with a lot of black like. You know what black men be, be, be telling us, like, like. I just okay, want her. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So when it comes on the colorism, as in the white, the the global aspect of it, the closer you are to whiteness, which means the closer you are to blackness, you will not be given certain privileges and certain opportunities. Now, with marginalized groups, they typically here's the thing. The weird thing, but however, the weird thing within the melanated communities, black community or whatever, is that it's all based on masculine and feminine energy. So since something lighter as in um, a lighter skin tone is deemed as on a subconscious level as feminine, that's the reason why when it comes out to women, it's more acceptable for women to be more lighter skin and they're more preferred yes, because what I'm fucking the, darker, talking. the darker the darker that they are, they're, considered, they're, they're deemed as more aggressive and masculine. Um, now, and, and also for men, it's also reversed. That's the reason why when you see a dark skinned man, oh, that's a real man, that's a real man. But that's yet, shit I'm from where about. I wasn't done, and then when you see someone like Rich, uh, like Clark, Red Clark, people may pick on him and deem him as being, oh, you just a pretty boy, you just this, you just that. So, I think this is, and this, and here it goes again. I said this in my life. Wherever you see a simulation, there that is a that's a sign of oppression because with er, every single marginalized group, the point of being able to uh to overcome them is take stripping them away from the identity and giving them giving them a new belief system. And so, with that being said, since we have been stripped away from our identities, but yet we were given something else that feeds us a lot of self hate, and we have no choice but to perpetuate that with a lot uh within. Within our own community, so yeah, I just want to make sure. And also with that, another point of colorism, also featureism as well, which means that the more Afrocentric uh, features that you have, you're deemed as ugly. And that was actually something I wanted to speak to earlier um, when people talk about Megan specifically when it comes down to her features, the way that she looks is rooted in anti-blackness because our answer. Actually, can you do that for me, unconscious? Can you pull up that picture for me because I actually wanted to show that to actually prove a point since we're already here. And, and, and this is the reason why I said that earlier when people always want to talk about Megan's looks and specifically when they start to actually get deeper to that conversation is rooted in anti-blackness because what people also I forget <laughs> but what, what healing breeze bitch to shut up she getting on Ms. my Monica, name. if you continue okay, to speak, I'm mean. gonna have to drop you down Ms. Monica you have to not interrupt other people when they're speaking and so also what comes along with that is that our ancestors looked like were very much bigger. They were full. They were fully figured. They had thighs. They had a butt. They probably were taller. And this actually one of um uh, I've not, her last name I always butcher it, but Sarah Bartman, <laughs> um she was an um she was an African she was a, uh, an African American woman that came from South Africa. Um, but well, I don't know about African American, but she's an African woman that's from South Africa. But yet they used to put her in like this freak show exhibit to show off her curves and to show off her body. 
once she actually passed away, correct me if I'm wrong, that they actually had her body parts on display. So yes, the way that we critique each other's looks and the way that we critique uh, skin tones, etc., it's all rooted in anti-blackness. But however, we have no other choice. Well, unconsciously, we had no other choice but to mirror to mirror those things only because of simple fact that's all yeah. we know. That's it. Okay, and I actually want to read this on the screen. Uh, how you pronounce, uh, Sarah Bartman was a uh, a cocoil. I don't. I probably fucked that up. Woman who was taken from South Africa in 1810 to be exhibited in European freak shows. After her death in 1815, Bartman became one of many black women to be dissected by male comparative uh, autonomists who regularly misconstrued black female anatomy to further race science theories. Bartman's brain, genital, skeleton, and a cast of her body remained on display in a Paris museum until 1974. She was finally laid to rest in 2002. Okay. So, I also want to add to what Reckless is saying that when we think about uh, so discrimination is a term that 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 is like for it's, it's like a general term for bad behavior toward people for whatever reason, whether that's your gender, your whatever, your looks, your clothes, da 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 da, da. So that means that white people can make claim to discrimination. Uh, Light-skinned people can make claim to discrimination. Discrimination is like that term that's left for just the general population. But when you're talking about racism and you're talking about anti uh a blackness, a colorism, etc. Even sexism, you're talking about systems that have more of a, of a systemic reality. Like people have the systemic power to oppress you. Okay, so, and that's why the conversations around anecdotal experiences don't don't do justice to conversations around colorism that literally impact once again darker melanated individuals okay because we're talking about because even the even even the insults that a dark-skinned person can slang at a light-skinned individual are just that they are insults but your dark-skinned counterparts do not have the social equity they don't have the societal power to oppress you as a result we know that this power structure is governed by ultimately a white patriarchal system that secondly gives that power to white women after white men. And then there's a trickle down effect from those who benefit from that racism as it relates to the way that it trickles down into the black experience, leaving our darker counter, our darker complected counterparts and peers at the bottom of that classism and social hierarchical system, okay? It's levels to the shit. The closer you are to the tippity top, the more power you have, okay? This is why when you look at data around who's the most discriminated in, who's the most discriminated against in banking and housing, we're talking about real, real um, substantiated uh, uh, discrimination that can be backed like with data, okay? The people that have control over these fundamental areas of your life, over your existence, okay? Largely, the authors of those people are on that wider, lighter side and everybody else just experiences that power. And those who are the farthest away from that power structure experience the worst of that power that is overarching them. Daily, yes, you have unmuted because you are ready to join and enter the chat. Hey, hey, look, I'm finna um not to cut you off or anything, but mm -hmm. I really enjoy talking to you guys. But I have to go. You gotta go yeah. make money, Red Clark. Yeah, man, I gotta go. Yeah, man, I gotta go do some real quick. But oh, oh, I really enjoy it's talking not, to y'all. I really enjoyed this conversation. Red Clark, huh? Red Clark, it sounds slutty. What you're about to go do? Oh, hey, not even. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for I really, enjoy, I really enjoy talking to y'all. Yeah. You know, like y'all Conscious. really uplift. No, look, y'all hey, really uplifting my little spirit. Y'all really uplifting my little spirit. <laughs> Oh, by red. Hey. I see why your name red though. Hey, man. Uh, I, I, hey, man. I, y'all just come back me to on. the sanctuary. How do I? Uh, that's what it's all about. The man trying to give. Hey, the man trying to give his final words. Okay, he he he's gonna give his social medias. Yes. Hey, look, y'all YouTube follow me on social medias, man. I'm an artist, you know, just tune in with me, man. My he's own. an artist, he's a singer, he's a philanthropist, he is a uh, a trainer, he is a writer, oh. he's a poet, he's an entertainer, he's a conversationalist, he is a philosopher, he's all of the mm. above, okay? If you like yeah. CGV, then you're going to love Red Clark, okay? Yeah, so, right. I will, so just so just I will in with you, social media in the, um, in the description, Red Clark. All all right, right, man. Man. I really, I really, enjoy, hey, look. Y'all don't get tired of me, man. I'll be up in here like all the time. That's what's Come up. Come on back, Red. We want you. Period. Come, Come back, Red. A second, a second home it is. Yes. But thank you for being here, a Red Clock, and I'll hit you up later. But conscious, right, let me just say this. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut up after this. Let me just say this. But you understand why I get so mad about it. I just want y'all to understand why I get mad about it. Because mm-hmm. I take it. You, you messing with what I like. I'm just, I'm just thinking with my I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm just fighting for what I like. You know what I like to lay down with. And I'm fighting That's for right. what I look like. I just want y'all to understand that. Conscious, can I ask you something, please? We going into the new year. Why can't everybody pay a monthly fee like, you know, the um other channels do? They pay a monthly, they join. Oh it's a membership. And then I want to like, I want you to get a uh, weave, swords, crowns, you know, that we could buy like the other channels do. Why can't we be like that? Why are okay. you bringing this up? I'm talking about something you're gonna cause I'm class conscious. Yeah, hold on, all of that. I've I, 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 I already said that all of that is coming. There's a method to my madness. I have a reason for why I'm doing everything that I'm doing, but. Just stick with it. We ain't seen uh half of the potential of what I'm going to do in total with this platform. But I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving accordingly. But everything will come as it comes. So just stick with it, okay? What did you say about that, Todd? I can't believe that I'm going to go ahead and agree with Miss Barber on that part. Okay. Well, that. I hope you also heard exactly what I just said to her. So ain't no need for nobody to co-sign it. I just. It's all coming. So okay, it's coming. Okay. No, I, I have no come. idea that I think everybody would agree with. It. It's gonna come when the cane has designated it time for it to be that. But there's a reason why we're doing things the way that we're doing things. So just stick with it. Because everybody, because. Gonna, everybody gonna get their needs met. Just make sure that just be happy. I can put up with y'all eight hours out of the damn day. All can, you, can you can you ask this question? Let's start there with the gratitude. Okay, let's let's start there with the appreciation. Okay, let's let's start there with the riveting panels and the dialogue and the conversations and the topics and the intersectionality of the platform. Let's just start with just giving reverence to all that has been created on the platform because we have literally created a whole multiverse over here. A sure, multiverse. People of perspective of topics. I mean, let's just give reverence to the versatility of the platform for how we just literally went from the salacious shooting of Tory Lanez onto Megan Thee Stallion, and now we in a whole anti-black colorism situation and conversation. I mean, no, but I just wanted you to answer this. Do you understand why I'm mad? Though? Yes, Miss Monica. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, I do. Of talk, course, I do. Talk. I know. I, I know exactly how you, Miss Monica. We ain't new to you. We know All why right. you feel the way you feel. <laughs> like we not conscious. Right. They got, no. What's that, baby? I mean, conscious. I'm trying to something that I'm attracted to. I mean, yeah, co- conscious. Yeah. I, I'm trying to hit your uh, cash up, and they got three scamming ass conscious up. Which picture? Oh is yours, my god! Baby? It's the oh yeah. So let me. So are uh, you guys? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Allow me to speak. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, IG, for one, and of course, it's it's the one. It's the first one, I guess. It's a conscious TV on on the screen. So for all of you who go to Cash App Me, literally my Cash App is spelled just like my channel name. So if you ever get confused about what Cash App it is, just come to the platform and look at the way it's spelled on the platform, which is C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-Z TV. It's only one Z and TV. So 
Dollar sign conscious TV, okay? Exactly how it's spelled. Okay, I see one one, one of the all right, baby. I'm about to send you right now. Okay. Thank you so much. Cause I know, like, you know, as we get popping, it's gonna be all type of fucking mock accounts and dual accounts and all type of shit trying to, say Dave trying to cash know. in, trying to cash in mm -hmm. on the kings. Did, uh, did, did you get it, babe? Oh, I want to just make sure that it's, it's the right per I, I did the one on the right. Did you get it? Uh, let me check my phone. Sometimes it takes a little second. Oh, we ain't got to stop the show. I just want to no. make sure it go. Cause shit, you oh, know, no. I, I, shit, I, I'm not bald and I don't have it like that. Girl. I'm I got just it right here. Look, on. Everything. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate every contribution. It's yeah. always out to me because it's about where it come from. And just, but, um, yeah, to I want to make sure it goes to him, babe, and nobody okay. else. Right. Okay, hold on, y'all, because I want to straighten this out. So let me, because I don't want no button, none of my supporters to be confused about when it comes to something like this and people sending their heart earned money to me. Want to make sure that we have an understanding. Yes, I just got it. So thank okay. you. And it was the right one. So, what are the other okay. ones? I know it's one on there with Matt. two Z's, I think. And it's yeah, different. that's the one I messed up on. Ooh. Huh? May I say and it's huh? one that look it's uh -huh. one that looks just like yours with a low a lower K C. A lower K C. Wow. Yeah, so make sure that first C is capitalized. Wow. That means she ain't get her money. Have your picture on it, the exact same picture. Yeah. So make sure to see yeah. it's, it's capitalized. I'm gonna have to get somebody to send me somebody. Can somebody send me a screenshot and email it to me? Because I don't know what those other accounts look like. Because I want to see what's the subtlety. I know one got two Z's, and yeah, that's I the one I'd be confusing everybody. The one with the two Z's. Okay, that's yeah. Oh, well, it's definitely not. Well, it shouldn't, because if y'all look at it uh, on my screen, I don't have two Z's in my name at all. It's I know, just, but like, it's like, if okay, I'll yeah, uh, yeah. So, the, and look, y'all, I, I always have the cash app scrolling below, it's always in the scroll, it's always in the description box. So, y'all always can refer to what's on the screen and refer to the scroll. But there's some very thirsty people in the world and really. Freaking sad that they think that they don't have to put in any other work and can just benefit wow. from whatever. I mean, how selfish and narcissistic as hell. Hold on, let me see something real quick. But I definitely got you as Isaac. Uh, or it was only twenty five dollars, but still, like <laughs> that's a lot of <laughs> money. In a girl, that's a two for twenty at Chili's. Girl, money, hey, man. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Yeah, like if y'all like if y'all ever confused, hit me up before you send it. Like if you get confused, you don't know. Y'all can always hit me up. Always DM me on Conscious TV at Gmail or email me if you ever get confused. Because I definitely don't want y'all sending y'all coin to the damn wrong people. Because that's essentially just throwing it down the tube so um and i'm also going to contact cash app tomorrow and, Good thing have a, up this and, and have a conversation with them and um see if there's anything that they can do to have those accounts removed so i'll contact them as well but yes um conscious tv um is it a capital c on your end um ig like when you sent it it was capital c yeah mm -hmm. can you yeah so it's a capital C and then everything else is lowercase. Yes, indeed. Okay, so capital C, everything else is lowercase, you guys. Conscious TV. Ah. Matter of fact, I actually want to go handle this now before it even goes any further. And we already been here for six and a half damn hours. So this is a great reason for me to get my ass up and go be productive in some other areas. So uh I want to get everybody's final remarks before we get out of here. Um, let me see here. I also sent you a message, Arette Clark. Um, Conscious Loki said thumbs up or no content, period. Uh, hold on, let me do something here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, yes, and that's our Red Clark's Instagram, you guys. Red underscore Clark on Instagram for those of you who want to follow him. I'll put his information also 
in the description box when this video wraps up. Um, okay, uh, Dolly, final thoughts on today. I don't even know what your final thoughts are at this point in the conversation because we done, we done did quite a bit of traveling. But first, I want to thank you. I want to say thank you for being here. Um, you were amazing and so articulate. And I hope that this is not your last time on the platform. You are a joy. So, do you have any thoughts on um, the the topic today? And if you want to also, if you have any social medias that you want people to follow, please provide those social medias for the people. Well, I just want to say thank you for having me, for putting up with me all day. Um, I'm a teacher, so I'm on break. So, I have nothing but time. So, I appreciate the panel. Um, Hold on, can you give us some deets on the teaching? Do you teach like high school, middle, I college? Teach, uh, elementary. Wow, elementary. Okay, so I've always been curious. What, 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 like, what is the desire to teach young rugrats? Like, how, <laughs> what is the like, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot deal with kids on that level. Like, I do not have the patience. So, like, what, <laughs> what appealed to you about teaching um, the little ones? Well, I love how imaginative um, those elementary age children are. You get to be really explorative with them. Um, everything is their first time. Everything is new. So they're open to trying and failing and trying again. High school is difficult. High school students think they know everything. They're argumentative. I'm not one to argue and I'm not going to fight you. So I feel like an environment where I know I can make the most impact is elementary because I just feel that students are going to be more receptive and I can get somewhere with their learning. So for me, elementary is just my preference. Beautiful. Amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. 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 Okay. Do you have any social medias that you want people to follow? I mean, you can follow my, my IG. It's the same name. Um, oh, and one thing I, I was like too shy to say, but my name is pronounced Dalia. Dalia, like, oh, yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I was butchering it because I tell folk name up the way that folk them told my damn name up in the world. Yeah. Avion, Avion. I'm just like, oh. but yeah. yes, okay. So, Dalia, yeah, so it's like Alia, but da, um, Dalia. Dalia, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I have an IG with the same name. Okay, so IG, you guys, Dalia on IG. And is that all? No Snapchat, no yeah, Facebook, that's it. That's it. No YouTube. That's okay, right. Dalia. Okay, and do you have any? I'm gonna follow you. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna follow you as well. Uh, and you guys can always play this back to get everybody's handles. I'm gonna try to put them in the description box along with Red Clark's. Um, do you have any thoughts on the topic today that you wanna leave off on? Do you have any thoughts on? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Yes. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on anything discussed here today? Uh, I mean, there was more that I wanted to say. I'll just say it really quickly. Um, so at Howard University in the early 1900s, there was an infamous doll test that was conducted by two black psychologists. And the doll test basically had a lighter skin doll and a dark skin doll. And children, I think about less than 10 years old, were brought in. And they were to point out which doll they found to be more aggressive, which doll they found to be innocent or nice. And typically, um, the results showed that the darker skinned doll was more likely to be labeled aggressive, more likely to be labeled ugly. Even if the children looked like the darker skinned doll, they would typically still say that the darker skinned doll was a more evil doll and they would use the word evil. So the colorism conversation, there's data behind it. We also know that in um, elementary school settings, typically at third grade, teachers will tend to darker skinned black boys less because they, at that age, they're seen to be aggressive. And so we see a dip in the way that they're catered to in schools because teachers, especially non-Black teachers, have less patience for boys who are darker skinned and just Black boys in general. So I know that there's a lot of data in the colorism conversation that could be tapped on. If you're ever thinking that, you know, people are making it up or there's not enough information, there have been studies that have been conducted for a very long time. And then one more thing, one of the People in the chat asked the question about, is she considered light skin? And another thing that was happening, especially in HBCUs, was that they would do the paper bag test. So uh, if you were lighter than the paper bag, you were considered light skin. And we don't really do that now, but typically for the spectrum of darker and lighter skin, that's where a lot of Black people would judge by literally putting a paper bag up to you. 
Well, I wanna, Delia, I wanna... Can I ask you really quick, Delia? Now y'all was making this fine. Every time I say it's final damn thoughts, y'all don't hear final. <laughs> y'all I, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry
allowing their music to be a testimony because that video made millions of dollars. Business is business. And he could have fantasized all of that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You understand? He could have just took advantage. Like, you know, Candy Burris took advantage when she was accused of having a dungeon. She made a whole play of having a dungeon. So in reverse, she could have been accused of, you know. Anyway, I just feel really bad about that. And I'm also upset with this. Huh? I'm going to say what I want to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, Megan situation should be compared to domestic violence. I don't because I think that she had a great part to do with this night of violence. And I think that they all agreed that they did not want this prosecuted because they all had a part to play with it, play in it. And with her, when the car, when the police stopped the car for her to say, I, you know, took an L for us because of George Floyd. No, she took an L because she did not want to be arrested again for assault like she was by police. And because she had a great part to do with that whole fight. And I'm not going to agree with no district attorney, maybe because I dealt with them personally and I know the demonic demons that they are hanging anybody for 24 years see and i hate when um people just don't think that a black man life matter you know like 24 years that's crazy you crazy are you crazy that's my life 24 years you bugging out you know so and you know and, and another thing um you have to look at who I am and where I am and where I live. I live in a hood where everybody carries an illegal gun. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just, you know, and I don't judge them because the white man didn't give them permission to carry a gun because they need a gun. People walk up to them to rob them and hurt them every day. So they need a gun. And I don't think that they're wrong to carry one just because the law say I can't. I'm going to defend myself. So I got different, you know, and I was just thinking, I was just thinking about it. Barbara, why do you love men so much? Maybe it could be because I was raised by the most beautiful man in the world. OK, maybe it could be because of that. He adopted me. He wasn't even my biological father. And I don't have no 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 nightmares of incest and all of that. Just love, you know, so maybe that could be the case. But I'm not going to be um, on these streets of YouTube saying that I'm against black women. That's not true. I'm against sluts and hoes and I'm against Megan. OK, thank you. And that is Miss Barbara, baby. That's a what hell of a goddamn outro, honey. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> baby, that is uh, apartments available in New York. Make sure you subscribe to the Queen, baby. She get them direct downloads from the Holy Ghost to hell with your Bibles, honey. She get it straight from the straight from the crown chakra, straight from the throne room, honey. Apartments available in New York. Thank you for being here, Miss Barbara. Ig, my brother from another mother. Thank you for being here. We're going to have to have a more in-depth conversation about colorism. Matter of fact, what I wanted to add regarding colorism is a short little snippet on history, a.k.a. slavery. Slaves with lighter skin are assigned domestic tasks, while slaves with darker skin were forced to work outside in the fields, doing much more grueling tasks. Lighter skin slaves were favored because they were often the product of a slave owner uh, sexually assaulting a slave, thus creating a lighter skin child. Uh, the paper bag test that Dalia had mentioned in the 19th and 20th century, the paper bag test was often utilized in black spaces and in hiring of black people. If someone was the same color or a lighter skin than a paper bag, they would be allowed into the space considered for hire. If they were any darker than a paper bag, then they would not be. <clears throat> hiring practices. Skin tone was often the most important factor in applying for job as a person of color in the mid 20th century. Light skin was often reported as a resume ahead of any other information or experience. And these practices are largely still are largely still adhered to in the 21st century Americas. Um, IG, thank you for being here and God bless you and your family for your contribution to uh the platform. I, I it's it's even more meaningful when um people give to me like, you know, like what, you know 
what they have, even when they feel they don't even have it to give, because like that place it comes from is even more sincere. So just thank you so much for your cash app donation. Um, tell the folk where they can find you out here on social media and um your final thoughts on today's dialogue. Well, I appreciate your conscience. I wish I was able to send you something sooner. You know what I'm saying? I really yeah, it's do. It's coming. It's coming, you honey. Know, I, you know what I'm your, saying? Because it's your honey will me. overflow, honey. It'll overflow. We gonna speak prosperity. A cup that runneth over. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, my um, my um, social media is basically IG Green eighty five. My YouTube channel is IG Green eighty five. My Instagram is IG Green eighty five. My TikTok is IG Green eighty five. So, you know, and I, then I have a, a Facebook that's kind of throw it off. It's Y-S-A-K space F-O. It's Y-S-A-K space F-O. That's my Facebook. Um, what I want to do is um, speak to what the, I really did once again enjoy the research that you and my brother Reckless Logic up there that I check out all the time. I appreciate the information that y'all brought concerning the case and the conversations around the case, the other in-depth conversations. My final thoughts. You know, since you spoke on something on colorism, I want to bring this up, and it would be so great for us to have this conversation. I think what a lot of times when we have these conversations, the nuances of colorism is is more of just as much of an importance because I can say, well, yeah, back in the day when it was always a thing for darker skinned women, but for men, you're praised for your darker skin versus for females, it's used as a negative. And then what the brother said about you know, uh, Red said about him being equivocated with being gay. To me, that's also not on his part, but there's some biases there because I notice when people see someone of a lighter brown complexion, they automatically go in their mind and equivocate, this is prettier, or he's just trying to be pretty. Nigga could be ugly as a box of fucking rocks, but you're going to say that it appears prettier to you because of the lighter skin. And I think that is something that needs to be more discussed even among other men like cis heterosexual men because there is a bias that also comes with that and how they perceive their interactions with other men you know outside of just homosexuality so um that's just my little takes i can't wait to see what the case is gonna be and for us to finally maybe have these final closing conversations so we can Get back to the other conversations. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everybody in the chat in the panel. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Thank you so much, IG. And y'all make sure to follow my other amazing and beautiful co-host, IG, on all social medias, okay? He's another one, super educated, brilliant-minded, and um, just such a great conversationalist. I love that word, by the way, okay? Intersex exists. Now, hold on. Here we go. Intersex, you there? <laughs> Oh, oh she actually stuck around to the end. <laughs> to the end. Now nah. nah, we get to the end and the intersects me go whole ass. Okay. No, I was I was still here yesterday. As soon as I tried to unmute, you went boop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you're still here. Um, if you have any social medias that you would like to give out for people to follow you on, please give your social medias and also your uh final thoughts on today's today's today's. Um, I don't have a social media that I want to give out yet. I'm still working okay. on accepting my whole life and okay. and for and uh, don't really know when I'm gonna put that out of there. My whole story and if I really want to put it out there, but um, I'm gonna stick around. Uh, I did wish I could put um some. I wish I would be able to put my opinion in when Monica was up here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, some of the topics she was talking about, but mm -hmm. she's no longer here. And someone else, it was a topic that I wanted to talk about. But I mean, I still love you. And I'm glad you ain't booted me this time. Well, of course not. And, and you know what? I'm going to bring, because I would love for you and Miss Monica to have a conversation because I know that you are having, um, in some way, like the same lived experience as Miss Monica mm -hmm. as a trans woman. And I would love for y'all to have an opportunity to um, talk and to talk about y'all's experiences and for y'all to, because, I, and I think it'd be important to, to just be able to listen in as an audience on that conversation, because I think that there's so much that an audience can learn um, from the outside in about uh, the dynamics of y'all's lives, et cetera. So I would love to have you and Miss Monica back.
Um, okay, so that, I do want to. Uh huh. I do want to say something about colorism, and uh, I'm gonna try to make it. I, I didn't want to say it because I don't know how quick I can say it, but uh, um, I come from a, a high yellow mother, light skin mother. Uh, all my siblings are light skin besides me, but I was, I, I was, I had the hair texture. So um, my grandmother is dark skin, and all her children is dark skin besides my mother. So it was when she was talking about the grandma, the grandmother love. I kind of didn't have that because my mother was kind of separated from the group of family because I don't know if it was because of her complexion or whatever, but it is a lot coming from the family about us being favoritism. I don't know if it's because my mother is yellow. I don't know where it's from, but it is a big issue in my family as well. Mm, wow. Yeah. It's um it was a big issue and not not my immediate family but my grandmother uh, you know she's um a Cherokee Indian and black and she has very like pronounced uh Indian features and she has this like this dark beautiful melanated skin with this long black hair and she shares a lot of like stories about what she went through with colorism like her father well her stepfather um made her mother unfortunately like she had to sleep outside on the porch like they had an enclosure like an enclosed mm. uh a panoramic porch and when her mother got with her stepfather the stepfather um didn't even want my grandmother to, to, to sleep in a house and unfortunately um you know that was my grandma's experience until she moved until she moved with her grandmother and that's when she had kind of more of that family she deserved. But it was so interesting hearing about that because when I was, my ex-boyfriend Dion, his grandmother, um, she had a conversation with me and we was, I forgot, we were talking about something in the car, but she was telling me the same experience. So like she came from the same generation that my grandma did. And she also spoke about how the man in her mom's life was a colorist and she also was put on the porch at night to sleep and was only allowed kind of in the house at certain times of the day, et cetera, but that she could never actually sleep in the home at night. And I just couldn't, I was so blown away to hear about this, this level of rejection. I mean, I know that it's gotten bad, that it was terrible and it's at an extreme at times, but that conversation around a colorism and how that shit has shaped the way we perceive ourselves as melanated people and our dynamics with each other in terms of complexion and the colorists in our lives and those experiences are so um rampant obviously in the black community so when we say that there's much conversation to have and much nuance to get into in terms of our identities as black people that's what the hell we're talking about so for you as a um as a melanated trans woman, like that's very, very intersectional. Like to have a very intersectional existence makes mm -hmm. existence very complicated um, because it's so intersectional. But I want you to continue to come back. I want you to continue to engage these stories. Uh, and I'm so happy that you feel safe enough to like share aspects of your life with us, even though, like you said, you're still even working out you know, your, your, your experience, but I really appreciate you intersex. Like I love you to death and I hope that you are following me on social media. And if you ever need me in any kind of way, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Okay. <laughs> okay, babes. Thank you for being here. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, get in the frame. One more thing? Yes. This is the first time I ever done this. So, uh, wow. forever. Ever wow. like, and it, it's it's also come from a passable privilege, mm. privilege. Mm -hmm. So, um, I pro I wanted to have a conversation with Monica as well. Yes, uh, the complexion. Well, I'm gonna bring her back then. So that means that you gotta reach out to me on social media so that I have a point of contact with you so that I can coordinate. You know, like a time for y'all to definitely show up together. On the okay, make sure. Make sure you have my identity. So. Uh, you know I will, honey. It's safe with me, honey. <laughs> you have my word. Absolutely. So um, okay, good night. Me up, and I love you and have a wonderful night. Okay, same.
that was intersex you guys we're going to bring intersex back along with miss monica um to get into that conversation i think that there's a lot that we all can learn and um i love hearing from my trans peers because i i want to educate myself on my other tribe members as much as possible so listening to people's lived experience what has shaped their minds and their dynamics and the way we engaged us as part of also why despite how abrasive miss monica is um you know i love having her here because she's kind of She's been able to show us kind of the really ugly side of the experience. And I think that as a place for kind of also being able to hear that rage and hear that anger, because, you know, sometimes we, the way we pacify our, the, the, the way we pacify ourselves as people who also hold privilege relative to other marginalized people, sometimes that passivity is very blinding. And what we need to really hear is the reality of the way that oppression of any kind is impacting those around us. Because I think it awakens us to that social narcissism that we sometimes don't realize we suffer from. And it raises our self-awareness. It helps us to read the room better. and helps us to accommodate people in ways that we would not have known to accommodate them um, had it not for them taking a sledgehammer to our damn privilege, okay? Wait, wait hold up, Conscious. I didn't know that you were trans. If, I, no, I'm I, not I, trans. I don't want to be misgendered. No, I, I'm not trans, boo, but sometimes oh, I just speak in plural form because as far as I'm concerned, I'm all of us. I'm black woman, I'm black man, I'm trans, I'm gay, I'm queer, I'm, I'm all of it. Like, I don't necessarily try to separate myself from, you know, from, from the humanity of my people so sometimes i will say we but no i don't identify as trans um i identify um, as a cis as a cis same gender loving man or whatever so you know he whatever da, da, da. but because i don't run away from none of it either i don't mind she i don't mind it i don't mind freak i don't mind what is it i don't mind nothing like don't okay like, whatever it and freak. Yeah, I don't that's, even, that's i'm not doing all that all, all I'm, I mean, saying I'm just is that saying I really like wanna... I, I'm completely me. I wouldn't be calling you he when you went it and freak. I mean, like, come on. Look, I'm complimented by freak because it means that your basic ass brain cannot comprehend the magnificence of all that I am. So it has to be it. It just means I have transcended any 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 reference. <laughs> for the glory that I'm presenting to you. <laughs> Your brain has no point of reference, baby. It all is all glitched up on site. So I, I'm not, I don't see any of it as an insult. Um, I embrace all of the pronouns. I'm, I'm a man who's in touch with my woman. I'm a woman who's in touch with my man. I'm in touch with all of it. So, you know, I don't give a damn. You know, to call me she is not an insult to me. To call me her is not an insult to me. I'm not ashamed of the divine feminine. It's another aspect of my strength and my wholeness as a soul as a consciousness as an entity so um you know like those things don't take anything away from me to be referred to as a male or a female i you know like, i don't you know it's all power to me um i've been i've been referring to you i've been referring to you as a male so so, so that's yeah, why i was yeah, like wait, wait. Yeah, I mean, cause, i mean i come you know and, and it's really the simple minded you know because i well it's those who are trying to be respectful because we live in a woke culture. So when some people see me, they're like, okay, what is CTV's pronouns? But then there's like other people who are trying to be more on a negative scale who will be like, she or... Because I, I was live... When I was live yesterday, there was a guy who was in the chat and he was like, um... Like, as soon as I came on camera, he was like, oh, I didn't know that this... Um, I didn't know that this was a trans person. And I'm just like, nigga, you see the B2K hairline, you see the beard, you see the mustache, nigga, you, you, yeah, yeah, you clearly see male, but you're going to do the most, you, you're going to do the most like that, okay, but you know what, if trance is your word for androgyny, because that word is not in your, um, index, then no, fine, trance it, no. like, trance it is, so I, I'm just saying that I, it, it could be anything, it, it Whatever it needs to be, whatever people's reference for, whatever it is I'm given, 
you know, I afford people to have their own experience. I don't get caught up in language and pronouns. It's all very limiting anyway. But male is fine. He is fine. She is fine. Whatever you feel in your heart on any given day. If I'm giving more she than he on one day, I don't give a damn. Call me she. Like, it don't matter to me. I'm not ever going to correct y'all about shit like that. It's, it's, so, it's so superficial and stupid at the end of the day. I've always felt he, but you're basically telling me that you're like conscious Monroe, like flame. Oh, no, no, I'm not telling you that I'm like flame. Uh, just, just, just everything I just said to you, just receive it from CTV. <laughs> they don't even compare it to, oh. to, <laughs> to, to, to nothing else. Just, just, I'm just saying. Y'all don't have to worry about pronouns. Whatever y'all want to call me or whatever it feels like to y'all is like, I'm fine with that. That's not a point of contention. You know, like, I, and even if I was straight, I would not give a damn. If like, if people thought I was gay, I wouldn't be like, I, I wouldn't clear it up because I mean, like, what is there to clear up? Like, you know, I know that that's just people's way of, that's based upon people just not like the way they are experiencing you like and so i don't run away i don't have that type of sexism shit in me to fight against she pronouns and all of that because i don't associate that with weakness and whatever the case may be so it's just whatever oh. like, i'm just the world of right. it. yes i just um, call you as a feminine boy that's all Yes, my and bad. and I am like I'm a like I'm I'm connected to my femininity. I'm connected to my masculinity. Like you know, I'm connected to it all. So femboy, butch queen, I don't give a fuck. Like whatever you know, it needs to be is is cool with me. You know, it's all the same shit at the end of the day. But uh, dirty south, are you still there? For one, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh. If you have any social medias that you want to hand out, and you all need to be following me first and foremost on social medias and all social medias, okay? Instagram Conscious TV, okay? Uh, Conscious TV on YouTube orations, Patreon, uh, Patreon.me slash Conscious TV, you know, all that good jazz. But do you have any social medias you want to hand out, and what are your final thoughts for today? Yeah, I, I just dropped my uh, IG in the chat. Um, <clears throat> oh, I wanted to say uh, ju just uh, thank you for you know, having us on the stream. Um, I appreciate um, how you guys are just so welcoming, um, especially, you know, for me and Red, you know, uh, y'all allowed us to, you know, be ourselves till our, our, our side. And I just appreciate that. Um, what I wanted to say was uh, to black women, like there's, there's black men out here that like put y'all above anything and everything. When we're going to ride for y'all to the end, um, you know, I, I think what we're seeing is a lot of young black boys that are being pushed to the forefront as leaders when they're really not um, find a black man to get behind and push him to the top. Um, keep God first. And, and really that's it. I really thank you dirty South for being yourself and for being up here. I'm so happy to have you in red and all the other and the whole other influx of men who fuck with the platform and get up here and have a good time quack and knock out and i mean there's so many y'all at this point i mean uh kevin i mean like i'm loving it it creates uh a full Loading. of the conversation <laughs> so i appreciate you uh, we're going to be back tomorrow getting into more deliberation which they will be back in the morning so you know hopefully you can hit the link and come in get into the fray again but i appreciate you a uh, brother man and please follow me so i can follow you back on social medias and um see you soon right on i'll be back all right that was dirty south you guys and that was presley who already gave her intro honey she stayed around for <laughs> closing arguments last but definitely not motherfucking least my right hand man robin logic okay your social media handles and your final thoughts on today. Well, just so you know, they over here arguing in the back. But um, hey, hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Um, welcome to Lena Reckless Logic. Please make sure you guys pop that like button, hit the subscribe button, and please, please, please smack that notification bell so do not miss any of my posts from us. Well, so just so you guys know, my YouTube channel is called Reckless Logic. That is the handle that you see. Can can you pull the handle up for me? My name. Uh, is the handle. 
Girl, them hoes know where to find your Okay, ass. reckless logic is, is reckless. There we go. Bam. That's also my cash app tag if you guys want to donate. But however, on um, my Instagram, my Instagram is reckless logic. But however, with the logic, it's with an X. That's it. And logic is spelled with two C's. Period. And do you have any final thoughts on today? Anything you want to add? Um, we doing the Lord's work. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We're doing the Lord's work because, baby, explaining this stuff down to the T make your hairline start going like this. <laughs> so that's all I really have to say, honestly. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. At least right now. Until the verdict, then we're going to see another influx of people coming in. and That may change. But as of right now, I have nothing else to say, honestly. All right. Follow my nigga, Reckless Logic, honey, over on the YouTube duration, honey, dollar sign, Reckless, two C's, Logic on Cash App. And it, it's still strictly reckless on Instagram. No, it's reckless. reckless logic. Logic. Period. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he took my advice. The brand consistently mm -hmm. across all social. It makes it so much mm -hmm. easier. But we got the same name every day. Well, mm -hmm. and plus mm -hmm. that strictly reckless was hacked. So, period. Okay. So you guys heard it. We'll be back to join you guys tomorrow. Okay. Once again, you guys know. Definitely follow me on. Instagram at Conscious TV, and please, you guys, um, I don't want you guys sending your money to the wrong place. So, if you ever need a reference for my Cash App, just come over here and look at the uh, look at the chat. The channel name is spelled the same way, okay? Capital C, lowercase, everything else on um, Cash App, and also have PayPal, PayPal.me/slash Conscious TV, and I will contact Cash App to see what they can do about some of these other mock accounts as well. But once again, if you ever get concerned or confused about what the Cash App is, um, it's always linked in the in the description, and you can always email me um, before you do so if you ever get confused. Okay. Um, also, uh, we're all we are one we are sh we are one hundred and seventy motherfucking subscribers away from forty fucking k. Okay, we're working our ass off. Okay, we are busting it down, honey. We are going to double that amount next year, honey. We're going to get to a uh, hundred k by the half by half the year, honey. Okay, by by summer next year, we should be at a hundred k easy, honey. We're going to be working, working, working over here. I appreciate 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 you all for messing with the commentary. Um, and just shout out to all the new subbies covering this trial, obviously. Um, was a great idea. We also want to send light and love to Meg and to everybody. We want to send light and love to everybody who ain't the damn shooter, okay? And um, hope that all these people can do their work and, you know, get on their knees and pray to spirit about what they are to take away from that experience on a personal level. Um, the verdict is still out, okay? Jurors will be coming back to the, to deliberate in the morning. Shout out to Goddess Don. Oh, my God. I Goddess Don Speaks came back onto the platform, and then we got so damn swallowed up in the uh, colorism and all that conversation that I forgot to even uh, get Goddess Don to speak in, too. But we're going to have Goddess Don back tomorrow for sure. Um, make sure you are subscribed to her. Her channel was listed below, and I also listed her channel name over on the community wall so check her out she gives even more in-depth breakdown about what's going on inside the courts honey okay and she's not biased she's not team meg really or team tori she's team truth unlike some of your other favorites who are reporting on the situation honey okay um and she has been dedicated to this thing for nine whole days now okay waking up first thing in the morning and getting into that courthouse until the end honey coming over here then going on her own platform honey putting in that work so please support my girl goddess dawn speaks on youtube when y'all over there honey tell her that that i sent her honey tell her tell her y'all the conscious crew honey and i love you all i will see you guys tomorrow i will try to be loud live and in color and give y'all a old nasty piece of visual um, I'm just gonna have to go to sleep on time so I can actually do that. Okay. I love you all. Give me your old nasty thumbs up on the way out and share, 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 share. And you guys have a great night. Peace.